do. That's how we do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and it's just yeah, the that would be swag. Okay, so if I'm gonna be dipped out for the revolution, it's gonna be in some revolutionary gear. So. It's gonna look good doing it. Who, comrade? Mm-hmm. Right on. Well, all right, comrades. So again, we want to welcome everybody. And as comrade Erica said, we got a lot more to come. But before we move on to our next section, which is comrade of the year, and I know many folks have been waiting on the results. I want to make a quick announcement since we weren't able to do this earlier. Um, So this will be one of the next upcoming APSP sponsored events. And we are proud to announce that we will be organizing African Liberation Day. Uh, These events will be under the theme Relentless 50 Years of Leadership Towards African Redemption. This will be on May 28th, 2022. So stay tuned to the Burning Spear on YouTube or on Chairman O'Malley's Facebook page for more alerts leading up to this historic event. Uh, This event, African Liberation Day, will recognize the date of the founding of the African People's Socialist Party on May 25th, 1972, co-founded by Chairman Amalia Shetela. And if you are in any of these cities, be sure to get involved or to follow the party. These locations, uh, the locations for African Liberation Day are South Africa, uh, London, England, Paris, France, Oakland, California, St. Louis, Missouri, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and St. Petersburg, Florida. We're gonna be building African Liberation Day organizing committees to make the events in all these regions happen. So keep your eyes on the party, right? Keep your eyes on the party. And we will announce uh, more of this um, at the end of day four so that you can capture all this information again. But I'm very excited about that. Thank you, comrade. All right, so now we're gonna announce, comrade um, Akinge is gonna take us into um, our revolutionary socialist competition it has been a sharp and tight competition. And um, this is for Comrade of the Year. So let's welcome Comrade Akinge of the Office of the Chairman to announce our Comrade of the Year. Uhuru, Comrade. Uhuru, Comrades. Um, I want to welcome everybody back. Um, it's a great first half. And I first want to start by uh, saluting all of our nominees for the Marcus Garvey Comrade of the Year. I want to appreciate the uh, recognition committee because they had a really, really, really tough job to do. Uh, but now it is time to see who our winners are. Next slide. There we go. Uhuru, Uhuru, Uhuru. Our Marcus Garvey. Comrade of the Year awards go to Michael Matsumella Odom, who is the Vice President and Membership Coordinator for MPDOM, and to Wendy Craig, who is the Project Manager of the Mighty Mighty Grants Team for the African People's Education and Defense Fund. Uhuru, comrades, uhuru. Chairman, uhuru. are you there? Yes. <laughs> uhuru. Look, impede them does it again. All right. Well, okay. I just, again, want to salute all of uh, the nominees. Uh, You are all winners, Um, each and every one of you. We really appreciate you and all the work that you do. Uh, You will receive a beautiful plaque, which is engraved with your name on it. So you'll be able to to mark this occasion uh, forever. And you will also receive a $100 gift certificate as well as recognition in our Burning Spirit newspaper and all our Uhura News website as well as any of our other organization websites. And we have one more award that we would like to present. This is unscripted. Chairman, are you there? Does anybody see him on? Well, if not, I do want to say that the chairman determined that there was one other award that we should uh, present at this particular plenary. And that is the Bold Initiative Award. And can anybody guess who who the winner would be? I want to, can you give me permission to share my screen, please, for uh, a second? Uh, 
Now I just got to find what I'm trying to share. Well, hopefully our Zoom text um, were able to capture that, Carmita King. Yeah, I'm sharing it off of not the phone, but uh, the other device that you see. I guess I have to start, do I need to start the video? Oh, the anticipation. <laughs> I know, I'm like, what is it? I know. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you're not able to share, let me see if we can get that resolved in the next uh, few seconds. Maybe go ahead and click share and see if you've been given access, uh, Comrade Kingy. And you're muted so we can't hear you. I can't um, share my screen, but I understand the chairman will be here in just a moment. Okay. So why don't we just let him, we'll wait for the chairman. How about that? Okay. All right. So should we, uh, well, maybe we'll let's be- Let's advance the program while we- Yeah, let's go ahead and advance. Um, Uhuru. So again, I just want to say congratulations to our winners for Comrade of the Year and some of the um, uh, comments in the chat. <laughs> Congrats, VP Matsumilla and Comrade Wendy. Uh -huh. Shout out to VP Matsumilla and Wendy. We have um, one that talked about SD San Diego representing. So, uh -huh to that. And uh, thank you, Comrade Kinge, um, for that announcement. And congratulations to all the nominees. Uh -huh. So, we're going to call, um, move it on to Comrade Asa Ampu. Um, Comrade Asa Ampu is going to do the uh, join, the, to lead us in joining the call to, um, here we go. Thank you, comrades. In the call to, to, to join, membership is everything, right? And it means that one has made like the simple and conscious decision to stand and fight on the right side, uh, the side of the people, right? Under principled unity. So let's welcome Comrade Asa Ampu, if you're in place in South Africa, occupied Azania to lead uh, the call to join the African People's Socialist Party. Uhuru. Uhuru. Okay, I hear you, I think, right? Yeah, here we go. Here they come. Uhuru, comrades. Can you hear us? Africa. Okay, we can hear you, comrades. Comrade Asa, you're muted, comrade. I'm gonna send a message if this possibly. Maybe well, audio was not coming through, but it sounds like we could hear them just well. I do know that our tech does have something that's ready. So yes. okay, perfect. All right, well let's. Let's move it back. <laughs> if Zonzele is in place, comrade, uh, comrade, All right. comrade Zonzele and Pico will be singing We Are the Vanguard. All Vanguard right. up. Yes, Vanguard up. Yeah. Vanguard. I am the strong man, I am the woman, I am the children. I am identity, African blood in me, foundation of all things. Yes, they lie to me, use for sweat off me, this cannot happen. I want it all back, taking it all back, the power inside of me. So step up, cause I am the vanguard, I am the warrior, I am the front line. Step up, cause I am the power, I am the knowledge from beginning to end of time. Step up, I am my birthright, the Africa truth and life fulfills me of all rise. Step up, the power will stand free against all our enemies. I am the vanguard. 
I am the mother, sister or brother, father or friend you see. Genocide kills us, gentry it wills us, splitting our families. But that was the plan to conquer our land and spread us among the seas. But we are comrades and we are cadres, changing this path you see. So step up, cause I am the vanguard, I am the warrior, I am the front line. So step up, cause I am the power, I am the knowledge from beginning to end of time. So step up, I am my birthright, Africa, truth and life fulfills me of all rights. So step up. The power we stand free against all our enemies. I am the vanguard. I am the vanguard. I am the vanguard. We are the vanguard. We are the vanguard. Ahuru. 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 Yes. Vanguard up. Step up. I was like, oh, look, I'm not going to do it on here. <laughs> too late too late <laughs> um well you know what comrade i think we have comrade akinge and um chairman on right now right so we could probably move back and then move forward do a little bit of that right now so I'm, I'm gonna pass it back off to uh chairman welcome and comrade akinge Uhuru. Uhuru. Comrade, uh, akinge chief you want to go ahead Uhuru Chief, are you there? There's a strange sound oh, that uh, uh, I have that. I think I hear her, but don't see. Uhuru, Hekenge. Uhuru, she, we're not getting her. Yeah, she goes, I see her come on, and then she went right back off again. Mm. Um, and, okay, yeah, we, says, <laughs> we don't, Dexter says, we don't see her, but we feel her. Uhuru, are you making the struggle <laughs> to get back on? <laughs> uh, we don't see her, but we feel her. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. DJ Eddie words. Right, yeah. to take from DJ Eddie. <laughs> that was powerful. Yes. What a powerful plenary, just overall. Yes. And uh, yeah, thank you. Well, who yeah, can, can you let us know what's happening to the chat yeah. or something? And for those of us who are just joining us right now, we are in um, day or part two of day four of the African People's Socialist Party 2022 plenary and comrade Akinge has an announcement for us and we see you there now, comrade. Just go ahead and on. there you go. Uh -huh. Can't see myself. Hold on one second. Uh -huh. There we go. Uh, so I, I just wanna again, um, really uh, salute all of the nominees for the Marcus Garvey, Comrade of the Year. For those that are just joining the program, um, you know that we had an, uh, just a fantastic group of comrades. And Chairman, while you were away, we did announce who the winners were. But I want to announce all of the nominees uh, quickly that were our nominees. Don't hear you. You've muted again. All right, can you can I be heard? Good. You can be heard. Okay. All right, thank you. So we had uh, Yolanda Simmons with Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles in Oakland under the leadership of the Office of the Deputy Chair. We have uh, Matsumela Odom, who's the Vice President and Membership Coordinator for NPDUM, the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. We had Sheila Manley with Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles under the leadership of the Office of the Deputy Chair out of Oakland. 
we had Derek Bub Myers of Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles in Pennsylvania, who's the coordinator of Uhuru on the Move. We had Renee Nassar, who was with Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles in Philadelphia. We had Monica Kiota, Kioti, excuse me, who's with the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. She's the USM Birthday Fundraisers Coordinator. We had uh, Leah Fifield with the Uhura Solidarity Movement, and she's the Reparations Legacy and USM Grants Liaison on the Mighty Mighty Grants team. We had Eddie Malsby, DJ Eddie, who's the station manager for Black Power 96 uh, FM Radio. We had Morlai Conti, who is the chair of APSP uh, Sierra Leone. And we had Lynn Dimmer, who's with the Uhura Solidarity Movement and African People's Solidarity Committee. So that was quite a list of uh, nominees that we had for this upcoming year. And uh, I, again, I wanna salute all of the comrades, just really, really, really great, fantastic, fantastic work. And I know you have the plaques there, Chairman, so that you can show our uh, viewing audience. I'd like to show the plaques. I, I hope you can see this. Uh, I'm going to read the inscription here. Uh, the Marcus Garvey Comrade of the Year uh, in appreciation and recognition of tireless efforts to advance uh, the liberation of African people, the African People's Socialist Party, you uh, represent, presents this award to uh, Michael uh, Matsumela Odom for the year 2021. Uh, uh, so, and uh, the plaque with the uh, same inscription is uh, for Comrade Wendy Cray. Uh -huh, Wendy, uh -huh. Uh -huh, comrade. Yes, comrade. Yes. Great. That, that, this is an extraordinarily beautiful plaque. It really is a beautiful plaque. And uh, I don't know, uh, uh, these comrades you say have been told, uh, you've already said that uh, yes, you make but an I... announcement about uh, what I want to do uh, otherwise? No, I did not. Okie dokie, because uh, I just think that, uh, that uh, there's a comrade that we have to give, uh, give an award to just the exceptional, uh, extraordinary work this comrade has, has, uh, has been doing. Why don't you go ahead and define what the award is, Comrade Kenge? It is the Bold Initiative Award. And that award is given to um, an individual that makes a novel improvement or in an innovative way accomplishes a task that helps to move the organization forward. I got you. Um, okay, yep. I got you. Uh, I got you. Oh, okay. So here's what I would like to do. First of all, our comrades, uh, Matsumela and Wendy Craig here. And if so, um, they should be able to say something. Are you there, Comrade Massimella? Massimella's not here. Uh, com yes, Comrade Wendy. Uh -huh, Chairman. <laughs> Uhuru, Comrade Wendy. Yeah, Uhuru. Uh, I don't know if you want to say anything. Uh <laughs> I, I just want to say what an extraordinary honor it is to work under your leadership and under the, the leadership of Deputy Chair and, and just, you know, very thankful for the award, and I also congratulate all the nominees. Everybody was so deserving. Uhuru, thank you, Chairman. Uhuru, thank you. And I want to agree with you. Everybody, everybody uh, is deserving, and you know that's very difficult. I understand that the committee had a very, very, very difficult time sorting through these incredible comrades to come up with the comrade of the year. But now, uh, Comrade uh, uh, Kinge has told us about again. What is the what is the other award, Comrade Kinge? 
It is the bold initiative of bold war. Bold initiative of war. And uh, so can you, uh, uh, I mean, I think by the time you finish, everybody know who you're talking about, but can you read uh, uh, the, uh, the narrative that was presented for this comrade? And Masamela, by the way, uh, has just, uh, oh, Masamela's on now. He's just got back from class, he's <laughs> studying. Uh, uh, let's, let's, let's look at the Bowl Initiative Award and then we can come back to come at Masamela. Uh -huh. Can you say what the narrative, how does the narrative, what does the narrative have to say about this comrade? Well, what it says is that uh, because of his tremendous dedication, initiative and achievements in the service of Black Power 96.3 FM, our <laughs> movement's radio station. Besides yeah. being the world's best blind DJ, Mr. Eddie is committed Ooh. to the mission of the African People's Education and Defense Fund, articulating yeah. the position of the movement over the airways on various issues in a brilliant and winning way. Uhuru! Uhuru, uhuru. Mr. Eddie began his uh, work as a volunteer uh, hosting the uh, morning gospel show, and he is now the station manager. He's always managing our station, providing guidance to other programs, and fighting for the station to have the best possible sound. Uhuru! Uhuru! <laughs> He's always ready to step up and do whatever is needed to build and grow Black Power 96, calling contacts, organizing concerts, uh, facilitating meetings, bringing in new programmers, and he always maintains a welcoming and friendly staff, stance towards all incoming volunteers and community supporters. He does not let anything stop him from improving and growing the program quality and audience and the audience reach of the station. He is unique and an exceptional member of our movement. Uhuru! 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 Comrade Eddie, uh, we'll be working on getting that plaque to you as well, but uh, I want to uh, congratulate Comrade Eddie, and uh, I don't know, <coughs> uh, uh, Comrade uh, Director Keeley, if, if, uh, if he's uh, anywhere uh, available, and if not, I'm going to go ahead and, and allow uh, Comrade Massimella to speak. And you, and if you could line Eddie up, if even if he's not on now, uh, while we do this. Uh, so let's see it, well, what Comrade Massimella might have to say. Uhuru, well, Comrade Massimella, congratulations. Uh, uh, Uhuru, this is uh, uh, not expected, but uh, um, I accept it. Um, you know, as as a victory for. Uh, you know, your leadership, uh, the leadership of President Kalambayi, and, you know, the work of the African uh, working class, you know. Um, uh, you know, it was many years ago. I remember when I was approaching the age of Walter Rodney when he was assassinated. You know, I thought to myself, you know, uh, you know, here's a brother that didn't get to live. As long as I did, but, uh, but, 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 but every moment he ever had, uh, as uh, uh, as an uh, African work class intellectual, he dedicated himself to the African Revolution, and um, so so I really uh, uh, salute that. I really salute the leadership of Bakri uh, out out west, and um, and just uh, of, of all the other comrades, comrade and Wazy as well. Uh, so so yeah, I mean I really uh, uh, I, I I I really accept it, and, and, and I'm I'm grateful uh, for this. Um, uh, because of the, you know, it represents the work of the party and and, 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 and the work we're all struggling for uh, completing. Uhuru, Kamet Matsumela, and uh, it was quite appropriate uh, for you to get this award and uh, the contributions you made uh, to uh, to the party, uh, to our movement, of course, uh, barely uh, they, they barely scratched the surface in terms of providing the, the uh, narrative uh, for you. So congratulations, comrade. And, and uh, part of the reason that we even uh, make your accomplishments uh, known uh, like this uh, is because we want others to emulate what you have done. And we think we think is that significant. So thank you very much, comrade. Uh, and uh, I just want to say that uh, I see 
Come, uh, DJ Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what's going on, so y'all gotta refresh. You don't know what's going on. Oh, <laughs> so DJ Eddie, uh, uh, you know, Comet Massimella got the award uh, for the Comet of the Year. Much deserved. Uh, but uh, Comet uh, uh, Kingy was just saying that uh, you've been such a brown groundbreaking. How do we de define the, the describe the award that we were provided for uh, Comrade Eddie? It is the Bold Initiative Award. Woo <laughs> <laughs> that's the award that's called the Bold the Bold <laughs> <Yeah>. Initiative Award. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, let me tell you something. Let me tell you. I don't see nothing, but I feel it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're unapologetically. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you, thank you, man. You know, I, I was saying Dr. Marcebella deserve it. I tell you, whatever award he got, he deserves it. And 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 I'm most humble right now. I want to say thank you to the African People's Socialist Party. Thank you for all you do, man. I, I'm nothing without you guys. And I just want to say thank you so very, very much. Uh, I, I can't, I can't express how I feel about what I do here for this station. And, and if you haven't heard the last drop, I said, uh, it's not about me. It is not about me. It's about the future. It's about the revolution. It's about the uh, reparations we're, we're going to obtain. And that's what I'm fighting for. That's all I'm fighting for. That's all I'm living for. It has been black power. It has been the development for our African people here, everywhere, abroad, no matter where we are dispersed at. This is all what it's about, man. If they missing the message, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> Until you get it. If you miss the message, I'm sorry. I'm going to put it in your ear again. I never let you miss this message or this train or this bus or this car or whatever we going to be riding in. You got the ride too. I just want to say that. It, oh, no, come in, Eddie. And I, I wish it were possible. I mean, the narrative didn't call for it. Uh, but uh, I just wish uh, there's so much story about you that people don't know that uh, mm -hmm. it's just been a, it's a hell of a journey. Journey, Uhuru. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, Chairman, can I say uh, something to DC owner? Because when I first came in here, you, you call her beautiful and fire. Well, she sat down with me and, and said that I could be the DJ and be in a part of this. And I, I promised that first day I talked with her, I would never let her down. I know that comment, DJ. Every time you come on, you're talking about beautiful, beautiful, owner, beautiful, beautiful owner, Jeanette. I say, oh, what the hell is wrong with you, Eddie? <laughs> All right, comrades, thank you so much. Thank you, comrades. Wendy, okay. Mozzamella, DJ Eddie, my favorite blind DJ, the best blind DJ in the world. Uhuru, comrades, Uhuru. 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 All right. Wow. Um, I almost forgot I was emceeing for a moment. I got just very wrapped up in all of that. That was very uh, meaningful and representative of the work of the party and what a better day to get recognized for your love for African people on this colonial holiday of Valentine's Day. So I just wanted to say that to Uhuru. Yes, Uhuru. I was thinking hear. about that. So, um, all right, so we, um, Karma Erica, do you think we should go into the call or move it onto our Caribbean reports? I think if we have our- people have not yeah, gone okay. to APSP- There you go, we'll make right the call. Right now and joined already at this point in the plenary i'm telling you look dj eddie said it look after that go you know join the party exactly so, let's right on that's your call yep <laughs> just like that you know join the party apsp uhuru.org slash join and you could um go ahead and start with um with the process so we're gonna move um the agenda and move the program what a fabulous um way to kick it back after our break on day four. And we're gonna move into the Caribbean reports. And again, I wanna thank our performances from earlier. And now we're gonna have comrade Secretary General Louise Kinshasa, comrade Janelle 
First, comrade um, SG will, will give an intro to the work of the ASI, that's the African Socialist International, and the work specifically in the Caribbean region. And um, we're calling on everybody to include your questions and comments, put them in the chat so that we can have a rich discussion for this panel um, and drop them on uh, the chat on Facebook or YouTube as well. So um, I'll turn it over to you, comrade SG. Uhuru. Uhuru, Chair Mwezi and Chair Rika. This is a report about uh, the uh, the Caribbean, and um, I just want to say uh, a few things. Uh, so it will be done between myself and um, Comrade Janelle. And uh, first of all, we just want to say uh, how Caribbean uh, region is uh, important uh, to the African Revolution, is another front of African Revolution, is a major front uh, for historical reasons, and you know <clears throat> uh, the significance of the Haitian Revolution, uh, you know, uh, it originated in that region. Uh, you know the significance of the Cuban Revolution. You know the significance of Marcus Garvey. Uh, so it's an important region, and there are also an important region, just as often the chairman said, uh, when he said we are part also of the America's Revolution. So the Caribbean also, you know, is a part uh, of that too. And uh, uh, there is an article you can find that in the Battling Spears. Uh, and uh, in that article, in the crisis basically uh, in Jamaica, uh, about 20,000 uh, Africans living every year, you know, living in Jamaica. This is a country of 3 million people. And they imagine, as we said uh, quite a few times, China has 1.45 billion people, and uh, they're not running away. You know, uh, from China, but we are running away from uh, Jamaica because colonialism. Uh, and nobody wants to live under colonialism. But where can we go? Wherever we go, we are Africans. We still colonize. So the question of uh, having a proper answer to our conditions is really important. And uh, the Caribbean, at one point, we hoped that we would have been able to solve the question uh, to build the uh, regional committee. We had a uh, representation from Bermuda. Uh, Guadeloupe, uh, Bahamas, and part Jamaica, and uh, that was looking optimistic, but this has not materialized. Uh, we've got definitely uh, a lot of work uh, to do uh, because we need to build uh, the Caribbean region, and it's the responsibility uh, of basically uh, of the party, uh, basically uh, to provide leadership so we can uh, solve this. Uh, this contradiction, why we can't have, uh, why we can't consolidate uh, a regional uh, committee so that we can uh, do the work that needs to be uh, done. And I said, the region is really, really significant. You know, you have uh, the first revolution of the uh, of the colonized workers in the world. The first place, the colonized socialists, uh, you know, also took uh, power. Uh, in the, in, uh, in the America. So he has a lot of history, and I think uh, history works in our favor. The only thing needs to be done is basically uh, how we're going to provide our uh, leadership so that uh, we can win Africans. Uh, we know Africans are in the Caribbean, but there are also Africans coming from the Caribbean are in Europe. We also know Africans coming from the Caribbean are in Canada, are in um, North America, uh, in the United States, uh, I mean. So it must be possible uh, to win definitely a participation to the Caribbean uh, uh, region, you know, uh, regional committee, so we can have really something concrete. We can say now we have uh, uh, something basically uh, uh, in place. And uh, this is even more uh, possible, you know, uh, because we have the theory that basically unites everything uh, in the region. African internationalism uh, is there. You know, uh, apart from that, uh, I also want to say uh, we have a comrade, uh, uh, Janelle. Uh, she's a new force, and uh, she has uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, shown a, a unity to get uh, the work done so we can uh, begin to have an organization uh, in, uh, in Jamaica. 
from the uh, few months she has been a member, she has been able to organize uh, events to recruit people into in, in Pida. And also she's been working in my office as uh, the uh, uh, main administrator. And uh, <clears throat> so we are in a place where uh, I believe uh, she's going to play uh, a major role uh, where we are now uh, to win us uh, uh, members or, you know, volunteers uh, in, uh, in Jamaica. But as I've been saying all along, what we really want to do is uh, consolidate the leadership uh, in the region. But in the meantime, we're going to start from where we are. We know we have... Uh, something in Jamaica. Now the question is how we develop what is in Jamaica uh, so that uh, we can begin to move consistently the work in the region. This needs to happen. Uh, relentless, relentless in the Caribbean region needs to happen. And the party, uh, you know, from the ASI in terms of leadership, uh, we're going to make sure uh, that definitely uh, continues uh, uh, to happen. So I just want to say this uh, before uh we have uh, uh comrade Janelle to go through uh the um powerpoints and uh, she has been developing and i must admit this is could it, she has not completed uh, that powerpoint uh but uh, it's part of the struggle basically uh she was caught in because the report supposed to be coming from uh, other comrades or participation with other comrades so we can have an uh, overall report from uh, the caribbean so that's where we are. So I want to say who like welcome come with uh, Chanel. Uhuru SG Louisi, thank you so much for introducing me and um the work in the Caribbean. Um I believe Chairman wanted to say something. So um I'll just let him say what he wants to say. Before Thank I you, go, Comrade Janelle. Thank you, Comrade Janelle. I, I do want us <clears throat> to uh, approach the work in the Caribbean in anticipation uh, to a relatively quick um, uh, creation, relatively quick creation of the of the committee. There, that is to say, uh, I don't think I think that we have some disappointments with some of the comrades we worked with up to now. And uh, sometimes, uh, for example, I know in one part of the Caribbean, uh, things seem to be happening urgently and people were really excited uh, about some things that were happening there. So uh, they felt like they had to jump on that and they left to participate in that kind of work. <clears throat> we characterize it kind of spontaneous in the sense that it was, it was happening, was activity. But ultimately what we've seen over and over and over and over again, uh, that, that the intervention in those situation like that, generally speaking, do not lead to overturning the system and, and winning what it is that we're looking for. Uh, and uh, But we have, despite that, we've penetrated that area. We, we've put forth African internationalist philosophy. People know it, understand, some people do, what it is that we stand for. And we can say that about uh, almost every other place that we worked in, in, the, in the Caribbean. So, so we can't say that, obviously, uh, people make decisions about what it is they want to do in terms of what kind of commitment they want to make for the liberation of our people. People come to individuals' uh, decisions about that. When we, when we uh, uh, succeed in, in, in finding somebody of cadre quality, of people who are uh, cadre quality, then obviously we move much more uh, effective and expeditious than otherwise. But uh, a point that I would make is that Comrade Janelle is going to be talking about uh, Jamaica, we see here. Uh, but the point is that uh, even as she has this discussion, all of us, including Comrade Janelle, should be anticipating that we're going to blanket the Caribbean. And this is just one, the, what was begun as a one uh, component of an overall uh, uh, Caribbean regional uh, uh, project should be understood even as Comrade Jan Janelle makes her, makes her presentation now. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you, Comrade Janelle. Uhuru. Uhuru, Chairman, thank you so much. Um, all right, everybody. I'm so grateful to be participating in this plenary and I'll be giving the report on the Jamaican front of the African Revolution 
the African People's Socialist Party, Jamaica. Um, next slide, please. So I want to salute my leadership, Chairman Omali Eshetela. I also want to salute the National Central Committee, and I want to salute um, SG Luwezi. Um, Chairman has been very encouraging um, on my journey to joining the party, and I'm really grateful for his support. And SG Luwezi has been really great in um, bringing me to the, the practical side of the work. So I'm really grateful for both of these comrades and for the National Central Committee. Um, next slide, please. So I just want to give some background for people to understand the situation in Jamaica. So the people who are indigenous to Jamaica are the Taino people. They're also known as the Arawaks. And they are the ones who named the island Jamaica, which means the land of wood and water. Um, next slide, please. So the Taino people were colonized um, using by the Spanish as they used a system called the encomienda system. Now this system is often explained as an exchange between the indigenous people and the Spaniards where the Spaniards gave culture and religious instruction while the indigenous people offered their labor and their goods and resources. But in reality, this was a violent robbery of the Taino people by the Spaniards. This was genocide, this was colonialism, and we must be able to see it that way. Um, next slide, please. So um, after, the Spanish, after the Spanish committed genocide against the Taino people, they needed more human labor. So they went to Africa and um, began the process of bringing Africans and enslaving Africans from Africa to Jamaica. And uh, um, this, is them this is how the Spanish launched their attack on um, African people in Jamaica. Next slide, please. So you might be wondering how we became a British colony. Um, in about 1650, um, the Britain be began a war, which was an attack on Jamaica by, um, by um, stealing, stealing um, Jamaica from Spain. Although this island doesn't, this island and the people on this island do not belong to either entity, they engaged in this violent war to seize control over the resources and the people in Jamaica. Um, next slide, please. So African revolt has always been alive in Jamaica from the very first moment Africans stepped foot onto the island. Um, the Maroons are a group of African people who resisted enslavement through fleeing the plantations, stealing weapons, fighting the colonizers. And they were engaged in the struggle against the Spanish between 1673 and 1690. Um, the Maroons also led wars against the British from 1720 to 1739, to the point where the British had to form a peace treaty with them, which allowed those Africans to remain free while other Africans were enslaved on the island. And these Maroon settlements are actually still alive in Jamaica. They're still existing as sovereign people separate from the neo-colonial government in Jamaica. They exist in St. Elizabeth, in Portland, and St. Thomas today. There was also a rebellion in 1760 by an African named Taki. Some 1,500 African, Africans were um, engaged in the struggle and they led slave revolts for an entire year. And this resulted in the death of many colonizers and um, damage to properties that amounted to a quarter million euros. Um, in 1831, Sam Sharp um, led a rebellion on Christmas day. Um, they set many buildings on fire and they stole weapons to attack the colonizers. And this rebellion wasn't put down until the first week of January. Um, many white people died and many enslaved people were put on trial and killed. Um, so although slavery was abolished, for although formal slavery was abolished in Jamaica on August 1st, 1834, um, there were still rebellions by African people even after that point, because as we know, the end of slavery wasn't the end of colonialism. We are yet to see the end of colonialism. 
So the Morant Bay Rebellion in 1865 was led by Paul Bogle. And this was a protest um, after the end of slavery, which um, was fighting against the continued injustices of colonialism. I also want to mention um, an African by the name of Bookman, who was, um, he was an African born and enslaved in Jamaica. And uh, um, he was, he got into some trouble for teaching other Africans how to read. And as was um, a common practice back in those days, they would transport um, troublesome Africans to different islands in the Caribbean if they were giving trouble. So Bookman was relocated from Jamaica to Haiti and he played an instrumental role in um, the Haitian revolution. So our struggle has always been international. We are not Jamaicans uh, struggling in isolation. We have always been um, seeking the connections between um, our African people around the world and coming to fight with each other, to fight um, against the colonizer with each other. Next slide, please. So Jamaica, as we can see, Jamaica really is uh, um, a land of African resistance. Um, Marcus Garvey hailed from Jamaica and he was born in St. Anne and he began his political work in Jamaica, but he saw the limitations of struggling within the imperialist borders and he sought to build a global African revolution. So as we know, it's not Africa, it's not Africa for the Jamaicans, but Africa for Africans at home and abroad. And that cry has been living through the reggae music, which came from the Africans in Jamaica and also in the Rastafarianism culture that um, has also came from the Africans in Jamaica. Um, next slide, please. So the Caribbean region is a very significant place for us to be organizing. Um, it is a key um, area for us to um, build the grounds for the African revolution. We saw the Haitian revolution take place here, the Cuban revolution took place here, the Grenadian revolution took place here, and we are very much a part of the revolution of the Americas. Next slide, please. So the, the official motto of Jamaica is out of many one people, but this is a falsehood, this is a lie. Um, this is a scheme that is developed to make um, the masses of people feel pacified when their leadership doesn't act in their interest and when their leadership actually acts in the interest of white power. So Jamaica is dominated by these two neo-colonial parties, the People's National Party and the Jamaica Labour Party. But we know that we are African people and it is not out of many one people. We are African people. The masses of African people live in Jamaica and we must make our struggle for ourselves. Next slide, please. So the work that I've been doing um, as a result of joining the Uhuru movement has involved um, me trying to launch in Impedum and establish Impedum's presence in Jamaica. And uh, with the help of the um, IEC, um, I was able to launch a watch party where we um, watched Sankofa which is a film by Haile Garima. And the theme of this event was retrieving African resistance in Jamaica. So Sankofa is a film um, that is set in the days of slavery, but it is actually way more about African resistance and uh, um, African empowerment. And um, this event was a success. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is uh, um, us at the event, um, me presenting on the Uhuru movement during the intermission. Um, we had uh, quite a number of people attend the event and we got one, um, our first NPDA member from that event and two volunteers. And they've played a very instrumental role in um, the birth of NPDA in Jamaica. And also the, the venue that we had the event at has now become a spot for us to promote in PDAM events and promote the Uhuru movement. Um, next slide, please. So this is a picture of our very first in PDAM member in Jamaica. She's pictured with Amiri Baraka, who you may know as the revolutionary poet and playwright and activist. Um, 
this is um, Sharon. She was his uh, teaching assistant for two years and she was very moved. She was present at the Sankofa watch party and she was very moved by the event and the, the um, initiative that we were taking to build in PDOM in Jamaica. And I'm so grateful that she joined in PDOM. It shows that we're in great company as um, she, with her connection to Amiri Baraka. Um, next slide, please. So of course there are challenges. Um, challenges are to be expected, but we move on anyways. And uh, um, right now we really need to recruit members into the party. We need to build an Impedum branch. We need to fill the ranks um, that constitute an Impedum branch. And we also need to build the Caribbean Regional Committee. Um, next slide, please. So moving forward, um, we'll be resolving those contradictions by um, completing a POA, a plan of action to build a party in Jamaica. We will be hosting quarterly Caribbean conferences to win new forces to the party. And uh, from now on, at every NPNM event, there will be calls for membership. There will be calls to raise funds at every event. Spares will be, burning spares will be sold at every event and revolution teachings will be held. And I also want to have uh, um, more cultural events to inspire cultural revolution with more films by Haile Garima that speak to African revolutionary culture. Um, next slide, please. So the, um, the next event that we will be having for NPM is taking place next weekend. Um, it's a Black Power Poetry Workshop. And this is really um, a teaching for um, African internationalist theory. Um, I'll be um, using poetry to um, highlight African internationalism and demonstrate why this is a theory this is a revolution, a theory that serves the African working class. And I'm really looking forward to this event. People are looking forward to this event. And I'm hoping that we will be able to recruit members into NPDM and into the party um, through this event. Um, thank you so much for um, thank you so much for um, listening, and I'm so grateful that I was able to participate in this plenary. Um, you know, we're, we do have a, a small presence in the Caribbean right now, but small things grow, and I'm very optimistic that we will be able to um, make this revolution in the Caribbean. Thank you so much, Uhuru. Uhuru, comrade. Wow. Um, you know, those comrades may have done us a favor. Who, who left who left to work in the Caribbean? <laughs> you listen to this comrade, Janelle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they may have done us a favor. <laughs> it, it is possible. It's very possible. <laughs> 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 that makes me think of um, earlier, uh, DJ Eddie mentioned uh, beautiful fire, right? Like owners and a like just scorching so we can start fresh, and just renew. And, you know, so I just want to salute um, the life that you're bringing to this work, comrade Janine, um, in Jamaica. And uh, yeah, <laughs> want to salute uh, all of that. So there's some comments in the chat and we have about we kind of went into our discussion time. So I say we just still open it up and see where we go because there's this is a really um, important time for us to really discuss what's happening um, in the Caribbean region. So um, Comrade Erica, see any questions? And if you do, let me know. But I had a question. So okay. if we don't have any, I'll just start it off. Okay. Uh -huh. So my question was actually just, again, I wanted to salute this excellent report um, for the Caribbean region under the APSP and ASI leadership. And um, curious about like, do members um, of regional committees, like, so as S. Wazy stated, like over 20,000 Jamaicans are leaving like by the year, if I was correct. And so we are in other areas. And so what, how can um, Africans who have left the Caribbean and are now dispersed in other places, how can they still contribute to the development of the regional committees? Um, if they're not on the ground. And so I just wanted to open that up because um, I think that's an important question. Uh -huh. I can clarify too. Uh -huh. 
Um, I could speak to that just for a little bit. Um, I think that um, the people who leave the island and leave the Caribbean to um, work elsewhere are often, they're often our most skilled workers. And um, I think that they can unite with us through um, joining APDEP. Um, they could turn over their skills to the African revolution by joining APDEP. And um, hopefully as we gain um, more power within the Caribbean itself and establish um, an independent African economy, we won't have as many people leaving and fleeing and we're actually able to be a self-sustaining people, um, African people within the Caribbean. Okay. Yes, well, yeah, I can, I can say that um, the uh, movement of going out, you have these dynamic forces, including uh, people with skills and any dynamic forces. And uh, the work we do outside uh, in the US, in Canada, in the UK, in France is important because they're going to meet African international African internationalism wherever they go. And uh, African internationalism, people will be traveling back with it in their head or in the suit, uh, uh, languages, whatever it is, but they're going to travel back with it. So the, the work we do, basically, we have to maximize wherever uh, we are. And uh, I'm sure people will hear us because everyone, as you know, is looking for response, uh, uh, explanation, and also solution. And uh, the only solution is the revolution and the leadership uh, 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 of the party. So to me, just the work we do, let's maximize it, let's do it better. And uh, people are watching, Africans from Caribbean are everywhere, and they go home regularly, and they'll be traveling back. In fact, they'll be joining even from where they are, US, here in the UK, wherever. We have to anticipate that. Uh, you know, the success of the work we do. Uh, and this is not for Jamaica, this is for, even for Africa, because those Africans have maintained contact with Jamaica or with Grenada or Barbados. They are back and forth. The same Ghana, Nigeria, Senegal, and so on, they are back and forth. And uh, the more we do our work, the, the more people we win ideologically and organizationally, then Africans traveling back home, they will be traveling as African internationalists. And that will also add to the possibility of uh, building uh, uh, in the region uh, itself. So, yeah, or... All right. Uh, we have we do have a comment from President Yejide, and she says, this is the best report I've heard coming out of the Caribbean. I'm really thankful for Janelle's leadership and excited about the developments from here. Um, and then another one that we have from a comrade that has been active and engaged in the chat all day, is uh, Comrade Dennis Knowles. He says, Comrade Janelle, sure. the truth that you have brought about colonial power and what we must do to combat these challenges is most appreciated and profound. And together as a collective, we are winning. I am most honored to have been in this event to meet such a great revolutionary and organizer as you. Uhuru, Comrade. Uhuru. Yeah, but might say quickly, that's why the Congress in South Africa is so critical. We're going to win all kinds of people, and some people will be moving South Africa and back to the Caribbean. So, yeah. It, it's Let just, me uh, thank you. Just, I, I really want to appreciate the kind of responses that people have given uh, to this question raised about the Africans who are leaving uh, the Caribbean. <laughs> and I, I think um, uh, when the Communist International, when the Communist Party USA was created here in the United States in 1919, uh, the vast majority of the people who came into that party were immigrants, were people who were born someplace else. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's logical because they were newly arrived and they were catching hell uh, in, a, in a way and, and they didn't have the same kind of roots uh, uh, in the United States that uh, many of the so-called you know, native white people did. And I think the, the fact is that we organize where we are. And what's going to really be important mm -hmm. is that we break down these borders. Uh, one thing, especially when we're talking about Africans who were born in Jamaica, who, who immigrated to, uh, uh, other places from Jamaica, Garvey. I mean, Garvey won't allow, won't allow them. We, we give them Garvey. Garvey won't allow them to be just Jamaicans who are living uh, in London or just Jamaicans who are because I'm always messing with comrades every time I meet them, you know, like, me can't, me can't believe you say that, you know I me, mean? <laughs> who the hell, <laughs> me say me can't believe it, <laughs> you know, who the hell are you, you know, I mean, we're all Africans, and that's how we take it, and we recruit them, 
and not mm -hmm. recruit them as Jamaicans, but recruit them as Africans into the African People's Socialist Party. And we fight where we are for Africa. Mm -hmm. And in Jamaica, we fight for Africa. And Africans born in Jamaica, when you're in the US, we fight for Africa. And in the United States, we fight for Africa. Every place we are, we fight for Africa. So I think we have to just win that understanding. And uh, there's a song, uh, Comrade um, Janelle, somebody, in this meeting, maybe old enough to remember it. It's it's a, a, a I think it's a soul as it's characterized. A three three cheers to the fool who let you go. Anybody ever hear that song? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the three cheers to the fool who let you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I just think you know, like somebody who are people who have abandoned you know, like the the Caribbean work. It's so so good to yeah. see you. You know, so three cheers. <laughs> That's the three cheers. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Three you out. Uh -huh. I don't know, but I love some soul, so I'm gonna That's learn it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to salute um, just um, the contributions to this discussion, definitely, and uh, salute your work, Comrade Janelle, and the leadership of the party. Um, so, Eric, I think okay, you good. And so we got Comrade Yesterday's question. Fabulous. Uhuru. Well, we're over time, but I don't know if we should just allow a, a, a few minutes to say anything before we close out the section. How can folks get involved? How can we get in touch, you know, to forward this work? We'll give them two minutes. <laughs> I didn't understand the question. Who who raised that question? How can we get involved to oh uh, we're actually over time, but I was just saying if um, Comrades Janelle or um, Comrade uh, Secretary General Louise, you want to say how we can get involved or how we can okay. forward this work in the, as we move on um, in the program. Uh -huh. Well, I want Janelle to consider, even if it's on a handful of people, even if it's not larger than the Sankofa that you've just done, uh, to look at trying to organize the ALD regional, Caribbean regional um event in jamaica yeah. Yeah. yeah yes i think that's a must that's a must yeah. yes and I, I know we're over time but i saw dc owner asked a question about economic development in um in the caribbean region and um i think that's a very important component of the work that we um should be doing um i yeah, I'm not sure exactly what to say. Um, I had proposed some ideas for um, um, doing economic work that can be of service to African women who are um, under attack um, from, from horizontal violence, colonial violence from African men. And, um, but we'll see what can be done. Mm -hmm. Uhuru, comrade. Yeah, I think that's an important question. And you talk about Project Black Ankh and, and ABDEP in general. And so I, I want to salute you for bringing in the importance of um, working with the skilled workers and the African working class under the party's leadership. So yeah, anything is possible. All right. So I'm going to um, move the program and really want to salute um, where we have um, taken this discussion so far. So. Now we're gonna hear from a dynamic organization, um, the organization of which I am a member of, and I must say I'm, I'm biased towards, and we just mentioned them. So the All African Peoples Development and Empowerment Project. Um, this is led by International Director, Dr. Aisha Fields, and this presentation is titled, Building a United and Liberated African Nation with Our Own Skills. So what a great way to introduce this section. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uhuru comrades, um, thank you comrade Michelle for that introduction. And um, again, my name is Aisha Fields and I'm the International Director of the All African Peoples Development and Empowerment Project, which is commonly known as APDEP. And I am honored and excited to participate in this third plenary, the seventh Congress of the African People's Socialist Party. I wanna begin my presentation today by saluting my leadership uh, Omalia Shetela, the chairman of the African People's Socialist Party and the leader and founder of the Uhuru Movement. I want to also salute the architect of the Black Power Blueprint, the chair of our party, Zinaya Shetela, secretary general of the African Socialist International, Comrade Louise Kinshasa, 
veteran organizer and APSP director of organization, Comrade Chimarenga Tilimbao, and the rest of the members of the international leading body, the African People's Socialist Party worldwide. So uh, APDEP was formed by the African People's Socialist Party in 2007 with the mission to win African people around the world to contribute our skills toward building African community-led development programs in the areas of agriculture, education, healthcare, disaster preparedness, and emergency response. Colonel Amalia Shetela reminds us of the revolutionary strategy that APDEP was formed to carry out this quote. APDEP is an important African internationalist organization that opens the door to the struggle for African liberation, but often overlooks sector of the African population, such as doctors, nurses, engineers, and other skilled African workers. Part of APDEP's task is to influence, indeed induce class suicide when possible, or at minimum, harness their technical expertise to the anti-colonial interests of the African nation as defined by its advanced attachment, African People's Socialist Party, vanguard of the African working class. APDEP was formed to bring Africa's skills to the African revolution and forward into a united liberated Africa. To highlight this, we return to the 2021 political report to the second of the African People's Socialist Party. In it, Chairman invites us to envision APDEP's work as part of the process of developing a post-colonial independent African government, Ministry of Development and Empowerment. This call recognizes the goal of our party and movement to not simply work to improve or reform the current colonial conditions of African people to completely overturn them. Our struggle is one that must lead to the end of the colonial domination of African people must lead to self-government, concrete manifestation of black power. Over the years, APDEP has built a variety of dual power programs that not only help to improve our immediate material conditions as a people, but that give us a growing independent capacity to meet our own needs as we work to negate the role that the colonial state plays in our lives. We've built rainwater harvesting systems, trained more than 100 community health workers, built infant and maternal health centers, a variety of youth and adult educational programs, vocational school, nursery school, community farms, gardens, and garden collectives. Guided by the revolutionary theory of African internationalism, that members recognize the unity of all African people. We reject all false physical and mental borders that would seek to separate African people from each other from our national homeland, Africa. That members recognize our primary contradiction as a people is political and that neither charity nor reformism will address the fundamental problem responsible for all of the horrible conditions we live under. That problem is colonialism. And as important as our programs are in addressing the material conditions of our people, we are clear that we cannot build enough community gardens, healthcare programs, rainwater harvesting systems, or mental health support groups to free us from this colonial reality. We will have to fight. Our programs are designed to build our muscles as a people, build dual and contending power, African working class power that helps us to reduce and eventually completely negate the power of the colonizer. So as we report on our work today, we wanna to be clear, this work is a part of a revolutionary strategy led by the advanced attachment of the African working class, the African People's Socialist Party. This leadership, this ability to serve as a strategy of the liberation of African people is what makes APDEP significant. We salute the party for its more than 50 years of relentless struggle in pursuit of the redemption of our national homeland, Africa, and are honored to play our role in taking down the colonial system responsible for over 600 years of misery of our people, the people of the world. Uhuru. Here to help us sum up 2021, and to show the work that lies ahead are my comrades, some of the best sons and daughters of Africa, Africans who have determined that their skills belong to the African nation and are doing everything they can to win other Africans to this stance and to forward this work. We have comrade Chiwaniso Luzolo, APDEF's International Secretary and Director of Information and Education, Ndaya Bajikikai, Zenzele Consignment Assistant Manager and N2U Coordinator, Asa Ampu, APDEF Occupied Azania Director, Michael Parker, APDEP's International Membership Director. Comrade Michelle Odom, APDEP's Mental Health Programs, Programs Coordinator and Southern Regional Rep of the African People's Socialist Party, Obina Bantu Shango. Right now, I'm gonna turn it over to my comrade, Michael Parker, APDEP's newest member of our International Executive Committee, who 
will give us a report on our Department of Membership, our volunteer program, the M2U. Uhuru Mike. Uhuru, comrades, Uhuru. My name is Mike, and I'm based out here in San Diego. And I've been part of the party for about seven months now, going on eight. But I'm also the secretary of the Mental Health Committee, and now the new international membership coordinator for APDEV. Before I even get started, I'd like to salute uh, Chairman Omali Yeshitella, DC Ona Zane, Dr. Fields, and the rest of the comrades in the Uhuru movement who are constantly fighting against colonialism. I am super excited to grow with this group of comrades as well as help APDEP grow in membership. Next slide, please. APDEP is an extremely important extension of the African People's Socialist Party, wiping out the parasitic relationship between the ruling class, oppressor, and the African working class, oppressed, is critical for proper revolution to proceed. You can't use the same system and expect any real results. This is why the creation of dual and contending programs and economic incubators for self-determination everywhere that colonialism is, will be achieved. Never for profit, but for power over our own abolition. ABDEP specializes in agriculture, education, healthcare, and disaster relief. At the same time, revolution also can't be done by one person, one organization that engages in the struggle of one issue. Revolution should be seen from a dialectical standpoint. This is why the collection of individuals with different skill sets under an organization with the correct political line, such as ABDEP, will prove to be an important contribution to overthrowing colonial capitalism. This is where the international membership coordinator of APDEP comes in. Not only winning our skilled Africans over before they become petty bourgeoisie, but also winning the poor working class masses over so they can look at us as a solution to their material conditions. So let's get started with the POA. Next slide, please. All right, all right. So the POA, it's a little dark there. Okay, there we go. The POA or plan of action for those who don't know for the year of 2022 will contain six goals. The first main objective is number one, the creation of the committee underneath the leadership of the international membership coordinator. To be more specific, we need folks who can be a secretary, social media membership coordinator, college campus membership coordinator for HBCUs and PWIs, along with Info and Ed for the creation of graphics, amongst other things. For the IEC, the roles would be economic development coordinator. Following the completion of that, goals two through five will be building APDEP branches in Huntsville, Alabama, Everton West, Occupied Azania, Houston, Texas, and San Diego, California. The strategy for each will differ city to city. Some may need the branch around the existence of an ongoing APDEP campaign, such as Huntsville and Houston, uh, others, such as San Diego and Occupied Azania, will require uh, sorry will require the creation of a branch, then the creation of campaigns or increased capacity to fulfill fulfill these campaigns. From branch to branch, from branch building to the creation of a committee for the membership coordinator, precise and targeted outreach will be used to fill every role. Of course, general membership will 100% be appreciated but we specifically want to target folks with specific skills. We prefer to target someone who with experience and success in economic development or graphic design for info and ed, or someone who works well with recruiting using social media, for example. This will be done by searching on college campuses, attending in-person and virtual events specific to skill sets needed to fill these committees and the use of social media and the internet. Lastly, will be to develop ways to retain uh, current members that are both active and inactive. We can do this through membership appreciation, for example, uh, uh, with birthday acknowledgements, for example. Uh, there's still work that needs to be done in this area, but regardless, the International Membership Coordinator of APDEP has plenty, plenty to do in 2022. Let's get to work. Uhuru, next slide, please. Okay, but uh, the volunteers are extremely valuable to the Uhuru movement. 
regardless of what organization is being volunteered for. All are appreciated. They are the heart and soul of the Uhuru movement. NTU has been and will be a way folks can dedicate their time, skills, and resources towards creating dual and contending institutions for African working class communities. The picture below uh, represents how effective the NTU Brigade can be. Because of this, it will be a continued way for me as international membership coordinator to increase our capacity. Uh, the NTU Volunteer Brigade can also be used as a buffer be before joining said organization or committee. This is why the use of the NTU Volunteer Brigade is extremely beneficial in terms of building up future membership for branches and potential committee members. Volunteers have a great impact on the Uhuru movement. This next slide, along with this one, is an appreciation and salute to the volunteers. Next slide, please. Okay, okay, there we go, cool. Uh, we appreciate the volunteers so much that we reward them for their hard work and dedication with a Volunteer of the Month Award. In summary, the work of the volunteers never gets taken for granted. Next slide, please. <clears throat> there we go. All right, so uh, this is the 2022 15-year anniversary convention is going to be a big event, comrades. Real talk. So be ready to travel and participate. The convention will work in conjunction with our economic institutions in Zelle in addition to being part of our membership drive to increase uh, membership. ABDEP and party members can contribute, so this event will be successful. So that's some of the many things to look forward to in ABDEP in 2022. Next slide, please. Cool. So if anybody is ready to put in work for a better future for the African working class and has a strong skill set or unsure about their skill set but want to join, be sure to join ABDEP today by going to developmentforafrica.org backslash membership, or you can scan the QR code on the screen to sign up. This goes for current party members and comrades and other committees. If you don't have a skill set that fits specifically in agriculture, healthcare, education, or disaster relief, don't even trip. We have other rules for you, comrades. The primary position uh, you can be is secretary, which I will gladly show you how to be one. Uh, but you can also be social media, being sent social media or college, camp college campus membership coordinator or any other rules that we have uh, opening up. It's time to put those thoughts and ambition to work with the organization and the political line of ABDEP. Join today. So that's my presentation, comrades. Uhuru, stay relentless. So the next presentation will be from Comrade Kundai with Economic Development. Uhuru, thanks, Mike. Um, first, I would like to appreciate my leadership, uh, Director Aisha Fields and the Chairman and Deputy Chair Onazinea Shatella. And um, over the years, ABDEP has been doing incredible programs, which have primarily been funded through membership and monthly fundraisers and general donations. We recognize now that we have to move differently. As materialists, we understand the question of resources is a critical component to our ability to fund and build the programs ABDEP is being called on to do. We are now recruiting someone who can lead our overall economic work beyond fundraisers, including our grants work, the economic institution and overall budget development to help take us where we need to be by meeting the organization's financial goals. While we are actively looking for an economic development coordinator as assistant manager in Zinsley consignment, which I'll talk a, a, a little bit about later, um, I'll be giving the economic development report today. First, let's take a look at what our 2022 budget um, is requiring. In 2022, our budget will have to fund the expenses of the Marcus Garvey Youth Program projects, local branch building, planting, 
and maintenance of our community gardens, marketing, outreach, tele the telehealth program and salary for our full-time organizers. And this year we plan to meet the budget with income organized from grants, membership dues, fundraisers, and our economic institution. So um, the, one of the uh, first strategies that we're gonna use um, for our economic plan to help meet the goals is, um, is through grants. So Comrade Michelle has taken on leading the grants work for ABDEP and participates in the movement's grant team. Last year, we were able to submit our first three grants with the support of the grant team that works under the leadership of the ODC. From the submission of a grant from a local APDA volunteer, we were, we were awarded our first grant. This year, we are working um, to win others into our grant team to increase our ability to apply and win grants to help sustain the work of APDA projects. Next is membership goals, membership dues. Uh, membership dues has been the most consistent way of bringing in resources for the programs. And now that we have a membership coordinator who you just heard from um, that can focus on bringing in more people to the organization, we'll be able to meet a larger percentage of the budget with membership fees through quarterly membership drives and other targeted outreach. This will also contribute to funds outside of dues like birthday fundraisers. So ABDEP members and supporters will be called on to set donation goals. Um, next slide. Um, yeah. Uh, to set uh, donation goals through this platform, just like the Black Power Blueprint, we'll utilize our nonprofit 501c3 status to do Facebook and birth, uh, Facebook birthday fundraisers for ABDEP programs as well. In addition to that, we will continue to do our local social fundraisers. Um, as you can see here in the pictures, um, as we begin to rebuild ABDEP locally in our headquarters, we will use those forces to contribute to the development of a fundraising committee. Last year, we, co we continued to use the Pain and Sips Monthly as fundraisers with a longtime friend of ABDEP, Bert Corman. This is a social event that we use to bring our people together for a good time and a good cause with cultural art and music. We even hosted a few last year in a new black owned winery here in Huntsville. Um, most of them were held in our economic institution, Zinsley Consignment. And if you don't know yet, Zinsley is the primary economic project of ABDEP. Zinsley translates to do for self in the Isi Kosa language, which is spoken in Southern Africa. Our mission as Zinsley Consignment is to serve as a cultural, social, and economic hub and economic hub and vehicle for the local and international African community. Zinzalay provides an economic vehicle through which people can buy black power, organize and consign handmade original African clothing, accessories, art, small household and personal care products, literature and other genuine African products in an effort to support practical programs that contribute to self-reliance and genuine development in African communities throughout the world. Zinzalay is the headquarters of ABDEP and the party's Southern region. The store is a place where people in our region can connect to ABDEP as well as other APSP programs. So basically the store has two main goals. Um, the first one is to create resources for the programs of ABDEP. And secondly, is, is to convert shoppers um, into ABDEP volunteers and members. Before COVID-19, the store housed local ABDEP programs such as our Marcus Garvey Youth Program, mental health forums, diabetes workshops, fitness resources, and other important community meetings and workshops for the people. This is one reason we call ourselves the People Store. And as we learn to navigate through COVID, this year, one of our goals is to bring some of the ABDEP programs and party conferences back to the store. Zinsley will host the ABDEP 15-year convention mentioned earlier by our membership coordinator. Another goal is to have a successful six year anniversary celebration in August, 2022. In October of last year, we celebrated the fifth year anniversary celebration of Zen's Lake Consignment, which was a huge milestone for ABDEF in terms of economic work. We celebrated with um, African drumming. As you can see here, this is a Brazilian Cueta group. Um, you, can, you, can go, you can keep going to the next one. Um, an auction show, auction and fashion show. Here are some of our models. African cuisine and awards for ABDEP members and volunteers of the quarter. Um, as you can see here, the sister on the left is um, the uh, 
very iconic image of the chairman that uh, one of our AFDA members painted, that Comrade Matsumela one, our host and DJ, and then some of our guests and other participants. So, um, okay, so moving forward in year six, we will be developing a POA for the entire store with some of the following goals. Um, shift sales from being primarily consignment to owning more wholesale items. This will allow the store to generate more money independent of fundraisers or outside sources. Um, and the second one is to win more online sales by relaunching our website on a new platform and other marketing strategies to increase our live uh, Facebook sales, which I strongly encourage um, everyone tuning in today uh, to check those out on Mondays and Fridays on our Facebook. Last year, I think we really um, saw our potential to build the store to capacity in 2022. We will apply what we learned to the beginning to turn the corner, as Director Aisha always reminds us we must do. We want everyone viewing today to stay tuned to what is to come this year, including all the new must-have items you'll be eager to get from your favorite African boutique. So we want you guys, um, everybody, to pull out your phones right now and go to Instagram and Facebook and follow our pages. Um, which is listed on the screen. And we'll also be putting in the chat a link to join our VIP program to save monthly discounts on your purchases. And if you are a business owner or creator and would like Zenzile to house your items, send us an email to info at zenzileconsignment.com to become a consigner or wholesaler this year with us. Um, we'll also be hiring again very soon to expand our staff and marketing team. So if anyone is interested in that, you can also email info at zenzileconsignment.com. So thank you guys. That sums up our economic report. And next, I would like to call on my comrade Chu Niso to give the educational report. Uhuru. Again, my name is Chiwo, and I'm the International Secretary for ABDEP and also the Secretary of the Marcus Garvey Youth Program. And before I get started, I would also like to salute my direct leadership, Dr. Aisha Fields, Chairman and DCONA, and the entire NCC, as well as the membership of the APSP. The Marcus Garvey Youth Program is our current primary program under our education work. The Marcus Garvey Youth Program, which was previously carried out primarily through programs and workshops on the ground, has recently been moved to the Zoom platform as a result of COVID-19. Although this has been a limitation in a lot of ways, it has opened the program up to international possibilities, allowing the children to participate and learn with and from each other all over the world. The Marcus Garvey Youth Program focused on winning general unity with a position of African self-reliance and self-determination is one of our efforts to deal with contradictions in the colonial education system. And while we recognize that the complete overhaul of this system is necessary in order to realize the true capacity of our young people and that community control of education should be the ultimate goal, providing revolutionary youth programs is an important first step in challenging our youth to think critically and proactively about the world around them. The Marcus Garvey Youth Program is an African internationalist based program that aims to provide children with a scientific view of the world that allows them to objectively solve the problems of the African nation. A central objective of the program is to spark our children's interest in developing their own neighborhoods, as well as African communities worldwide through practical skill based workshops. It also arms them with the political education that they need to understand and address the contradictions in white colonial schools and the world at large. The program strives to unite the student's personal experience of these contradictions with the global African nation. The program runs for nine months and is currently based online with some elements being carried out locally during our annual youth camps. Students range between the ages of five to 13 and are separated into groups of three based on age. The program is currently staffed by volunteers from APDEP as well as other Africans that are willing to share their skills, resources and expertise for the development of our children. The goals of the Marcus Garvey Youth Program are as follows. Number one, to build a youth wing of the Ahura movement. Number two, utilizing the Marcus Garvey Youth Program, we want to develop the children as African internationalists. Number three, to teach specialized skills such as survival, farming, and first aid. And number four, to give the children a sense of national identity. Next slide. The program teaches nine different topics, offering one workshop each fourth Sunday of the month for the duration of the program, and the topics are as follows. We are Africans part one and two, colonial slavery, Africa for Africans, African leaders, first aid, survival, agriculture, and healthcare, nutrition, and fitness. Workshops are led by members of APDEP and have standard program that includes a presentation from a guest speaker, and here you can see what our full program entails. 
The children and the group, the groups, as we stated before, are broken down by age, and we have three age groups. The Mau Mau group is our five to seven-year-olds. The Panther group is our eight to 10-year-olds, and the Grenadier group is our 11 to 13-year-olds. And now we're going to view a short video from one of our participants with some demographics about the program. Ooh, my name is Marley White and I am eight years old and live in San Diego, California. I am in the Panther age group of the Marcus Garvey Youth Program. The Marcus Garvey Youth Program has 33 children signed up from all over the world with members located in California, Pennsylvania, Alabama, Missouri, Louisiana, South Africa, and Sierra Leone. Sign your child up or join the committee today. You can also see the number of children broken down by age group. We have five children in our Mau Mau age group and 14 children in both our Panther and Grenadier age groups. So far, we have completed three workshops. The first workshop led by SG Loazy, We Are Africans Part One, was launched on September 26th of last year. We also hosted workshops led by comrade Dr. Matsabella Odom, Impedum International Vice President, and APTEP's own International Director, Dr. Aisha Fields, and also listed our upcoming workshops. Uh, the next few slides are taken from the first workshop that was led by SG Loazy, and it's just to give you an idea of what the children learned during the program and how we accomplished that. We want the workshops to be both engaging and highly informative and also to reinforce the sense of national identity and the other goals of the program. We include videos, music clips, GIFs, and images of Africans from all over the world to keep the presentation informative but fun and to reinforce that we are one African people. Another exciting aspect of the Marcus Garvey Youth Program is the trip to Africa. The children age 11 to 13, our Grenadier age group, will be able to participate in. And this trip will be in October of 2023 during our party's 8th Congress and will be an opportunity for all of the children to experience our homeland with the proper critical analysis and worldview needed to solve the problems we face in, the, in Africa and in the world at large. It will also allow the children an opportunity to interact from all over the world. One of the most important components of the Marcus Garvey Youth Program to be able to achieve all of this and the other many ideas that we have for the program is funding. We are developing plans to raise funds for the program to keep as many aspects as possible free for the children. And some of these plans include the publication and sale of our Marcus Garvey Children's Book, as well as other educational resources such as flashcards, encouraging and training children to become distributors for the Burning Spear newspaper, and also selling cookies with the Hulu Foods and Pies through the process of researching and applying for grants as well. For the past two years, in the month of February, our Marcus Garvey Youth Program has hosted an essay contest for students ages eight through, th eight through 13. And the essay contest challenges students to define what an African leader is by choosing an African leader and writing about what makes them a leader. Last year's essay contest consisted of nine participants from all over the world. The essay contest is open again this year, and we encourage students to submit their essays by February 28th for a chance to win cash prizes. And I want to wrap up by quoting three of the Marcus Garvey Youth Program principles of unity. Number one, African children are brilliant, capable, and want to learn. Number two, the colonial education system was not designed to educate African children, but to indoctrinate them to respect the US and the European colonial domination of our people and to maintain the status quo. Number three, African children are an integral part of the African nation, and they must be given the leadership, organizational, and practical skills needed to contribute to the success of our African liberation movement. Volunteer with the Marcus Garvey Youth Program. If you have a child or know someone who might be interested, you can sign up children to participate at tinyurl.com slash MGYP sign up. You can also volunteer by sending us an email at info at developmentforafrica.org. And next, we're going to have our agricultural report that's going to be given by our Southern Regional Representative, Kobina Bantushago Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru, Comrade Shibu, I appreciate that presentation. And uh, I would also like to salute uh, my leadership, uh, Chairman Omali Jatella, uh, DC on the NCC, and um, also Director Aisha Fields. Um, thank you. Uh, my name is Kobina Bantushango, and I am the Southern Region Representative of the African People's Social Party. 
I also uh, serve as the APDEP Community Garden Coordinator for Huntsville, and I am honored to give the report on APDEP's agricultural programs. It is uh, imperative that Black people grow and produce our own food because as, as the revolutionary African leader Thomas Sankara reminds us, he who feeds uh, uh, you controls you. Before the European attack on Africa, African people were growing, raising, hunting, and fishing for our own food in, our, in, in a sustainable way. We were people who produced life for ourselves. The struggle for African self-determination and self-government, which is being led by the APSP and, and the Uhuru movement, and which ABDEP is an integral part is about making sure that African people are able to once again produce life for ourselves on our own terms and feeding ourselves must be front and center. Over the years, ABDEP has built community gardens uh, and garden collectives in Washington, DC, Huntsville, Alabama, Decatur, Alabama, and Houston, Texas. We have built multi-acre cassava and vegetable farms in Sierra Leone, West Africa, 2021, uh, was, was a year of development in our agricultural work, which this, mo this moment is centered in Houston, Texas, and Huntsville, Alabama. In Huntsville, we now have two gardens. Our first garden, the Northwood Uhuru Freedom Garden, which we reported on last year, has been expanded and beautified uh, with the help of members of the community uh, who participate on our uh, beautification team, which is led by a longtime ABDEP donor and supporter Andravi. The garden now has a beautiful uh, seating area, a decorative entryway, and a water tap now connected to the neighborhood water system. Our, our uh, seating area has already been used uh, for workshops during our first annual Earth Day uh, event when we hosted in the garden in April, and there's a, a rest area for those of us who work in the garden on our Saturday and Sunday weekly work days. I want uh, to salute one of our most committed community garden volunteers, Sister Hun, who even uh, won volunteer of the quarter for the fourth quarter of 2021 for her constant work in the garden last year. Our second uh, garden was developed in, uh, in partnership with the St. Barley Primitive Baptist Church. The church garden uh, committee volunteers have worked closely with us to build a beautiful garden that has not uh, only produced large uh, harvest, but uh, that has also been the home of ABDEP agriculture uh, workshops, including our annual workshop taught by the Ram family on how to identify and use wild edible plants for medicine and food. Our Houston garden is our oldest and, uh, and has harvested now for the 13th consecutive year we salute our volunteers and members who brave who brave the Houston heat uh, to plant weed and harvest uh, with us. Our Houston Garden was the home of our annual Juneteenth Festival, now named after our deceased veteran comrade and Houston native Omawali K. Fing. Long live K. Fing. Uh, the Omawali K. Fing Juneteenth Freedom and Musical Festival brought out great local entertainers and vendors to our fifth uh, ward, Gwen Archie. Community Garden, despite the COVID contradictions uh, we, we have all been uh, experiencing. We are looking forward to the next festival this summer. As we develop APDEP branches uh, through the US and Africa, we will be working to make sure that uh, we have gardens everywhere possible. The, the call right now is to win Africans with agricultural skills to come into APDEP and help us to advance this work for Africans to feed ourselves. The biggest resource that we have in each other and is each other and the knowledge uh, that we share. As a people, we are not lacking in skills or in the desire uh, to make sure to make a future for ourselves and our people. The only thing we lack is organization. ABDEP is the organizational vehicle for Africans to collectivize our skills to improve our uh, community's quality of life is, it is the mechanism for sharing our resources and building collectively to provide for our people. The current pandemic and the ongoing attacks on African people should remind us that uh, we have not, we have, we, we, we cannot afford
to remain dependent on our oppressors to do anything for us and that we must build our capacity to do everything that we can for ourselves. We are calling on Africans, no matter where you are located, to grow the revolution by, by joining ABDEF's Agriculture Committee or take uh, advantage of the resources provided for your community to start growing food today. You can learn more at developmentforafrica.org. There you will find more articles that will address uh, African people controlling our food. Help us grow the revolution. Now, I will turn it over to Comrade Michelle, Abdel Mental Health Programs Coordinator, to give her report. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru, Comrade Kobina, I want to salute you for your leadership um, and for that report. We are winning. Um, well, as has been said, my name is uh, Michelle Mwezi Odom, and I want to appreciate this year's plenary and all of the work under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. In this section, I will discuss the development of the mental health and wellness programs in ABDEP. But before I continue, I want to salute my leadership, International Director, Dr. Aisha Fields, Deputy Chair Onazene Yeshitela, and Chairman of the African People's Socialist Party, as well as visionary for ABDEP, Omali Yeshitela. Uhuru, next slide. So we're gonna talk about just African internationalism on mental health. As we know, this theory was developed by Chairman Omali Yeshitela and it's a working class theory uh, that reflects the actual reality of African black people historically up until today. Uh, African internationalism requires that any discussion regarding the mental health or the well-being of African people must first recognize that what we are experiencing is colonialism. So when we call it what it is, we can say that it is colonialism that produces every kind of mental health problem that we experience as African people. And until we have power over our own lives, we'll continue to see these same types of mental health problems, be it chronic stress, anxiety, depression, PTSD, suicide, self-harm, and other colonial diseases. So then we must understand and come to the conclusion that healing will only come through resistance, right? So in that process, uh, we first you know, call out the illegitimacy of the slave master to enslave us at gunpoint, brutalize us, terrorize us, kill us, and then use our labor to then develop these systems of education and healthcare and mental health that have now the power to diagnose us, to quote unquote, treat us, while at the same time blaming us, shaming us, and criminalizing us when we're only displaying natural responses to being colonized. When in reality, the only genuine diagnosis that we can give to all black people is that we are colonized, right? And thus the only treatment is for us to get uncolonized and that the enslaver is truly um, the one that is not human, right? So um, in that sense of um, um, that the enslaver is, um, is, you know, is insane, right? As Chairman talks about the colonial mentality for us to be a truly redeemed and self-governing free people. So therefore we say that the only way for the slave to be uh, truly free or healthy is to do as the late Franz Fanon said, right? Which is to kill the colonizer. And why do we say this? Because we're materialists. And so if we are to truly be free, we must take a dialectical approach to both explaining and changing our relationship that we have to this parasitic system of colonialism. So um, as a development arm of the APSP, ABDEP is developing mental health programs that provide spaces for African people to discuss our mental health and to quote Comrade Bakari, you know, who said in that process of holding the hands of African people who are facing hard times, we'll take that hand and shape it into a fist, right? A fist to fight back because in the end we wanna get free. So next slide. Uh -huh. So talking about the mental health committee, I wanna appreciate and give a shout out to the ABDEP Mental Health Committee, uh, Secretary Comrade Michael Parker, Comrades um, Sarteka Amab Nefer and Comrade Mukulu Uhuru. The ABDEP Mental Health Committee was formed following last year's plenary in 2021 and meets consistently on the first and the third Saturday virtually. The Mental Health Committee is looking to fill all committee roles. And um, for the sake of time, I won't read them all, but they're on the screen there. These are some of the roles that we are currently seeking to, um, to fulfill. Um, which includes, you know, resource specialists and, you know, um, you know, collecting data and also opportunities for supervision. So uh, the committee has the responsibility of uh, one, developing concrete programs, right? Two, 
advancing our skills and training as needed as committee members. Three, to deepen the analysis of African internationalism on the question of mental health. And four, to develop propaganda and you know, promoting revolutionary wellness and discipline in the anti-colonial struggle. So anybody who is interested in contributing to the development of mental health and wellness programs for the dispersed African nation should visit our website, developmentforafrica.org slash mental health. Next slide. So we invite Africans to participate in our monthly AYA resistance circle. AYA circles take place once a month on the fourth Friday of the month virtually. Um, for more information and registration, go to developmentforafrica.org slash mental health. So AYA is a Twi word uh, for the fern plant uh, represented by the Adinkra symbol on the slide. This symbolizes, um, or this symbol represents an individual who has endured or, um, and defied against much difficulty, right? Or, and symbolizes perseverance and resourcefulness, that's us. So guided by the theory of African internationalism, the Aya resistance circles are a healing space, right? For all African people to discuss the impacts of colonialism on our mental health, but we are not just here to get healing or to promote healing as it's um, as something that will you know evolve from simply doing yoga, meditation, or thinking positively every day, which you know are all good and healthy practices, right? Don't misunderstand, but they are coping mechanisms nonetheless, because at the end of the day, we're still colonized. So no matter how relaxed or centered we are, our, we have to understand our healing will only come as a result of our resistance. So therefore, the mental health committee we seek to develop materialists who understand that if our struggle is not tied to our end goal, which is to get free, then it's futile, or as chairman will say, it's worthless. Next slide. Uhuru. So a typical IS circle will include uh, political education, uh, wellness tips, discussion, um, uh, practices, as well as um, resources and a mindfulness or exercise component. Uh, our circles began in May, 2021, uh, which introduced African internationalism on the question of mental health, and we covered the following topics. Session one, ask the question, are we mentally ill or are we experiencing natural responses to being colonized? Session two explains the colonial mentality. Session three explains the impact of vertical violence, which is further carried out through horizontal violence. And session four focuses on health and fitness, understanding that colonialism is indeed bad for our health and that our overall health is directly tied to our mental health. So future uh, cycles of the IA resistance circles will cover topics related to the African family. Um, we will focus on issues particular to the special oppression of African women, African men, and African children. Next slide. So what's next? Um, currently, the ABDEP Mental Health Committee is building a resource list and referral network because as Comrade Kobina said, the most valuable resource that we have is each other and our skills. So we are seeking to build relationships with skilled African, you know, black people in the areas of mental health, uh, substance abuse, community health care, social services. Um, <clears throat> this process brings African intellectuals, students and other skilled Africans into organized resistance, right? Under the leadership of a revolutionary nonprofit like ABDEC. And you know, where we can connect us globally to programs that are on the ground that can provide genuine care and support. So this referral network is also part of the committee's uh, goal to further develop um, first responders programs, right? Which will recruit, train, and organize community-led response teams to address um, mental health crises in our communities. Next slide. So um, last slide. So um, Uhuru, and as it's been said, um, I will quote a well-known African proverb. If you wanna go fast, go alone. And if you wanna go far, go together. So now is the time for us to collectivize our skills. It's time to fight back. Let's get organized and let's achieve freedom in our lifetime. And as we say in, Af in ABDEP, African skills for African liberation. And who I wanna turn it back over to director, Dr. Aisha Fields, who will give the report on Project Black Onk. Uhuru, comrade. Uhuru, Comrade Michelle, thank you so much for your report. So I want to start off by saying Red Cross, get lost. You know, it's time for Project Black Um as the African nation's own emergency disaster and preparedness response program is being built by APDEP 
under the leadership of our party. It's clear that the parasitic charities and NGOs do nothing to overturn the colonial conditions of African people, even as they benefit monetarily from the devastation that we experience in the midst or aftermath of natural disasters or imperialist imposed disasters. One of the most glaring examples of this practice was detailed in a 2015 ProPublica expose showing that the Red Cross only built six homes, with the more than half a billion dollars raised on behalf of Africans who were devastated by a 2010 earthquake that left more than 250,000 of our brothers and sisters dead and 300,000 injured. We all remember as the US government allowed Africans to drown, stranded on top of homes as floodwaters rapidly rose during Hurricane Katrina in 2005. More than 1,800 Africans were dead and thousands displaced. The US government even denied the medical help being offered by Cuba, African people in New Orleans, leaving us at the mercy of the same government and charities who exist at our expense. Although natural disasters are obviously not new, climate change increases their frequency and intensity making it harder for those affected to cope with the impacts. Often, Africans and other colonized people are in the process of rebuilding from one disaster when we're struck again by yet another. The US National Intelligence Council wrote in its Global Trends 2040 report that the physical effects of climate change are likely to intensify during the next two decades, especially in the 2030s, more extreme storms, Droughts and floods, melting glaciers and ice caps, and rising sea levels will accompany rising temperatures. Climate scientists have concluded that we must limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2040 if we're to avoid a future in which everyday life around the world is marked by its worst, most devastating effects, which are experienced most acutely by African and other colonized people for whom climate change often compounds the poverty, displacement, hunger, and social unrest required by our colonial domination. Some scientists believe that Africa will be the continent hardest hit by climate change. An aspect of this has to do with the fact that Africa straddles the equator and has two arid and semi-arid zones on either side of the tropics. Semi-arid areas are thought to be particularly vulnerable to climate change because these are areas are already climatically stressed with high temperatures, low rainfall and long dry seasons. However, that is only one part of the story. The primary reason that Africa is so vulnerable to the effects of climate change is that Africa remains colonized. Their neo-colonial rule, masses of African workers and peasants have no benefit whatsoever from the vast natural resources of our continent. Resources like cobalt, coltan that fuel the capitalist economy and that create the highest standard of living in the world that which is experienced by the general white population, including white workers, the US, Europe, and around the world. The poverty that this theft of resources has imposed on African people means that we are often just one natural disaster away from losing everything, if we have anything at all. Our party and movement are not simply waiting for the next hurricane, mudslide, or cyclone to occur, or for the eventual defeat of colonial capitalism. We are right now building our own independent capacity to respond to the growing needs of our people as we face the impact of the climate-driven disasters which disproportionately affect us. Black Dubs Project Black Ankh is our solution. Ankh, an ancient African symbol for life, represents what our movement and this process embody, which is life for the African world. Project Black Ankh was initiated by APDEP in 2014 as a response to the Ebola epidemic in West Africa. Sierra Leone has been the location of many important APDEP programs, including two maternity health centers, multi-acre vegetable and cassava farms, rainwater harvesting programs, a vocational school, nursery school, and a variety of youth and adult educational programs. Project, next slide, please. Project Black Onk Sierra Leone initiated a process that trained 50 community health workers on the identification and prevention of Ebola virus disease. We also connected with 40 Ebola survivors and their families, providing them with food, water, medicine, and sanitation supplies. Since that time, Project Black Onk has intervened in African communities in Houston in response to Hurricane Harvey in 2017. And now in the era of COVID-19, APDEP has determined to build Project Black Onk as a permanent program, the African nation's response to the Red Cross. 
March 7, 2020, Chairman O'Malley should tell a call for the establishment of our party's People's War Commission against COVID-19 in order to provide leadership to the African nation during this time of the coronavirus pandemic. But after consolidating the People's War Commission and reactivating Project Black Onk, that began right away bringing together our medical advisory team, we began developing a variety of COVID protocols covering everything from how to boost our immune systems, ways we can mitigate our risk of catching COVID-19. These protocols were put into popular brochures, leaflets, and posters for mass distribution, and taken by the thousands to African working class communities throughout the U.S. All this was launched in early March, for most people generally understood the serious implications of COVID and prior to the lockdowns initiated in the U.S. Then when lockdowns were implemented, Uhura movement organizers from around the U.S. and South Africa went directly to African working class communities in our protocols, informing our people on the importance of mask wearing and offering organization as the key to defeating the colonial virus. One of the most important Project Black Onk initiatives developed in this period is our international COVID-19 telehealth program. This program allows African people anywhere in the world the ability to make video appointments with our APDEP medical personnel. All appointments are free and our staff by licensed medical professionals offer important, potentially life-saving COVID-19 education and information. I wanna take a moment to introduce the members of our telehealth program uh, team. Dr. Loretta King, the St. Louis-based nurse practitioner and lead provider for our COVID-19 telehealth program. Dr. King has been a key force in not only the development and recruitment of medical forces to our program, but also in the plans to expand it beyond COVID-19 to address chronic colonial diseases many African people experience, including diabetes, high blood pressure, and hyperlipidemia. Comrade Deborah Fofit Alkibalan is an RN with more than 40 years experience in the field. She is based in St. Louis, Missouri, and serves as our medical volunteer coordinator. We appreciate Comrade Fofit, whose primary assignment uh, in our party is as economic development director for MPDOM, who contributes so much to the administration of our telehealth program. Dr. Lauren Arrington is a nurse practitioner and midwife based in Maryland. She is a longtime APDEP supporter and volunteer and serves as one of the providers for our telehealth program. Dr. Adonica Franklin is also a nurse practitioner based in Texas and is one of our telehealth program providers. I salute this incredible team of medical professionals, professionals who have donated so much of their time to staff appointments from throughout the African world, including Africa, Europe, various states throughout the US. There's been a particularly high demand for the telehealth program in the last few months. as The number of COVID-19 infections has skyrocketed in response to the highly contagious Omicron variant. I want to take a moment here to show a brief promotional video for our telehealth program. Hello, my name is Dr. King. I am the lead provider for the Project Black Onk International COVID-19 telehealth program. Our goal is to provide you and the Black community worldwide with access to the information and support necessary to not only survive, but to move forward from COVID-19. If you or a loved one have questions or concerns about the coronavirus, make a free appointment with us. Don't ignore the signs and symptoms of COVID-19. Our medical volunteers are here to assist you, your family, and the entire African nation. You can make a free appointment with me or another licensed medical professional by going to developmentforafrica.org slash telehealth. We are a medical professional group that's here to serve our people. We can get past COVID-19. Okay, Uhuru. So um, inspired by the revolutionary Cuban people and government, we are now developing plans to create our very own Project Black Onk emergency medical response teams modeled after the Cuban Henry Reeve Brigades. Henry Reeve Brigades are contingents of Cuban doctors specialized in disasters and serious epidemics, which have been deployed around the world to combat major health crises. 
November, I led an APDEP contingent that included comrades Chiwaniso Luzolo and Fofit Alkibalan to Cuba, as part of the 31st French shipment caravan organized by IFCO Pastors for Peace, hosted by the Cuban government. The primary goal of this trip was to advance Project Black Om, specifically to win commitments for training APDEP medical personnel by Cuban medical professionals as part of our goal to build our own response team. The trip was a resounding success. Not only did we make incredible connections with Cuban doctors, scientists, community organizers, and government officials, we met with African students studying medicine in Cuba, the Latin American School of Medicine, Africans who will soon be doctors for the people who can potentially be recruited into our work. We will be having an online summation of our trip uh, to Cuba on Sunday, February the 27th at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. The webinar will feature presentations from APDEP and the APSP contingent to Cuba, co-director Del Walker, Delso Moret, the MLK Center in Havana, Cuba, Anya Lozania, Lozano of Healthy Hood, Chicago, Nena Zaran Nasir, the Palestinian Youth Movement, more. Register for the webinar, please go to developmentforafrica.org. I wanna sum up this report on Project Black Onk by recognizing that now is the time to launch a worldwide campaign to recruit African people with the mission to build and implement Project Black Onk. If you have an interest or skills in disaster preparedness and emergency response and wanna participate in training African people, or if you are a medical professional who wants to be a part of this process to build our very own medical response teams, I invite you to join us by going to developmentforafrica.org and joining APDEP today. Project Black Onk is the legitimate rescue for African people because it is a part of the process of building for African self-determination. Before I turn it over to comrade Asa Anku, occupied Azania, South Africa to give his report on rebuilding APDEP programs in Africa, I would like to give a brief overview of the history of the APDEP work in Africa. APDEP has a long history of building programs on the continent. In fact, our first programs were initiated in Africa shortly after our founding conference which took place in St. Petersburg, Florida in November, 2007. January, 2008, APDEP was on the ground in Sierra Leone, West Africa as part of an assessment trip to determine the material needs of our people and what kinds of programs we could begin to initiate. APDEP programs in Sierra Leone have included the building of vocational school, teaching young women everything from weaving and tailoring to reading and computer literacy. APDEP's nursery school was developed out of the need to provide African internationalist education to African children whose mothers were students in our vocational school. Over the years, APDEP has built multi-acre vegetable and cassava farms and rainwater harvesting systems in various communities in Sierra Leone. Community health has been a major focus of APDEP programs in Africa. Our very first program trained 50 community people to be community health workers, teaching them how to prevent, identify, and treat waterborne diseases, a major killer of African people. APDEP's infant and maternal health program facilitated the advanced training of African midwives, nurses, and traditional birth attendants, built two maternity health centers, and helped to organize a network of birth attendants that helped to deliver 300 babies without death of one mother or child. Now, Comrade Asa Anku, Director of APDEP Occupied Azania, South Africa, will give his report on the work being done now to rebuild APDEP on our continent. Uhuru, Comrade Asa. Uh, Uhuru, my name is Asa Somali Anku. I am the Chair uh, or Director of APDEP in South Africa. And uh, here we will be giving a presentation and a report on what UPDEP has been capable of doing inside this country and on the African continent generally. Yuhuru. So we wanna talk about building UPDEP in Africa. So uh, next slide, please. So, uh, when speaking of UPDEP, we're speaking about it in relation to African people here in South Africa and in Sierra Leone. So we say get to know us. The All African People's Development and Empowerment Project has had a powerful revolutionary history 
wherever the African Socialist International has been solidified, thus allowing for the masses of our people to be won to the politic of self-determination as seen through UPDEP's programs. Next slide, please. The party in occupied Azania. With the party in occupied Azania, we have resolved to build UPDEP for strategic reasons because our people have been removed from the ability to see freedom concretely. Instead, because of the neo-colonial petty bourgeoisie that is running the white settler colony, the masses of African people think that this is what freedom is exemplified by, which is the shanties, the poverty and lack of development in the black community. This demoralization must be overturned so that the masses can be won to the position of independence. <clears throat> Next slide, please. The UPDEP committee. Uh, from left to right is how we'll be reading this. So on the left, we have a brother called Deboho Ramutibe. He's a member of our UPDEP Central Committee in South Africa. In the center, we have Brother Jabulani Ma Africa. Uh, and in the far right, we have myself, Asa Somali Anpu. So we'll be explaining the roles in the next slide. So the roles that we occupy, the, uh, the UPDEP Committee, is the chairperson of it is Asa Somali Anpu. Uh, the secretary and information officer is Debucho Ramutibe, and uh, the treasurer and membership coordinator is Jabulani Ma Africa. Uh, thank you, comrades. Next slide. How to become a member? So, UPDEP is a organization that is based on membership. It's a membership based organization, and we would really like to encourage as many people today and onward to join this organization within this country. UPDEP has seven principles of unity. When someone wants to join us, they must be able to unite with those principles. One can become a member uh, starting from our level of 60 Rand annually. And so I would like to show these levels from uh, the picture below. It's uh, the first level is Zanempilo level. The second one is Mutulu Shakur level. The third one is Bantu Biko level. The fourth one is Manyauza level. The fifth one is Dr. Aisha Fields level. And the sixth one is the Omawale Kifing level. Next slide, please. So our immediate programs, when someone is interested in getting down with the work that we're doing, uh, our immediate work is with the Marcus Garvey Youth Program, which is designed to make African children from ages of five to 13 develop African working class consciousness, as well as develop their historical and real life skills. Secondly, the UPDEP Health Team is a program specifically designed for African women, but open to African men as well. It offers free partnerships and training within blocks specializing in mentoring our people in cardio, qigong, as well as self-defense for women and small-bodied persons in the form of soft martial arts, such as Wing Chun. The third one is Project Tutugani, which is currently being revamped to fit into the UPDEP standard. It offers waste management education as a way to build economic development and has previously been the most successful project in our movement inside this country, boasting a three-year track record of politicizing the questions around unemployment as well as pollution in the Black community. Uh, next slide, please. So pictured here is the uh, picture of the first program, which is the Marcus Garvey Youth Program. Uh, this was a picture taken uh, in Sierra Leone, by the way. <laughs> Our program on the African continent has taken on, uh, has been taken on in a few countries, including Sierra Leone and South Africa, despite the technological contradictions that are stumbling blocks, i.e. no network ability, expensive data, etc. The Marcus Garvey Youth Program 
is also in Everton West and Orange Farm. Through min, uh, though minimal in its membership, it is going to grow through weekly classes aimed at including African children back to political life. Next slide, please. So pictured here are the members of our health teams as um, we had our first meeting. So this is, this is, these are the people that were in attendance and, and the kind of program that we have is uh, based on mobilizing people in order to get uh, African people to become more healthy through exercising and building exercise networks and teams in each neighborhood and block. Uh, so these are the three things that it offers with the uh, UPDEP health teams. We offer cardio, qigong, and women's martial arts. So uh, pictured there are the people there that were involved and we are opening this up to the community to be able to contact us. Uh, thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, pictured here is uh, brothers from Orange Farm uh, working on Project Tutugani just last year. Uh, we have brothers Mac Taylor there. We have uh, brother Mulefi. We had Mahau and Garabu Mugeri and Garabu Mutwenya. It was just a whole lot of brothers uh, doing the work for the people. So um, that's what Project Tutugani and Black Power looks like in the real world. That's the legacy of the Uhuru movement. Next slide, please. So we would like to invite everyone at this plenary, as well as everyone that the plenary attendance might know, to join UPDEP. Count on the movement to make it happen. So uh, we have a WhatsApp uh, ability. Uh, if people want us on WhatsApp, they can find us. If they find any of our pamphlets, we always put our numbers there. As the chair and the organization, the central committee of UPDEP, people can always access us. And we have UPDEP South Africa, which is a Facebook page that is available for anyone who wishes to contact us. And we'll soon be having an email address that's centralized to take in anybody who's interested. So um, we look forward to having you there. Uhuru. Thank you, comrades. Uhuru. Uhuru, comrade Asa. So I want to thank comrades Kundai, Chiwaniso, Mike, Asa, Michelle, and Kobina for their incredibly important presentations. But really more than that, I really want to thank them for the work that they've done over the last year that these presentations reflect. Everybody who's joining us today for this report, I hope that we've been able to tell you that's why this organization was established and why Africans around the world must join us. If you are tired of the colonial conditions that white power has imposed on us, if you are tired of all the sickness, the poverty, uncertainty, fear, and untimely death of our loved ones, if you are tired of simply selling your skills to the highest imperialist bidder, giving your skills directly to our oppressor to continue the colonial agenda against African people and other oppressed people around the world, then I invite you to join APDEP. This is your organization. This is your movement. Your skills will go where they are needed, the liberation and unification of Africa and African people. We have the opportunity today to join the movement that is absolutely changing the world. Join a process of building a positive future for African people. Don't wait. Time is now. Go to developmentforafrica.org and complete your membership application. African people have a right responsibility to resist colonial domination, recapturing our skills and building our collective capacity for self-reliance is one important front of that resistance. Uhuru. So that will close out the APTEP report. Thank you, comrade. Uhuru. 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 Comrade Mwezi. Uhuru, comrade, thank you. Sorry about that. Been a little trouble unmuting. Um, just want to again salute APDEP's presentation. And uh, we have about four minutes for discussion. So um, let's 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 see if there's any comments or anything that we want to share before we move on to the next section. Uhuru. Um I see more comments. I'm gonna give some time in the chat real quick. Um, but one of the comments that I did read um, was from comrade Lisa Davis. Um, and this was just as these comments were kind of as the presentation was going, um, but just highlighting that 
when they when I encounter police brutality, the stresses from that were the only thing and the stresses from that. And the only thing that helped me was literally being involved with the black liberation struggle. I center my health around that. We will never know what true health is under this colonialist brutal system. And that's so very true. Um, yes, right on. I, yeah, I unite with that just um, from things it's that really I learned. That simple. And, and, and looking at it, like that's, that's what it is, you know. And it's been said time and time again today that um, we are constantly resisting as colonized people um and so yeah mm -hmm. i want to unite with that and just the feeling that it has to actually be a part of um a fighting against the thing that's oppressing you like there's something um that that can bring good health in that in its sense right as, yes. as we're fighting to self-govern so yeah and i just saw just overwhelming report um or um comments in the chat with all of the sections throughout abdep comrade sayero is um mm -hmm. is on it today in the chat just showing lots of love for all of the reports coming out today so really want to appreciate um everybody for their attention um ooh. Ooh. all right so um if there's no questions for abdep um mm -hmm. or any comments like hey or interventions <laughs> we yeah can, yeah okay and i see here lisa say con uh, congratulations on all your awesome work and um, we can move it, right, comrade? We got two minutes, so yeah. Let's. Oh. I mean, comrade Jamal, you got a question? We got we got two minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you type it up. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll give a moment. And it looks like Chairman has raised his hand. Um, Let's do that. Then. So yeah. Well, Uhura, thank Chairman. you, comrades. I, I I just want to say that. Uh, this is a very important report, and it continues to reveal uh, the significance of, of uh, APDEP. <laughs> that um, there's a very important political uh, aspect to this too. One is that uh, it truly represents uh, African internationalism and in, in that it opens the door for African people to connect with each other all around the world um, and uh, to uh, to participate in tearing down borders in a very practical way. And we know each other, we, we cross these borders, dealing with all these issues that we're talking about, Black Ankh dealing with, uh, with a, a flood in Texas. And uh, it's harder for Africans in Africa to get to Texas, but Africans uh, in Texas can get to Sierra Leone and Africans in Alabama can get to Sierra Leone and can get to various other places. And we come together like this. And uh, this is our program, it's not some some government programs, not the United Nations, this is African people coming together, very practical, concrete manifestation of African internationalism. It's a clear demonstration of tearing the borders down. And also it reintroduces our people to each other. It reintroduces us to each other. So it takes away this, any potential for there being, uh, we're approaching each other strangers and truthfully, uh, I never had that experience with Africa. I've heard people who, who act like they were going somewhere strange when they've gone uh, uh, home to Africa. I've never, never. In fact, this is the first time in my life I didn't feel like a stranger. When, <laughs> and I didn't even know I would feel like a stranger until I went home to Africa, you know. Uh, so that's one thing. And I think the other thing important about just in terms of the political significance of APDEP is that it gives us uh, an opportunity to make a political uh, uh, intervention. And, and uh, what we say, if we can bring rainwater, rainwater harvesting there, and we can bring, uh, 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 treat, uh, uh, train people <laughs> to deal with, you know, like healthcare and infant mortality, and, all these other kinds of issues, we can do this without any resources except what we have in each other, then the government should be able to do it too. If the government's not doing it, it's clear the government's not serving the people. So it gives us an ability to establish a foothold, a political foothold uh, that can bring the people into greater confidence of ability for self-determination and contribute to bringing down the whole neo-colonial apparatus. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you, Uhuru. Uhuru, thank you for saying that. Chairman. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Wow, Uhuru. Well, that, that puts us right at time. What a great way to close this section. Um, we want to appreciate 
Deb Deb and Chairman for that um, for that addition. And now it's time to like. welcome <laughs> the baddest. Like it's been a long day. day. I'm ready. I know the revolution's you know. been keeping me going all weekend. I tell you, I tell you, the revolution has been keeping me going. Because yeah, yes, yes, Erica. But I want to salute you <laughs> as co MC chat. You know, just cadre comrade. Yeah. <laughs> just um, really want to welcome who's behind you, right, and who's around you, which is the baddest and the only revolutionary civil rights organization on the planet. And that's um, mm -hmm. for fighting for our democratic rights of African people everywhere, meeting African people at their political door all over the globe. Mm -hmm. and I'm so excited um, of what I know will be an excellent report from the worldwide international people's democratic Uhura movement, also known as Impedum. And this presentation is titled, Recruit for the Revolution Everywhere, Preparing to Govern Everywhere. So we wanna welcome, um, this team, this dynamic team under the leadership of international president Colin Bailly and Danette and the Impedum IEC. Uhuru, comrades. Uhuru. 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 This has been a powerful four days. I just really want to salute all the reports and just say how I consider it an honor to be a member of the African People's Socialist Party. I consider it an honor to be a part of the men and women that is participating in this historical, powerful event where Africa is put forward, that Africa is being fought for. Um, I just really, really just think that, you know, these four days, I mean, you know, I'm the old church girl. So I said, I've been in revolutionary, this has been a revolutionary revival, um, just very, very powerful. Um, next slide. I would like to um, salute with great honor, my leadership, our leadership, the leadership of the African nation. Chairman Amali Yeshatella, thank you so much for coming to St. Louis, Missouri on August 9th when Mike Brown was slayed in the street and recruiting people as myself and all the forces that you have recruited and thank you for the tireless work that you have done. I appreciate your grandmother that could put a book in your hand and made you love reading. And I salute the day that you was in high school and you said that it was never no way that you would ever be comfortable with just being the greatest African as that was some way of an accomplishment. I salute the day that you, you know, decided that you could had to organize. And I salute the day that y'all went and picked oranges and knew that we had to have economic and development. I appreciate Chairman Amalia Shatella, Ohuru. I will also like to salute Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella. Y'all have, we have experienced her. We have seen the report. You know, her work speaks for itself. She's a woman that don't have lots of words, but her actions speak loud and let us know that this is why we say that Deputy Chair is worthy to be emulated. And throughout our report, you just see and can feel the imprint of Deputy Chair throughout our whole report. So I would like to salute Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella, and I would like to salute all the men and women of the Central Committee that make up the Central Committee that fights for the liberation of African people. And I would like to salute you, all the members of the African People's Socialist Party, and for the ones that's gonna join from watching this plenary, I salute you as well. And I also would like to salute all the mass forces that are watching right now, that are going to be one day the best sons and daughters of the African People's Socialist Party, because we are recruiting for the revolution. Next slide. So this report, um, I am excited to introduce my executive committee. So throughout this report, we're going to have the history. You're going to get a report around um, info and, I mean, I'm sorry, membership, um, economic development, our mass campaigns. We're going to lay out exactly what we have been up to in 2021, good, bad, and the ugly, and exactly where we're going in 2022, because you got to know where you're going to get there. And so we're going to be laying that out in this report. Next slide. You know, um, it is so important for us to all understand that we have to be one to organization. None of us are so significant that we 
that we can make this revolution by ourselves. We are making this revolution because we have been one to democratic centralism. We have been one to combat and liberalism. We have been one to understand that we have to have organization to build a mass organization everywhere, all over, on the grounds, campaigns, and bringing the African working class to understand exactly who they are, to take back um, their dreams and their aspirations that have been slaughtered by genocide. And so I would like to salute our very own Masumela VP, Masumela Odom, and Conrad of the Court of the Year. And also, I would like to salute our very own, you had the experience of four feet will be coming with the economic development, which is the heart of everything we do. And I would like to salute, and she has um, laid out and been here and you have experienced Erica. It's kind of like, you know how we say that no matter when you came into the party, that you know wherever you came in, you come in and you got 50 years with you. You see that in Comrade Erica. And we also have Comrade Dexter, that will be lit is our info and um, education director. Um, we'll also be laying out our campaigns as well. So sit back, get you a pen and a piece of paper because this report is going to require you to get to work. So you need to take notes. So when we leave starting tomorrow or after this plenary is over, it's time to recruit for the revolution. Ohuru. So let me pass this to next slide to our very own VP, Masumela. Congratulations, you're so deserving. And he's gonna be laying out the history of the mass movement, Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru everybody, Uhuru. Uh, thank you, yeah, so so that's really the purpose of this, uh, is tell us not just the history of Impedum, but really to salute the leadership of the party and the 55 uh, plus years of mass organization within the Uhuru movement that Impedum uh, encapsulates. Uh, I'm Matsumela Odom, the International Executive Vice President for the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. Uh, I'd like to uh, salute Chairman O'Malley Eshatella, the, internet, the leader of the International African Revolution and founder of the Uhuru Movement. I'd like to salute DC owner Zene Eshatella, as well as all the members of the NCC and our president, uh, President Colin Baye, my president. Next slide. Now, uh, uh, under the leadership of chairman, we know that colonialism is the mode of production and undoubtedly the most significant uh, 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 intervention into socialist uh, uh, communist thought uh, uh, ever. Um, uh, uh, it was colonialism that produced capitalism and not the other way around. Now, this is because it was colonialism that quote, turned Africa into a warrant for the hunt commercial hunting of black skins. Uh, 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 unquote, rendering Africans the pedestal of which uh, European and white North America, the white North American nation, the entire white nation, uh, not just the most flagrant of bigots, uh, 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 and all of its wealth uh, was built. Next slide. Well, the thing that I'm here to say is to ask you uh, today, what happens with uh, uh, with uh, uh, when that pedestal rises up, right? Well, white power falls, colonialism crumbles. This is the basis for the current uh, crisis of imperialism, the uneasy equilibrium as chairman ha has shown us. Um, Impedum uh, organizes the African working class, bringing the African working class into political life, causing that pedestal to rise up. We wage anti-colonial struggle. So this was anti-colonial struggle when the Africans workers in IT rose up in 1791. It was African colonial, anti-colonial struggle 200 years later in 1991 when the National People's Democratic Horror Movement was created underneath the leadership of the party. Change slides. Now the current iteration of the mass organization of the African People's Socialist Party is International People's Democratic Uhur Movement, but we sit on 55 years of, 55 plus years now of Uhur Movement mass organization. Uh, this history goes back to 1966 at least, right? Uh, and it was then that Chairman Omar Shatella formed the first membership-based branch of the Student Island Bottom Coordinating Committee, which had previously really functioned on a volunteer basis. Chairman Omar Shatella placed this struggle into the hands of the African working class. Right. In all in all practical purposes, the SNCC chapter in St. Pete operated in a fashion no different than the Black Panther Party in Oakland, 
which was formed at the same time out of the same circumstances. That's why I find this sign uh, behind chairman uh, that isn't completely able to be read, uh, but it says Watts is bigger than, um, I think it says something about like St. Peter, something like that. But so I don't know exactly what it says, but the thing that really stands out about this sign to me is, 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 it, is it connects this uprising chairman ha had led and on the south side of St. Pete to South Los Angeles, but also to the international uh, African revolution taking place uh, at this time. Um, the International People's Democratic Ahur Movement is the, is the result of the dialectical engagement with the African revolution of the 1960s inside the US and outside the US, change slides. Now, in 1968, SNCC had effectively been destroyed. It was then that Chairman Omalia Shetela organized the Junta of Militant Organizations. Jomo means the burning spear. Now, now we have, uh, understand that despite the contradictions of Jomo Kenyatta that were effect, eventually exposed to the African working class in the US, uh, the colonial media had said he was a part of Mau Mau. He was never part of Mau Mau uh, and uh, possibly never even a, a true socialist. Uh, Jomo uh, 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 represented the base building politics of the Uhuru movement, which still exists as the organizing principles of Impedum. Uh, as Chairman notes, the need to identify with the Mau Mau was also influenced by our growing awareness of the African collaborators, neo-colonizers, within our own domestically colonized community. The Mau Mau has, was known for ruth, the ruthlessness with which it dealt with those who sold out the revolution to British colonial thugs. And we know we still got lots of them from St. Pete to South Africa to St. Louis and everywhere else. Jomo led the struggle for democratic rights uh, to the Af uh, of the African working class. We can see this in the relationship between Jomo uh, 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 of Jomo and Chairman, then Joe Waller uh, uh, in the sanitation worker strike. Change slides. Uh, and Pedum has its roots in Chicago and Oakland, but let's not sleep on the importance of St. Pete as well. St. Petersburg is the city of African resistance. In fact, there were uh, uh, there are like four significant uprisings, at least in St. Petersburg history, 68, 66, 86, and 96, uh, um, uh, 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 which, 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 is, which is important. And all of these, but especially 68 and 96, it was revolutionary politics that preceded the uprising of the African working class, which moved the uprising from being simply spontaneous resistance uh, to part of an organized trajectory. It, 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 and, it, and it placed the gains from these struggles into the hands of the African working class. And Pedum stands on this legacy. Change slides. The 1970s has been defined as uh, by chairman as a period of wartime party building. So as we know, the party was uh, was formed in May 1972. The African People's Socialist, uh, 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 because of the military assault against our movement, a lot of functions of the movement of the party had to be conducted with the highest level of security. Yet the party never went underground, nor did the publication of the spare seats. Yet many of the members did indeed go on the ground and Chairman Omalesh Teleno said he had spent so much time behind bars that he had to read the newspaper just to know what the date was. Nevertheless, the party took leadership of a variety of mass political struggles at this time. Uh, it was the party leadership of those mass struggles that led to the development of this mass organizing strategy. Let's change slides. Whereas some organizations had consciously embraced position of non-confrontation and other African revolutionaries fallen victim to reformist liberal left politics or ideological imperialism, the APSP raised the colonial contradiction and organized masses of African people with efforts to free Connie Tucker, Pitts and Lee, Desi Woods, Chairman Omali Ashitella, and other incarcerated Africans. The party brought the mass character uh, to the African liberation struggle for the first time since this military defeat in uh, uh, the military defeat of African revolution in of the 1960s. Change slides. So uh, in 1977, Chairman Omali Ashitella outlined uh, the role of revolutionary leadership in mass movements, as well as the tactics and strategies for African independence. In uh, the political aspects of building a mass movement, the tactical and strategic objectives for black liberation. In this 
important document uh, originally delivered at the University of uh, Mass, uh, Mass, uh, Massachusetts Amherst and later produced in a pamphlet form. A chairman lays out seven steps in winning our independence. And later on in this uh, presentation, I'll lay out how Impedum explicitly answers each of these steps. So the first is to win Black people to the position of political independence. Second is to establish the leadership of the pro-independence movement. Third is to win support for the independence position within the U current U.S. borders. Fourth, uh, to uh, the, the creation of dual and contending power. Five, expose the oppressive nature of the U.S. government, thereby constantly uh, undermining it within and without the U.S. Uh, current borders. Six, winning the international support for uh, the, the, the independence position. And seven, to build an African People's Liberation Army. Change slides. Now, on the heels of these mass campaigns, the APSP organized the African National Prison Organization in 1979. Uh, with its origins, actually, in another organization organized by the party a few years before uh, called the African Anti-Prison Movement, which was a mass anti-prison organization formed in the state of Florida. I do think it's important uh, it really show that long leadership of the movement uh, on that question of mass imprisonment of African people. Um, uh, the, the founding of AMPO represented uh, the, the first time since the 1960s that the African working class people had come together to build such a mass organization and develop the tactics and strategies needed to free African people from the US colonial domination. Now, following AMPO, the party had organized the African National Reparations Organization and other mass organizations, uh, such as the African, African Community Defense Committee, which I find a very important precedent to impede them, and the People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. Uh, we can see the legacy of all these within the campaigns of impede them, such as African Charge Genocide, African Reparations Claim, Black Community Control of Police, and the George Jackson Prisoners Program. Uh, uh, uh. But we also see it in, in, in the arrest CPS campaign led by the African National Women's Organization. Change slide. For, uh, um, now, this struggle in defense of the African working class against the counterinsurgency led to the creation of the People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, as we talked about in Oakland. Uh, uh, also, the creation of the uh, the, the creation of this vital organization came on the heels of the 1984 uh, Freedom Summer uh, and Community Control of Housing Campaign, where the party led the defense of tens of thousands of homeless people in Oakland, long before even people had a word for gentrification or occupying homes or anything like that. The, the, the party uh, placed African international's character to the struggle. Change slides. Mass organization. Uh, uh, so, then called the uh, uh, the, na the 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 PEDM became the National People's Democratic uh, 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 Uhuru Movement, uh, uh, formed in the defense of the African working class and pushing back um, against the counterinsurgency that had, like I said, flooded and uh, flooded our communities with guns, drugs, uh, 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 domestic military forces known as police, salted the salted the community, making sure the African revolution would never rise again, change slides. Yet, as, as noted, it did. And that's why, like I said, I like to talk about PETAM, but I also want to give a nod and, 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 and give a nod to the African community defense committees that the party had organized throughout the U.S. in the late 80s as well. It is mass organization like this that had led to the defense of Huey in 1989, change slides. So, so PETAM's official founding, if I'm correct, was around 1989. Uh, uh, though uh, you had ACDC, you had um, all these other efforts and stuff like that. Well, two years later, it expanded and you get the creation of the National People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, now the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. <coughs> um, uh, uh, with the expansion into uh, Africa and into uh, uh, Europe and and uh, I think it's important for the comrades to know that 2001, uh, when Chimaranga and others went over to South Africa uh, for that Durban conference, they left uh, uh, with with an Impedum branch. You know, uh, Omwali Kefin says, you know, you never leave empty-handed. So that's the origins uh, uh, of 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 Impedum in South Africa uh, as well. Um, and, uh, so 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 as we know, 1991 was important. Uh, 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 
Well, April 6th was important because that was the date in 1968 that little Bobby Hutton, another Panther, was assassinated. And then uh, Chicago was important because in 69, uh, December 4th, that's where uh, Mark Clark and Fred Hampton were assassinated. Uh, uh, next slide. The International People's Democratic Uhura Movement meets the st strategies and objectives to win African liberation. International People's Democratic Uhura Movement uh, 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 struggles to win Black people to the position of independence. In the outreach report, uh, you will hear about the impedance mass campaigns that wins Africans to the position of independence. In that historic speech, I think it's important to note that Chairman says, we're not to assume that Africans are anti-independence because they have not want, been won to the position of pro-independence. We must realize that the defeat of the uh, African revolution of the 60s uh, so that we can win the revolution now. Uh, these images here show the 2003 impedum defense of Edward Boo Pickens in Philadelphia who had been uh, uh, murdered by cops there and the defense of LaBelle Mixon in Oakland in 2009. Sharing slides. Now, uh, uh, impedum establishes the leadership of the pro-independence movement. Uh, impedum programs and uh, campaigns organize, uh, 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 organize Africans by meeting them at their political door, bringing them into political life. In the US, Impedum followed the party strategy and the defense of the migrants from Haiti. Uh, this built on uh, some of our work that we were already even doing across the border for at least the last six years uh, uh, in the Tijuana, Mexico area. In Southern Africa, uh, uh, the party has established leadership of the uprising of workers in Azania and Swaziland, now eponymously named Eswatini, by the neo-colonial king M. Swanti. Uh, uh, change slides. Uh, Impedum struggles to uh, uh, win support for the independence position within current U.S. borders. Now we can see that in, in the leadership we brought to the response to the murder of George Floyd, where we where we forwarded the uh, the call of Black Power Matters and Black Community Control of Police in the face of the much more reformist Black Lives Matter and defund the police, uh, uh, reformist demands. Impedum in many places held the first George Floyd demos outside of Minneapolis under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. Now on the left, uh, 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 we can see uh, Comrade Janaba uh, uh, at our George Floyd demo in San Diego. Uh, that was indeed the city's first in defense of George Floyd, literally standing on the legacy of mass organization uh, uh, with um, the collage of her mother, Kenya, and her father, Biko Lumumba, uh, both of whose actions go uh, back to um, the formation of PEDM uh, in Oakland. Change slides. Um, now, uh, in PEDM, uh, creates dual and continuing power. This dual and continuing power can be seen in our economic institutions, Uzi, but also in our mass organ organizing. On the right, you see the Uhuru City Hall. Uh, 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 our mass campaigns function as dual and contending power as well, letting Africans see themselves as independent and the party and the movement as their leadership, exposing the illegitimacy of colonial and neo-colonial government. We know that politics are concentrated economics. Chain slide. Impedum exposes the ex oppressive nature of the US uh, government, thereby constantly undermining it within and without the US border from Southeast San Diego to, 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 to Southern Africa. Now, one thing that always stands out to me, I remember, uh, cause I've done a lot of research and, and, and I love uh, music coming out of Southern Africa. So I remember talking to comrades from Southern Africa, from South Africa, like comrades of Kelly. And, and, and I wanna talk about all the old stuff from the sixties and the seventies. I love that music. Uh, I, I spin that music as a DJ, but, but then uh, it, it, my eyebrows raised up when, when comrades like Zakele wanna talk about Mozzie and Sibo. I love that music too. Uh, and But then I asked the comrades, you know, what interests in them? Well, they essentially were saying, look, you know, uh, here they are dealing with these issues of the, these, the, these, the, the, uh, of, of colonial violence, their communities being flooded with gangs, drugs, and guns by neo-colonial and colonial uh, misleadership and stuff like that. And, 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 and then they heard this music and realized that uh, you know, Africans in the U.S. were dealing with the exact same issues and stuff like that. So, 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 really, really, in that process of organizing the African working class, meeting them at their political door, even a certain character to how how Impedum does it, 
Um, a masked character, how Impedum does it, really, uh, 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 really uh, is what we do, change slides. Now, Impedum struggles to win so its international support for independence. We can say that international support exists within these colonial borders and outside these colonial borders, right? Impedum has a struggle, has struggled on, on three to four different continents and even in the ocean, oceanic parts of the world as well. Uh, we hold anti-colonial fraternal bond with Unio do Barrio and the struggle for indigenous independence. We proudly yell free, free Palestine. And we also do this by fulfilling the party's regional strategy. Change slides. Impedum is a crucial in, uh, 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 Impedum recruits for the African revolution and therefore is a crucial front in establishing the reserve forces for the African People's Liberation Army. Change slides. Since its creation, Impedum has fought courageously for the African community. We have fought for uh, community control of education, protested budget cuts, school closures. We fought for victims of, of police uh, 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 brutality, such as Sean Bell, Oscar Grant, Orange de Lowe over in, in, in Germany. Uh, uh, we've defended the right to self-defense and to resist colonial oppression the way we defended uh, Lavelle Mixon. It was Impedum who led the defense of the heroic Africans in London. Uh, uh, in, in 2011, who, who set the city ablaze after Mark Duggan was killed. And in 2019, uh, we, Impedum sponsored a tour of Mark Duggan's comrades, Marcus Knox and Curtis Hinville in Southern California. Impedum led the, the campaign for the three drowned black girls, uh, change slides. So, so in 2020, you know, as we know, uh, uh, Impedum uh, uh, offered uh, leadership to the to the struggle in 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 defense of of, of George Floyd. It was Impedum. Uh, uh, Impedum has defended the African community in St. Louis after all the opportunists have hightailed it out of town. We are still there fighting on the ground against police police violence, gentrification, and other causes. Right. Um, in 1982, in Pedum, uh, sorry, the Uhuru movement put colonialism on trial with the First World Tribunal for reparations. In 2015, we put killer cop Derek Chauvin uh, 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 on trial with the Black People's Grand Jury and indicted the killer cop for the, uh, de for the murder of Mike Brown. Chain slides. In the 1970s and the 1980s, right? And Pedum led dynamic campaigns to free Africans from the clutches of, of, of concentration camps known as U.S. prisons, from Desi Lee, from Pitts and Lee to Connie Tucker to Desi Lee. And Pedum created the very, I mean, the Uhuru movement created the very first Geronimo Pratt Defense Committee, freed Desi, freed Desi Woods, defended Huey, uh, Doc Hatter, Frank Moses, the Uhuru movement defended Freddie Lee Roberts, Sagan Penn, and Lavelle Mixon. Uh, Impedum organized to free the Cross City Five in, in 1992 and Denzel Drawn in 2021. Now located in three continents around the world and more, Impedum has always defended reparations, state power, and self government for African people. Impedum knows that the politicians in City Hall and the White House will never fight for Black power to the African community. So Impedum knows that uh, 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 self-determination is the highest form of true democracy. And we got to, the, uh, uh, it, it, it takes revolutionary organizations to protect and defend our own wherever we may be. So now, after I said all that, I'd like to pass it to Comrade Fofi da Kebilan, the, the Economic Development Coordinator. Oh, Ahuru, comrades. Ahuru. Thank you, Masumela, for that great report. Now, I am Fofi Ushairi El Kibulam, your International Economic Development Coordinator. In this report, I promise you one thing. This report, will, will you will learn that Impedum is on the move. And you know, economic and political are one. How do we know this? Next slide. I want to salute Deputy Chair Ona Zene Yeshitela, and I want to salute her for her leadership in all the economic work. Through her tireless work is why Impedum 
is on the move. Now, I want to bring to you, this is our move number one. The economic development and membership has merged into one our subcommittee, economic development subcommittee. Next slide. Now, it is my pleasure to, to work with all of these amazing ladies and young men. Uh, it, you have myself, Fofi. I am the International Impedum Development Coordinator. President Columbia is our Uzi lead designer. Erica is our new International Impedum Membership Coordinator. Kira is a new member. Z uh, Zenobia is our secretary. We got Tasha K is our customer service coordinator and membership payment tracker. Uh, v Queen is our info and ed personnel. We have Ashanti, our new treasurer. Riverside is our customer service assistant. And Comrade Jordan is the chair of Uzi Customer Para. Comrades, we are so excited to do this work. Move number two. Next slide. Now, when I say excited, I mean we are a because, comrade, I want to introduce to you our Impedum International Headquarters. We are in the heart of the African community, North St. Louis. Yes, we are. Next slide. Now, Many of you may remember in 2019, we moved into our previous headquarters on Del Mar Boulevard next to Legacy Books and Cafe. That was a good move. But the problem with that headquarters, it was not exactly what the chairman had mandated for Impedum to do. So because of the conditions of the colonial virus, we had to move out that location. Next slide. Now. I guess you say, what's the difference? Let me tell you what's the difference. This is ours. And it's nothing like having your own because in your own house, you can do what you want to do. It's your business. And this is what we're going to do right here. This is what we're doing is your business. Next slide. In this location, we will be doing membership, we will do Uzi, we will have Sunday rallies, we'll have One Africa, One Nation training. We will be having the burning spirit for the community. We have our community garden. We'll be hosting into you or orientation. Comrade, next slide. We will have office hours and we will have our own office space. Now, right here, you're looking at all these packages and you wonder, what is this about? We will be centralizing all of our international distribution. Almost everything will come from St. Louis, from this location. Yeah, we got a space to work, and we're going to make it work. Next, next slide. Move number three, Conrad. I'm telling you, we are just so excited. Impedum will be operating the One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market here in St. Louis. Yeah, we will go, we're gonna be on the ground with the people. And as part of the, the our revenue stream, we will be getting the getting with the people to recruit volunteers and new members by bringing organization and self-reliance. Comrade, our next move is a bold and a move that should have been in place some time ago. Next slide. You know, Impedum is an international organization. And just as you've heard through this convention, through this plenary, we have played people everywhere. But we know that resources is a problem. What we will be doing is organizing We will be putting forth an international campaign for resources to support our comrades in Africa to maximize and forward the work. We need them and they need us because when you touch one, you touch all. Next slide. 
Okay, this is the chairman's mandate. Now I want to tell you about this mandate. Uh, it is for Impedum to open offices in the communities of, of the African working class. It is so necessary for the revolution to grow and to win, to unite and support. The unity and support comes from the people. We are with the people and the people are with us. Next, comrade, this is your budget. Next slide. Why I say it's your budget? Because we're here for you and you're here to support us and we support you. On this budget, we have the budget items for, the, for 2022 will consist of the Impedum office, the membership, economic development, salaries, campaigns and programs, information and education, the building fund for our original building that we will be getting for the headquarters, uh, convention funds, Impedum for the Africa Fund, and Uzi. Now, these are the, the th these are our items that will be funded by this budget. So you say, how can I help? We will, how you are going to assist us in reaching this goal by supporting our projects and programs as they are presented. And that could be daily, weekly, monthly. We're gonna make this budget. Our income stream will consist of Uzi. Next slide. Our income stream will consist of, no, go back. Yes, our income stream will consist of Uzi, economic development, membership, one after one nation market, farmers market, impedum branches, and info and education. By you supporting the projects that we put out in all of these programs, we will make this budget and we will be successful because you know what? Our success is success for the revolution. Next slide. Membership, outreach, and social media. You know, science show uh, people contact Impedum directly through these three sources. Impedum will work overtime in all of these areas because we know our power is in the people and your support in all of these areas will grow us to maximum. As Chairman said, we got to grow and so will you. Next slide. You know, our branches are doing the work, but our economic development will be mandated through Impedum's branches and our local committees to build economic and membership to sustain the international uh, Impedum budget. Next slide. Economic development membership and Uzi will increase our social media presence through scheduled webinars, massive live sales, and online promotion. Our goal is to build a strong economic base to sustain our budget and to reach the African people to forward the revolution. Remember, we need you to support Impedum programs and projects. And don't hesitate, you can go to impedum.org slash donate and start now, because this budget it's just gonna get bigger and we're gonna need you more and more. Next slide. You know, I wanna bring to you what's new with Uzi by introducing you to Comrade Jordan Fly. Uhuru. Next slide. Video. Uhuru, comrades, and thank you, Fofi, for that introduction. I am Jordan Fly, chair of Uzi Custom Apparel LLC. And I would like to again salute Deputy Chair Onizene Ishitela for all of her support and visions of Uzi. Uh, Uzi is always developing and growing. Uh, our items have been scattered locations, making it difficult to be stable and operate in the best way. But with this new headquarters, it will offer stability to grow and to brand to capacity. Uh, it will also allow us to organize, catalog, and expand Uzi's inventory. Our team will be able to hold scheduled hours, as well as continue live sales, fashion shows, and a space for designers to work and create. Uh, if you shop Uzi, you can find us on Impedum, 
impedem.org backslash Uzi store. Let me repeat that. Impedem.org backslash Uzi store. And you can find where you can uh, create custom forms, uh, personal designs, as well as requests for Uzi swag. And I'm here today to talk about how I was introduced to Uzi. I was introduced to Uzi back with the assassination of Mike Brown. They were having a fashion show, which at the time I was managing models as well as a designer. Uh, I was very excited about working with Uzi um, and up until this day. Um, but I also learned about the political education of what Uzi custom apparel was. And that really led me into uh, being a part of this to this day. Uh, I, I salute uh, Chairwoman Deputy Owner Zanae Ishatella and all of her work that she's done for this custom apparel line, um, as well as Impedum STL, which now I hold the position of secretary under the leadership of Faux Feet Akibaline. I am very excited to be a part of this and I look forward to um, a lot of big things that we have to come. Uhuru. Uzi has. Don't hesitate. Go to Uzi and order your apparel now at Uzi at impedom.org slash shop. Thank you, Jordan. That was a great. That was a great. Uh, you know what? He is going to be, well, he's a magnificent. You experience him on Saturday. Next slide. I just want to take a little time to show, to talk to you about the victories of Impedum's 2021 year. First of all, Impedum supported our president, Columbia and Annette, as a candidate for the St. Louis City all the persons see. Impedum created and distributed more than 5,000 free papers called the North St. Louis Speaks. Black St. Louis Speaks, I'm sorry. Uh, we traveled to Milwaukee around the Devante Wright killing. We supported the Black is Back Coalition March on, on Washington in, this, in, uh, in November. We attended and won the unity of several community meetings. Next slide. Under President Columbia's leadership, MPM supported the One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market every month. We developed great relationship with the Black farmers. We secured fruits and vegetables for the farmers from the farmer to sell to our community at the market. We took black children, African children, our children to the farm for their very first visit and other consecutive visits so they could get the feel of what it was like. Impedum brought all the culture to the market. We brought the HIV STD health fans. Uzi was present at every market and we can, we, Uzi can be found also in two Uhuru, um, in both of the Uhuru Furniture Stores. Next slide. You know, the economic development and membership, we came up with our own mandates for 2022. They consist of utilizing NTU process and building the economic membership, Uzi, and, and uh, grant subcommittees to capacity. We also, uh, we're going to complete the Uzi POA. And I, now, like I said, I promised you in this report that I will show you Impedum is on the move. We are on the move, comrades, and we're doing the damn thing. Now I would like to, next slide. This subcommittee is relentless and I want to bring you to the next report. I want to introduce you to comrade Erica Clark, the International Impedium Coordinator. Uhuru, Erica. Uhuru, comrade. And thank you, Fofi. I'd like to salute both you and this entire IEC 
for the diligent and revolutionary leadership that you all provide under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. Oh, next slide. Next slide. My name is Erica Clark, and I've been appointed as the International Chair for Impedum's Office of Membership and Recruitment. Holding various active roles in both my community and family, my experience as a domestically colonized African misled me towards a private colonial education in social work and within complacent nonprofits. Constantly fighting against the system to advocate for and acquire the needs of both my community and myself. With all of this, Impedum has met me at the political doorstep to sharpen the tools and strengths that I have accumulated along the way. Next slide. Growing up in Oregon in what was once deemed a white utopia, the state still upholds the remnants of that, massed and progressive measures built upon the oppression of African and indigenous people. Uh, I discovered that I needed to find my way towards a real revolutionary force uh, of political life, putting in the work with those who understood and continue to understand the struggle and the many questions left unanswered by the Black Power Movement. Next slide. This decision was especially triggering following a personal assault by three federal officers sent in by the government, in addition to harassment by local law enforcement in Portland, Oregon, during the summer of 2020. The response from those around me, or lack thereof, left me with the understanding that we have to work tirelessly to continue to liberate the minds and bodies of domestically colonized Africans and oppressed peoples, not only within our communities, but also worldwide. Next slide. The International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement and African internationalism has become an anchor of which I've held firm in my understanding of the uneasy equilibrium described by Chairman O'Malley Shatella that had opened up around me. It is up to us to keep building and contributing to the change we will see in this world for our people to be free and taking these steps guided by African internationalism. It, we show the masses how to get there. Next slide. As Comrade Fofeed explained, the Office of Economic Development and Membership and Recruitment have joined forces. We are one. It was through much of the work completed in 2021 that has brought us to this understanding that membership must be a budget item. The intention behind this joint effort is to build upon the sustainability of the organization and membership that is already in place and to see it strengthen as it grows. Next slide. One Africa, one nation. Impedum provides a pathway that will continue to lead African people into revolutionary life. Investing in ourselves and our futures is something that is commonly pushed upon the masses by way of marketing through a colonial lens. In bringing African internationalism to the forefront, Impedum will continue to address the contradictions faced and draw out revelations of truth and understanding to all African people, no matter where we are. Next slide. Oof. <laughs> The International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement uh, is the organization from which many of our current leadership now came into political life. We would like to salute National Central Committee Forces, Deputy Chair Ona Zanae Shatella, Agitation and Propaganda Director Akile Anai, National Director of Organization Chimaranga Silimbao, and the African People's Socialist Party's Western Region Representative, Com Comrade Bakri Olatunji. Salute to each of you. Uh, cadre forces are Impedum members. Next slide. As this work has historically and continuously speaks for itself, we believe that the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement is a way for the masses to truly recognize and understand that this work is an investment in oneself. Not only that, but it is a commitment to a stronger and more profound future than that currently offered by the governing leadership everywhere oppressed people are. In 2021, Impedum established a goal of increasing membership by 50%, and we did that. At the same time, we understand that it's not enough. We must continue to be relentless and bold in our work in the struggle against colonialism. We understand that we, as an African people, are a dispersed African nation. And we recognize that Impedum's use of the party strategy for growth has been critical to winning the masses. Next slide. Utilize, utilizing the comrade, utilizing the party strategies to call the masses into political life through our work, we continue to center the voices of, Afri of the African working class worldwide. By having our convention available both virtually and in person, this allowed for greater reach to the masses. Impedum South Africa Director, uh, President Zekile Mkonza announced, I would like to make a call to Africans that Impedum is about fighting for black power using African internationalism. Only organized Africans under the revolutionary leadership of Impedum will be equipped to fight for total liberation of the African nation from Cape to Cairo, Uhuru. Next slide. 
Impedum Forces extended the call and the community responded. Local vendors, artists, and other creatives were able to buy, sell, and build resources for themselves and their community. Building Black Power to buy Black Power. Enough about our thoughts on this conference. Let's hear directly from Western Region Impedum member, Comrade Demetria Hester. Go ahead and play the video. Thanks, I was so excited to see that Impedum was there for us to stand up and be in control of our community. I immediately went to Missouri for the Impedum conference and it was such a beautiful event. We got to engage with our children, uh, Black Power Movement. It was such a beautiful thing. I was so excited to come all the way from Portland, Oregon to St. Louis just to see our Black Power and we brought it back to Portland, Oregon. And it was such a wonderful event. Yuhuru. Thank you, Impedum. Uhuru. Like, Kara, eight states there and back in seven days. Relentless. Next slide. Branch Building 2021. As an international organization, we embraced the party's regional strategy. It was through the work both leading up to and following Impedum's 2021 convention in St. Louis that left members and recruits charged up and ready to continue building. Next slide. Our Midwest branch leadership put in work, building community support with the Black Power Blueprint and One Africa, One Nation Market in St. Louis. Impedum forces fought for community control of education by protesting the ward reductions and rapid gentrification. We fought for justice for Africans of police brutality and terror. We took a stand against the attacks on Haitian people at the borders of this colonized nation. We defended the right for African people to resist colonial oppression from all systems and all forms. Next slide. These direct actions would not have been possible without our membership forces, forces and the work of branches and local organizing committees that have pushed forward this party's 50 years of history in this work. Next slide. Speaking of history, again, it was in Chicago, April 6, 1991, on the 23rd anniversary of the U.S. police murder of 17-year-old Black Panther Party member Lil Bobby Hutton that the African people stood up and spoke up. It was the party's founding of the Uhuru movement, now in Pedum, that laid the foundation to build upon the people's movement for black power and revolutionary change worldwide. Next slide. Our convention led to the reestablishment of our Chicago branch. So let's take a peek at some of these words from the Impedum member, Tasha Kay, as to what led to their joining. Uh, I was led to join Impedum after several conversations and outreach with comrades, Queen Zenobia and Kabula Mutumbo. We share the goal of achieving black power in our lifetime and know that it will take collaboration and revolutionary behavior to manifest. Uhuru comrades. Impedum forces have aided in developing committees and regional campaign work held throughout the year. This included phone banking, out and outreach and resources, burning spear sales studies, tabling community outreach events and more. Uh, and community outreach events, next slide. Following the convention, Africans in Boston answered this call in full force and unified their Impedum branch. Philly forces tightened up and established their local organizing committee on the ground. Impedum members in Newark continue to call for organizing and they too have established a local organizing committee. Party forces have taken interest in Impedum under the leadership of Comrade Kingozi in Washington, DC. Branches in this region led with boots on the ground condemning the attacks with Haitians on the borders and worked tirelessly to get the spear into sales, spear into stores and sold at local tabling events at the One Africa, One Nation markets. Late comrade Omawali Kefing always said, you never leave empty handed. It is for this reason that even with the departure from the, north, from the Northern region to the South, we would like to salute in Pedum Force, comrade Dexter Milamwengu as he left, has left the Boston area with organization and the establishment of a branch that will work closely with Northern Regional Representative Tiffany Murphy to continue to expand Impedum's growth and the party's presence. Salute to all of you comrades. We're gonna make sure we get free and get more photos of y'all this year. Uhuru, next slide. The marathon of this revolutionary movement continues, leaving behind the footprint made in the Northern region. We are excited about the work that will be built upon within this historic area of the party's birth. Initiatives taken by Impedum Forces alongside National Director of Organization Chimarenga Selimbao to reignite the Take Back the Dome campaign picks up on the platform of which Agitation and Propaganda Director Akile Anai ran for City Council in 2017. Impedum would like to salute NDO Chimarenga for his relentless work, pushing for organization to build a St. Louis branch 
Lewis Branch and call upon cadre forces. As we should all know, by day four, St. Pete is where the African people stood up and stood back up for black power, Uhuru. Next slide. Now, it might just be the West Coast to me, but our Western region forces have been popping off with the work. Although the Western region has had a strong tendency to remain lenient and liberal, we salute comrade Vice President Matsumela Odom for his tireless efforts in working to smash liberalism and truly adhere to the organizing work of the party. Our Western forces are not afraid to call out local struggles on the ground while also maintaining the importance of executing this work. Through collaboration with local organizations, Impedum continues to bring the political theory of African internationalism to the forefront of all joint work. We have seen membership growth in Portland and the Northwest region, bringing in relentless forces. Impedum leadership has also moved alongside and supported other mass campaigns of the movement, providing local support for arrest CPS activities and forces with forces on the ground, also leading demonstrations of our Africans charged genocide campaign condemning the attacks. A major win for Impedum was the winning verdict in the state's, next slide. A major win for Impedum was the winning verdict in the state's case against comrade Denzel John. The state had charged him for his actions in defense of protesters that had been brutalized by San Diego police in response to the community demands following the police shooting of Jacob Blake. Impedum's work around this case contributed and pushed the work of the Black Community Control of the Police campaign which will be talked about later in this report and more can be found on the petition link shown below. Um, Comrade Denzel will now take on the leadership of Impedum's George Jackson uh, program work, which will also be discussed later. Next slide. As Chairman O'Malley Chatella said, Africa is not poor, Africa is being looted. Knowing this, Impedum maintains its history of laying out and executing the groundwork to take our resources back and then some. Impedum comrades, in Occupy Designia report that in July 2021, South African media, the neo-colonial government and various petty bourgeoisie forces came out guns blazing on some moralistic standing to condemn the African working class for taking reparations by what they considered to be unconventional means. Uh, by quote from President Tafari, unconventional means. The masses were referred to as leaders, hooligans and criminals. The resulting demands to clean up the malls and the streets as a way of repenting for what had just been done motivated Impedum forces and Occupy Azania to launch the Bread, Peace, and Black Power campaign. In defense of the African working class, forces held rallies in various townships and continued the relentless and bold push of the campaign. When, I apologize. So, uh, winning many from the African working class into political life. Um, Impedum forces utilized this campaign to march on the Swaziland embassy. Continuing to push against the state is still on our agenda, says President Tafari. Impedum will be pushing to maintain that International Day of Action around that as well. Salute to you, comrades. Next slide. With the party's historical presence in the Caribbean, we are looking forward to the work coming up from Impedum, coming from Impedum comrade, comrade, as we all saw today. Uh, comrade Janelle for her work in coordinating a Sankofa screening, which brought in new membership and volunteers. Following this, additional POAs have been brought forward for additional opportunities of membership and recruitment. Salute to you, comrade. This international work is critical to seeing our African people liberated. Next slide. And I wanna try and speed this up if I can so my comrades still got some time. Um, our goals for the office are to Continue educating and empowering our impeded members to understand the world for what it is and who we are as a people in order to go out and recruit one another in this work. Next slide. In order to sufficiently guide membership, uh, Impedum's membership POA is at the top of the list for the Office of Membership. The goals will be laid out will be to coordinate, facilitate, and execute tasks and objectives involving international membership and recruitment, uh, recruitment and outreach. This is uh, one, of the, one of the most critical wins that we have for Impedum was the establishment of our international headquarters. So let's hear from Impedum President Columbai about that office. Next slide. Chairman wrote in his political report and just laid out how important for Impedum to have a headquarters in the black community. The people have to be able to find us. We have to start organizing so we can have our own black militia. We have to be able to educate the people and help them understand how we move beyond 
just saying that we want liberation, but how do we concrete do that right now, preparing ourselves to govern because we will win. So this headquarters will be a training um, grounds. This will be where we handle our international um, issues, membership cards and all these different things. So we stabilize in the international office. Comrades, I'm straight from the hood, straight from um, Walnut Park of St. Louis. If you don't know what that is, uh, they never thought that any um, anybody from Walnut Park would ever make it out. And now I am your international president saying that the African working class have to be stabilized. We cannot just continue to be just not understanding what it means to be stable. Everything in our life have been fighting us um, to not understand what stability is. So we used to chaos in our life and we have to move beyond that. We're going to be the governing body. We're going to be over the whole nation. I believe it. So we have to move like that. I believe it too. Look, this is why we're moving like this. Is the use of the new impedum office was going to allow us to stabilize membership, uh, establish those international working hours, sending out membership packets, patches, cards, and more. Next slide. Our recruitment practice will not only solely be directed at recruiting uh, members, people that are ready to get into this movement, but also the NTU brigade. Um, that's one way we're going to start to pull people in is by building that up. So like if whatever skills you got, come on through because we know it's going to take a lot to get people free. So it's going to take the power of the people to do that. And whether you are ready to commit to a membership or, you know, you're like, I want to help this movement, but uh, come, come on through, bring your skills. This is what we got to do. So next slide. This next year, we will also be providing a monthly newsletter with department updates and calendar events to keep our membership base up to date. Um, this will be in addition to all of our social media that will be uh, getting produced and sent out. Next slide. We will be bringing impedum to the people. So we'll be scheduling a monthly orientation schedule, setting up monthly international meetings. And we're also going to find ways to highlight our members throughout the week, uh, throughout the year. And so quarterly uh, membership appreciation and things like that is something we're going to implement and knowing, uh, next slide, knowing that membership must be a bit budget item, we're going to show our commitment to our members and hope to and, to, and still continue to educate the masses by sending those patches to the members and that highlight their individual work as an impedum force. So those things will reflect things such as recruitment, outreach, spear sales, tabling, and other things. So look, we're going to, like I said, get this POA done and it's going, yeah. <laughs> Next slide. Leading the charge wherever we are, we're going to continue tabling events. Uh, we're going to uh, still conduct actions and our rallies because that's what we do in this revolution. We have the One Africa, One Nation markets continuing to build um, Black power and govern, getting ready to govern for ourselves. So we understand that being a revolutionary is not something that you pick up and put back down. There's been too much bloodshed, shed, theft, oppression, and control over Africa and African people to continue to be liberal about this work. So the more of us that are engaged in this fight and are ready to step into our political power as a people, the more imperialism is going to continue to shake, rattle, and roll its way on out the door, and the power will be left in the hands of the people, a free people. So by meeting the people where we are in our communities and our townships, Impedum is going to continue to drive membership through various campaign work. Uhuru, Comrade Dexter, I'm going to throw it over to you so you can tell them a little bit about the rest of the work that we do. Uhuru, Comrade. Uhuru, Uhuru, Comrade, Uhuru and Helica. Yeah, I really want to salute you on our report. I'm just really excited about all the work coming out of membership. So my name is Dexter Mlamwingu. I'm the Information and Education Coordinator for Impedum. And I'll be talking a little today about uh, just some of the dynamic campaigns that Impedum has been involved in. So, you know, one of the primary functions of Impedum is to be intervening in these mass struggles in the African community and bringing organization and bringing political leadership with us. So over the course of 2021, we're involved in a bunch of different dynamic campaigns where we tackled issues plaguing the African community and brought solutions to those issues. So uh, next slide, please. The African Stars Genocide Campaign is the primary campaign for the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, aimed at uniting Africans internationally to charge the United States government with the crime of genocide against African people. 
This campaign has its origins in the anti-prison and anti-death penalty struggles led by the African People's Socialist Party in the 1970s. Uh, VP Massimello spoke to a lot of that earlier. Three, uh, three campaigns, uh, the Free Desi Woods, March Against Genocide, and the creation of the African National Prisoners Organization laid the groundwork for the creation of the Africans Charged Genocide Campaign. Almost 40 years later, Impedim has created working groups, held speaking tours, and has led camp, uh, conventions around the struggle. In the year 2021, in direct response to the vicious attacks that are being made on African people of Haiti at the Texas border, the African People's Socialist Party called on NPDM to launch a series of demonstrations against these attacks. Our Chicago, St. Louis, San Diego, Boston, and Philadelphia branches held demonstrations in front of their local immigration buildings, uplifting the people of Haiti and condemning these attacks as colonial attacks of genocide against African people. We then called on all the attendees to sign our African Charge Genocide Petition and become members of Impedum. We want to call on all viewers to do the same thing today. Our petition is currently at over 113,000 signatures. Go to the go to AfricansChargeGenocide.org and it's right here on the slide. Go to AfricansChargeGenocide.org, <clears throat> AfricansChargeGenocide.org, sign this petition and help us bring this fight to the door of the United Nations. Next slide, please. Take back the dome. Tropicana Field Dome, a baseball stadium located in St. Petersburg, Florida, was first opened on March 3rd, 1990. Now this stadium where the Tampa Bay Rays baseball team is based was built on the bones of what was once a thriving African community called the Gas Plant District. In the years leading up to the construction of the dome, the Gas Plant District and African community of over 2000 residents were uprooted along with dozens of different businesses and different churches. The African community was tricked into giving up the properties. They were promised light industry and jobs. And now it's lies, lies, and more lies. The lies started in, uh, in the 1970s. And by the time the city has secured the land um, for the supposed so-called light industry by pushing Black residents out, city officials, had a, city officials came around and changed their tune to uh, building a baseball stadium. In the end, an entire Black community was destroyed for the construction of this dome and millions and millions of dollars in revenue for the city of St. Petersburg. This process has been called the Tropa Scam by the National Directive Organization and historical Olympedum leader, Chimarenga Silimbao. For more than 30 years, the dome has existed as a grim reminder of what the system of colonialism is capable of doing. And we say that there is only one way to correct this injustice and that's reparations now. The African People's Socialist Party and Impedum has condemned this colonial destruction of the gas plant district from the very beginning. And you can see right here in the image, you'll see um, NDO, Chimarenga, and also a longtime comrade, um, the picture on the left from 98, longtime comrade and member of the party, uh, Johnny X. Actually, it was also pointed out to me that if you were to go on Google Images right now and type in, uh, I believe it's Tropicana Field protest. Uh, the, the, the picture on the left is going to be the very first picture that pops up. Just a glimpse on you know, how long we've been engaged in the struggle. So in 2020, the city government began plans on redeveloping the 86 acres of Tropicana Field property. Various different land developers and companies are chomping at the bit right now, and none of those companies have any plans for compensating the African community. So we say take back the dome. The land underneath the Tropicana Dome, valued by some at a billion dollars, Credit comrades thing just kind of shut down on me. Here we are. Yes. Valued by some at about a million, about a billion dollars needs to be returned to the African community. So our solution for getting these reparations is through a plan called the Reparations Land Trust and Development Authority, or the RLTDA. This plan to secure reparations in the form of the 86 acres of land under the Tropicana field will give the African community the ability to control how the Tropicana field property is developed, along with all with, um, other vacant city-owned land in the Black community. So you can learn more about the Reparations Land Trust and Development Authority and get involved in this campaign today by contacting us at reparationsnowdo at gmail.com. It's right here on the slide. Reparationsnowdo at gmail.com. Or seven to call it to 727-914-3614. Take back the dome. Next slide, please. All right. So keep 28 is a fight for black power. The city of St. Louis has been involved in an ongoing assault on St. Louis's north side African community. 
With each passing year, chunks of the black community have been given to parasitic land developers with the help of the corrupt politicians in their pockets. The latest attack came in the form of Proposition R, a plan to reduce the number of wards in St. Louis from 28 to 14. Fewer wards meant a weakened black vote and the African community's ability to elect politicians who work in our interests will be drastically cut. Chairman Amali Chatella understood uh, the impact the proposition R that it would have on the African community. And in 2018, he tasked Impedum with launching a Keep 28 campaign against ward reduction. So this began a three year intense campaign of demonstrations, rallies, outreach, and in mass community political education. City ordinances, propositions, and bills, all these different things, which were intentionally designed by the ruling class to be difficult to understand by the masses of the people, was made clear and plain by Impedum. And the significance of Proposition R and its impact on the African community, if it was passed, was also made clear by Impedum. The Keep 28 campaign stormed St. Louis City Council meetings and injected terms like colonialism and gentrification and reparations into the otherwise stale, basic status quo discussions held by the ruling class politicians. In 2021, this campaign would lead to President Kalambayi running a historic all-domestic campaign. The demand to keep 28 wards was put on center stage and the African community was given for the very first time in St. Louis history an opportunity to vote for a campaign platform that was in their interest. Status quo politicians were forced to speak on reparations for the first time due to the intervention of this unprecedented electoral campaign. And the African working class, which was traditionally silenced by the different sellout politicians, were given a platform in the form of the Black is Back Coalition's National Black Agenda of Political Self-Determination and a voice in President Kalambayi. The Keep 28 campaign played a vital role in the impact of the electoral campaign. The Keep 28 campaign led us to comrade Alderman Jesse Todd. He united with the Keep 20 demand and decided to run his own Alderman campaign according to the Black is Back platform. platform. He, would, he would win his electoral campaign, affectionately becoming known as the People's Alderman. He would later deepen his unity with Impedum, becoming a lifetime Marcus Garvey member and I call on everybody to also become lifetime Marcus Garvey members. I saw Chairman comment earlier that he himself is a lifetime Marcus Garvey member. I am, and I believe most of the IC is, everybody should become a Marcus Garvey member. So though there were victories, the IEC acknowledges that there were significant contradictions in how the campaign was led. Despite a POA, which clearly defined the goals and objectives of the campaign, we didn't stick to it. So as a result, spontaneous, uh, spontaneity plagued the work, which kept the campaign from developing to its full capacity. This style of work also prevented us from effectively enabling the masses of the people to participate in this campaign and take lead roles in the campaign. So for this, I want to make a self-criticism on behalf of the Impedum IEC. The city of St. Louis has passed a bill to reduce the number of wards from 28 to 14. And with that, we are closing the doors on this campaign officially. However, Keep 28 captured the imagination of the masses and the entire African community was transformed. The African community united with the demand to keep 28 wards and were inspired to fight for the self-determination of the African community. Going forward, we'll learn from these contradictions experienced during the Keep 28 campaign, combat liberalism and stick to the POA to ensure that uh, future campaigns have the greatest capacity to push forward this revolutionary project. Uh, next slide, please. Black Power Talks, formerly known as the People's War Radio Show, is a program launched by Black Power 96 for the initial purpose of covering the 2020 outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic virus. Since then, the show has been rebranded in a sense uh, into a general African nationalist news platform, providing political analysis to various issues impacting our community through the lens of African internationalism. In 2021, I joined our Vice President Matsumila Odom as co-host of the program. And in the past year, the show has produced dynamic weekly episodes with various authors, doctors, musicians, educators, activists, and leaders of the Uhuru movement as regular guests on the program. In the past year, Black Power Talks has experienced significant growth. Our weekly downloads increased by over 300%. We are syndicated on the three additional radio stations and 19 additional podcast platforms, and that's virtually every popular podcast platform and then some. 
Wherever you stream your podcast from, you can access Black Power Talks. In October 2021, we also began regularly uploading our episodes onto the Burning Spear TV YouTube page in order to make our program accessible on your radio, on your podcast app, and on your web browser. In 2022, we'll continue gaining territory. We'll secure more radio stations to run Black Power Talks. We'll continue to grow our podcast base and continue to broadcast African internationalism on your airwaves. And again, um, we can be found just about any podcast platform and just throw out a few. Uh, you can find us on Apple Music, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Podbean, and, and Stitcher. In addition, you can find us on the YouTube page, The Burning Spirit TV. And I also want to call on everybody to follow us on the social media platforms listed there, our Facebook, our Instagram, and Twitter. Next slide, please. ARN, in Peterman's monthly call in the Burning Spare newspaper, African Existence Now, continues to be an effective weapon in Peterman's arsenal for reaching the masses and bringing them into political life. We submitted an article to the Spare every month in 2021. Over the course of 2021, African Existence Now articles are focused largely on spotlighting our new emerging leaders and developing branches. In the, mo in the moment, <clears throat> sorry, our emerging branches in the movement. However, we still need more articles and, uh, and reporting on news and uh, various African communities through the lens, through the actual voice of members of the African working class community. So beginning in January 2022, our branches began sending monthly articles or reports to African Resistance Now, ARN, featuring news out of their local communities and interviews of members of the African community speaking on the conditions in their communities themselves, in their own words. So we want to call on everybody watching today to become a writer for African Existence Now. We want to hear your story in your words. Email us, email us at info at uh, mpdm.org. You see it right there, info at mpdm.org. And if you want to become a regular writer for ARN, become a member of MPDM, take our Burning Spear Riders training, then start reporting on the news in your city today. Next slide, please. Mandates. Mandates, mandates for 2022. So uh, on top of the list is uh, building, uh, just building the info and ed uh, subcommittee to full capacity because none of the uh, mandates that follow it could really be implemented or effectively led without the info and ed subcommittee functioning like a, like a machine. But also uh, all US-based impedent branches are to sell 50 spears per month. All branches are to submit monthly articles to info and ed as a process we recently started. Uh, to continue sending ARN articles to Africa and to implement the George Jackson prison program. So uh, speaking on the uh, George Jackson, well, speaking on ARN, actually, um, it was an article that we printed that was um, carried in the June 2021 issue of the Burning Spear that really led to the re uh, reestablishment of our George Jackson program. And um, if we can take it to the next slide, comrade uh, Denzel Drawn is going to speak uh -huh. a little my name yeah. is Denzel Dron, and okay. I'm the coordinator for the George Jackson Prison Outreach Program. Since we announced the reestablishment of this program, we have received over a dozen letters from imprisoned Africans requesting impedum membership. There is one imprisoned African in particular who paid for five years of his impedum membership in advance. This is a testament to the willingness of our people to get organized and take our freedom into our own hands. These prisons are meant to separate us from our communities, exploit our labor, brutalize us, and break our spirits. But Impedum has a responsibility to turn these prisons into, as Chairman Amalia Shatella has stated, revolutionary universities. We have begun producing literature, spotlighting past and present leaders, of our African liberation movement with a special emphasis placed on our martyrs behind bars and sending them into the prisons. Here is a piece of our propaganda that we send to our members in prison, highlighting George Jackson. In 2022, we will begin having bus trips, transporting families to visit their loved ones in the prisons. Our ultimate goal here is to build impedum branches right in the belly of the beast. We call on all African men and women in prison to become members of Impedum. Build branches where you're located 
and form the prison front of the African revolution today. If you know somebody locked down, we call on you to buy them an Impedum membership. Get them subscribed to the Burning Spear newspaper and expose them to this revolutionary movement. I will now pass it back over to our president, Kalambayi, to close us out. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru, comrades. Fist up. Fight back. Uhuru, I know you can't. We're trying to get the camera on, but I believe you can hear my voice. And I just want to salute all the men um, and women, all my comrades that make up the executive committee. I appreciate every um, all the reports. And you just seen, you know, you just seen that the masses need the African People's Socialist Party. Africa and African people will no, never know redemption, will never know liberation without us building a revolution and bringing the masses into political life. And so build EPDOM, build the mass organizations. If you're a member of the party, you should be a member of all of the mass organizations because you never know when you got to put on your app, their pad. Never know when you got to put on your M. Well, okay. You never know when you have to put on your EPDOM hat. That's what we are called to do, to be a member of the African People's Socialist Party. So let's tie ourselves to the region strategy and go build the African nation wherever we are. Uhuru! Forward to the revolution. Wow. Uhuru. <laughs> Thank you, President Colin Bayi. Thank you, comrades, um, for Impedum, IEC. <clears throat> I see some notes being added here, um, mm -hmm. but I'm going to move to say, I know we're kind of for discussion, but I just think that was such a phenomenal um, presentation, and I'm looking forward to seeing all this work being carried out. I know we all are um, in 2022 and beyond, so I really want to see your leadership, President Colin Bayi. Um, and the entire IEC. Uhuru. Come in, um, All right. Can hey, I make a self-criticism self real quick? Because I did not acknowledge um, our, life, our important lifetime Marcus Garvey members. Um, and they're important because party's chairman, okay? And then as well as one of our guests that you heard on day one of this plenary, uh, St. Louis Alderman, Jesse Todd. So, yes. and Uhuru. it is imperative, y'all. Look, every party force should be an impedum member um so be expecting to get an email here within the next month okay look and i'm gonna need y'all to act <laughs> okay Ooh. check your inbox <laughs> that's my that's my goal look that's my that's, okay. yeah that's what's up that's important comrades and um to join the work of impedum at any level you're going to be put to work held accountable and and you know, see real change in your community. No more talking about it. It's time to be about it. So Uhuru. appreciate Impedum for this work. Uhuru. And um, we're gonna move on to our next section. But before we do, we wanna just make a quick announcement because as we know, we had a goal, but we surpassed our goal and we have a new goal and we're really working to meet that goal. And um, right now we wanna just make announcement about how much we've been able to raise. We have raised 160 seven thousand dollars four hundred and sixty six that's the total right now and uh the amount more that we need is two thousand five hundred and thirty one dollars more or sorry thirty four to raise until we can meet our goal of one hundred and seventy thousand so that's two thousand five hundred and thirty four more to go um any little bit counts as we see in impedum it don't matter you know who you are it's what you do. And the same thing with, it don't matter how little you give, it's that we give and that we continue to support. So you can make your pledge at apspuhuru.org slash pledge um, to make your donation or your pledge. And um, we're gonna make another announcement um, in a little bit towards the end too. So Uhuru. Let's hit that before the day's over. Yes, <laughs> let's do it. And now just to, you know, give you a chance to go and get your, pocketbook and all that you can listen to some revolutionary culture because we're going to move into our next section and welcome an artist and dear comrade from the African working class in South Africa 
or Occupy Zania. We want to welcome BLA, the baddest lyrics around. You just heard from the baddest revolutionary organization. Yeah. Now you're going to hear the baddest lyrics around. So who? Where's it on my mouth? Black power to the African community. My name is Asa Anpu, aka General Nobody, and I got some young spitters here, some lions from Occupy Zania, revolutionary cultural workers, and they're about to show African people how resistance looks in hip hop. Black power. Somebody take your stuff. Woo wee, boy, y'all couldn't grow with me. Back in my day, boy, I, boy, I wish I, man, I'd slap you, dog. You gonna let somebody take your stuff? Paragraph before the class. Uh, okay, I got you the news. You wouldn't black on bars if you was in my shoes. I now I'm melanin like African dudes. You wouldn't rap like this. You don't hang with the goons. Even the tools, man. Got a problem with sharing tools. Got a problem to follow rules. Uh, daddy talk without no brooms. Uh, it's all gossip within the rooms. Watch terms, you can dine with the goons. Uh, What's next? Niggas wish there was you. Uh, watch me black on bars like monkeys within a zoo. Stuffed in a tummy like a baby kangaroo. Even when I'm rich, I'll be wearing jabaru. Uh, Self love is something you never prove. Self love is something you never prove. Uh, being broke is something you never choose. Being broke is something you never choose. Stand up is something you gotta move. Uh, Stand up, there's something you gotta Somebody eat it, but they took it from the trash Somebody seeking what is flowing in the flesh Somebody hate you for the reason that you fresh Somebody threw it up, hoping they gon' catch it I don't feel broke, cause I do it with a passion I offer any help, you can ask me any question Niggas with no bars, they be getting all the traction Black on bars, killing rappers been a fashion What a city game, rappers to be capping Rushing in my boat, they forgot that I'm the captain I hate attention, you don't wanna see me laughing The only time I face the people when I'm rapping Yo Mbuz <laughs> Yeah We foresee the truth so there's no time to be stumbling No sitting at the corner getting robbed with my chick while we cuddling You gotta understand this the type of world that gotta be humbling I it, niggas is puppet cars getting shuffled in For white rappers, we'll cut off the useless tongue that's mumbling Snatch the chains as I ain't never got the chance to buy my bill I'm still grinding on some revolutionary hustling Got chased out of PP limb saying I need cancelling I for these schools, another colonial tool My life was zero like lies six feet deeper than under my mother's tomb A queen who sacrificed for those she baked in a womb a Chest that used to be warm now lies in a cold room where flowers bloom, but she still lives in me, right? Got the same house, she moved out to K169. My spirit calls her through the power of my friend's landline. That's the thing about life and death, you can run, but you can't hide. The Green Reaper's death reaches way beyond them exiles and protects the real looters who got more than bad foul. The mouth won't release the tooth, the situation is stand out. They keep it safe so it never falls like something fragile. Writing bars till the ink on my pens runs out or dry out Getting good at rap like girls tryna pop Only time you dripping is carrying buckets of water Cause you going through drought Can't tell the difference for me, uh, from then and now Like tryna find what could replace me Like a pronoun, wow How could this become somehow Hardcore like a granite So fly high, I painted a picture of God Through my lyrical dress Briefly all over like you Running through french fries To get this growth, huh Many as the price, many Die rolling the wrong side of the dice Still waiting for reparation like 
Is it justified behind these invisible bars like brothers and juvenile? What's the difference between me and you? It's a six and nine. Blood pressure rises when I roll out the night. Niggas exposing to PC, stepping on the wrong landmine. I'm in 28. Uh, what's your side? Wow, <laughs> that was some fire right there. Um, <clears throat> we have some people asking, um, is there a link to that music video that we can share? How can we get some of their music? So just wanted to um, say if we have that information, feel free to share that. Um, Look, I was trying to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, Uhuru, that's what's up. Um, all right, so let's see here. Yeah, powerful stuff, says Secretary General Luizzi in the chat as well. All right, Carmada, I'll kick it back to you. Uhuru. Let's uh, now welcome some of our solidarity forces from the African People's Solidarity Committee and their reports from the African People's Socialist Party. So uh, we're gonna go with it here on the program. So y'all got this. <laughs> Are we ready? Uhuru. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, let me see. I just really want to salute the African People's Socialist Party. This plenary has been incredible. This has been four days immersed in the future, in, in the world of, of the liberated African society and, and world and economy. And it's been an incredible honor to be able to be here. Just really want to again salute the African People's Socialist Party 50 years Chairman Omalia Shatella and his incredible, relentless leadership, Deputy Chair Onisene Shatella and the entire NCC and membership of the, of the African People's Socialist Party. So from the African People's Solidarity Committee, we are going to present our regional reports. We're really honored to be able to do that. We're gonna start with the Northern, currently we have the, the Northern and Southern regions working together to, to build and also APSC and USM regions work together. So we're gonna show all of that for the North and South. Um, we are bringing up our Secretary General, Allison Haney, who's in Philadelphia, along with um, Janice, Janice Kant from St. Pete, E.B. Dollar from Pittsburgh, I believe, and Jamie Simpson from St. Pete. Both of, they, both of the last two were from USM. So I'm gonna turn this over to our Secretary General, Allison Haney in Philadelphia. Uhuru, can you hear me? Oh. Yes, we can hear you. Hear you. Thank you, Chairwoman Penny Hess. And you know, I just want to join in saying what an honor it is to be able to participate and give a report to this incredible plenary. And um, you know, just say how it is showing in every report and every cultural performance, as Chairwoman Penny said, just the deepening power of the winning vanguard party of the African working class revolution. And um, the party is winning. So uh, we are gonna start with a, next slide, start with a report, um, actually the next slide, sorry. Report from the APSC North-South region. And I wanna start by saluting Chairman Omalia Shatella uh, for his 50 years of relentless leadership of the African revolution and performing APSC and leading APSC as a tool of the party. And I wanna salute Deputy Chair Onizanea Shitala, who provides just tremendous leadership to all of APSC's work. And it's just such a profound honor to work directly under Deputy Chair's leadership in the party's economic work. We wanna salute the party's National Central Committee, 
and we salute the um, APSC, APSP regional leadership, Representative Tiffany Murphy of the Northern Region and Kobina Bantushango, the representative from the Southern Region. Next slide. So as Chairwoman Penny said, we have temporarily, APSC has temporarily reorganized to combine the North and the South regions after four leading APSC members, comrades recently relocated from these regions to St. Louis. So we regrouped and we're very excited that we now have a unit to lead the region and comrade Ruby has just rejoined APSC. So we have three people leading it at this moment. I'm the interim regional committee chair. Janice is the project manager and Ruby is the membership and coordinator. And our mandate is to advance the regional strategy and to recruit and build the region. Next slide. So uh, main events in 2022 are going to be um, include the MLK Day of Service and Volunteer Project that we do every year under APDF and uh, the March for Reparations, our Holiday Pie Campaign, the Giving Tuesday Campaign, Take Back the Dome Campaign in solidarity with that, and the Buy Black Power Holiday Sale from APDF. Next slide. So APSC and Uhuru Solidarity Movement participate in solidarity in all the regional hubs of the party. And the main regional hub of the North region it is the 28 year old party anti-colonial dual power economic institution Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles with its spin-off Uhuru on the Move. We also have solidarity organizing booths at the One Africa, One Nation Marketplace, the Uhuru Health Festivals and book fairs led by the North region of the African People's Socialist Party. And, and I'm just gonna hand it over to comrade Janice Uhuru. Uhuru, thank you, Ali. Um... APSC and USM participate in the regional hubs of the party in the South region as well. If you could, uh, next slide, please. Thank you. The Uhuru House in St. Petersburg features Aquaba Hall, the Uhuru Jiko Community Commercial Kitchen and Black Power 96 Radio. It's also the national office of Burning Spear Media. Next slide, please. <clears throat> APSC and USM are are key volunteers in the Uhuru Foods and Pies St. Petersburg, especially in the holiday pie campaign to bake and sell pies, get donations and recruit volunteers. Next slide, please. Our recruitment goals are to build USM regionally, recruit into APSC through winning USM members in studies, events and Uhuru NTU program. We will bring regional USM members closer to, into the work of the party institutions through monthly joint volunteer meetings and activities. Next slide, please. We're holding regional APSC studies twice a month at Uhuru Furniture Philadelphia, as well as on Zoom, to bring our closest USM members to study at a higher level and go through a deeper political process. We bring the region to monthly national APSC and USM studies, and we're bringing USM into Uhuru Furniture monthly volunteer meetings to involve USM in the members in the work of the party institutions. Next, we will have the report on USM regional work given by EB for the North and Jamie for the South. Uhuru, hi there. Thank you, SGL and Janice. It's an honor to participate in the Historic Party Plenary. It's an honor to be here today on behalf of USM North Region. Uh, my name is Eby. I am the USM Regional Membership Coordinator for the North Region. Um, and I want to start by saluting our comrades in the North Region. So these are some of our USM members in the North Region. And we're located in Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, uh, New York, and Boston. And next slide, please. Uh, currently, we've got 85 members, USM members in the North Region. Uh, next slide, please. And so looking back at this year, in 2021, one of our highlights for the region was the Reparations Challenge Campaign. Uh, we unleashed the creativity of our members building the movement for reparations. In August, USM members Eva and Hallie coordinated an art raffle for reparations, and they raised over $2,000 for the Black Power Blueprint. And then in April, a USM member also held a rock concert on Zoom and that raised $800 to the BPB. 
uh, both of these events recruited white people to take a stand for reparations and recruit white people to pay reparations using their skills and creativity. Next slide, please. Um, so we started with outreach with Uhuru Planet Reparations Apparel. We've got comrades all over the region coming to sell at markets in Boston, New York, and Philadelphia. So you can see in the photos here, we've got some of our comrades in New York. There's some stuff from the uh, punk rock flea market in Philadelphia. But anyway, so for the last five years, Uhuru Planet was an institution in the North region in Boston, and they've actually relocated to St. Louis in the Midwest now. Next slide, please. Uh, in 2021, we held outreach tables regularly in Philadelphia and Boston. We had a volunteer day of drops in Philly, Pittsburgh, Boston, and New York. And we also held a week-long tabling action in New York City. And we also brought lots of banners to local demonstrations. So you can see in this picture here, we've got a giant reparations banner in front of the Massachusetts State House. Uh, next slide, please. And then in October, we held the Philadelphia March for Reparations, which was coordinated by our comrades, Lynn and Hallie. Huge salute to Lynn and Hallie for organizing that. Um, and our comrades from all over the North region came. We had guest speakers from the APSP. We had North Regional Representative Tiffany Murphy and ANWO President Yezhede Overmila speaking. Uh, the march also coincided with our last One Africa, One Nation market in Philadelphia. So it was a really powerful turnout. Uh, next slide, please. And then this year, our goals, we are committed to carrying out the party's mandate, which is to recruit and build regional organization. In 2022, we want to build branches in these top five target cities here. Um, and we're planning to initiate a USM organizing tour. We want to build up to our national convention. And we also want to bring speakers from the party and APSC to uh, each of these cities for a speaking event. Um, and we would like our forces to be consolidated so that we can recruit and build local organization on the ground here in the North region. Uh, next slide, please. And then on Friday, February 28th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, USM is going to host a North-South Regional Pre-Convention Conference. Um, this is as per the USM Constitution. We want our members in the Northern region to come together. We're going to study our political report adopt resolutions for the region. We're going to set goals for recruitment, branch building, uh, the Uhuru Into You Volunteer Brigade, and we have uh, lots and lots of bold actions that we want to try to, to meet in this next year. So on February 28th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, um, we're going to host our pre-convention conference. And that's also when we'll elect our regional and state delegates, and those will be our representatives at the National Convention in March. Um, next slide, please. And then last but not least, USM in the North region will build a Days of Reparations to African People events. And our goal is to host Chairman Omali Ishitela and APSC Chairwoman Penny Hess. Um, big salute to <laughs> Chairman Omali Ishitela and Chairwoman Penny Hess. Um, and Jamie's going to give the Southern report now. But the Hoover guys, thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Uhuru, thank you, Evie. And uh, I just want to salute this incredibly historic plenary, uh, the leadership of Chairman Amalia Shatella, Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella, and the entire uh, National Central Committee of the African People's Socialist Party. It's really an honor to present on behalf of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement Southern Region today. First, I want to salute some of our incredible active members of USM in the Southern Region. I am the St. Pete organizer. Johan is the membership coordinator for the Southern Region. Diane is the Gainesville organizer. Other key members are Eliza, Alyssa, Marcel here in St. Petersburg, and our St. Pete volunteers, Claudia, Brady, Paige, Sierra, and Taylor. Next slide, please. So currently we have 88 USM members in the Southern region in Florida, Texas, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, and Kentucky. Next slide, please. And uh, these are our USM Southern branch building and recruitment goals. Uh, the cities we are targeting for branches include St. Petersburg, Florida, and uh, Gainesville, Florida, and 
I see Huntsville, Alabama was actually left off the notes. I'm not sure if that's still current or not. Next slide, please. We have been tabling at the University of South Florida, uh, the Saturday morning market, the special market of the Love Food Central uh, restaurants, a supportive restaurant, gaining support and getting petitions signed for the Take Back the Dome campaign. Next slide, please. And I wanted to shout out some of our Take Back the Dome solidarity volunteers, all of our volunteers pictured here is uh, Comrade Brady, Claudia, and this is Lilith, one of the youngest and most enthusiastic USM volunteers in St. Pete. Next slide, please. Here are USM St. Pete forces at a demonstration outside of the Tropicana field organized by the Take Back the Dome campaign. And I just wanna salute the leadership of National Director of Organization Chimarenga, Director Akile, uh, Temba Shabanda, and unit, uh, party unit chair, Dexter Luengo. Sorry, I mispronounced your name, comrade. Luengo. Uh, next slide. And upcoming events and actions in the Southern region include the March 5th Take Back the Dome teach-in, bold actions for the Take Back the Dome campaign, mobilizing USM Southern members for the USM convention. Next slide. In the Southern region, USM is committed to build and organizing a tour leading up to and directly following the USM convention to build branches in our target cities and also to begin mobilizing for the major days of reparations speaking tour in July, where we plan to invite and host Chairman Amalia Shatella and Chairwoman Penny Hess as our keynote speakers. Uhuru, that wraps up the USM Northern Southern Regional Report, and I'm turning it back over to Chairwoman Penny. Uhuru, comrades of the Northern Southern APSC USM region, just great report. And now I'm turning it over to comrade Hallie Murray, the APSC Midwestern Regional Organizer. And we'll also be hearing from Len Demmer, the USM Regional Organizer here in the Midwest. Uhuru. Uhuru, comrades, really appreciate all the reports so far. So I just, um, let me get my notes here. Oh, wait, um, just a sec. All right, well, I first wanna appreciate the chairman of the African People's Socialist Party, Deputy Chair Onis Neya Shatella and the Midwest APSC Regional Rep Kumba. Uhuru, next slide. So here is the um, APSC Midwest region. We are really honored to have the Chairwoman Penny Hess of APSC right here in our region among our committee, as well as ORED Director Kitty, USM Chair Jesse. I'm the chair of the Midwest region, and we also have Len over membership, Lisa over Agiprop, Amanda over economic development, and Comrade Raya is a longtime member of APSC. And I wanna give an extra salute to the comrades who recently relocated to St. Louis to build and consolidate APSC in the Midwest. We have Jesse, Comrade Len, Amanda, as well as myself moved here from the Boston area. Next slide. So our main work in the Midwest region is to win white people to a stance of reparations to support the Black Power Blueprint. Long live the Black Power Blueprint. This is the dynamic economic development project led by Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella that is transforming the north side of St. Louis into a thriving community. Next slide. The St. Louis region St. Louis is the regional hub of the Midwest and includes many institutions such as Aquaba Hall and the Uhuru House, the Black Power Blueprint, the One Africa, One Nation Market, and now the Uhuru Solidarity Center and Uhuru Planet Reparations Apparel. Next slide. Some, some of our main events that we've been building in the region are APSC studies as well as mass USM studies, the Giving Tuesday campaign, USM events such as film nights and potlucks right here in the center, NTU volunteer work days, the March for Reparations planning, solidarity with the Black Power Blueprint and the, all their volunteer days, and the MLK Day of Service. Next slide. 
So some of our victories from the last year include media coverage in the Bourgeois St. Louis Dispatch, acquisition of the new APSC Center, which is owned and, op and controlled by the African People's Socialist Party, four APSC comrades and one USM member moving to St. Louis to relocate here. We have a we use this building as our headquarters for the Giving Tuesday Telethon, which raised over $50,000. We began in-person studies in St. Louis, rela relocated Uhuru Planet to St. Louis, our March for Reparations in St. Louis, and we held a really awesome teach-in in Tower Grove Park that won members and resources. Next slide. So our recruitment goals include building the Solidarity Center as the regional hub, building units and branches in St. Louis, Minneapolis, and target cities of Kansas City, Chicago, throughout Ohio, build the NTU volunteer program and meet with mass USM members on a monthly interim basis. Next slide. So some of our political education series include regional APSC studies twice a month, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. at the center, monthly national APSC events, monthly political film nights here at the center, bi-weekly APSC regional meetings. We were meeting every other Friday and local USM St. Louis meetings will begin again this year. We actually already have been meeting to plan for an action coming up in March. So now I'd like to turn it over to USM Comrade Len to report on the USM Midwest region. Uhuru, thank you, Hallie. Um, so Uhuru, um, so I just really wanna salute uh, the amazing party plenary and the leadership of Chairman Amali Eshetela. Um, it's really an honor to present on the USM regional work here in the Midwest, beginning with our incredible members. Uh, so I just want to salute, of course, Chairwoman Penny, Director um, Kitty, USM Chair Jesse Neville, uh, Opa, Leah, Carrie, Sarah, Hallie, Lisa, Amanda, uh, myself, of course, uh, Raya, Virginia. Uh, next slide. Sorry, give me one second here. All right. Um, yeah, so our members are continued. Uh, we have uh, Comrade Jackson, Ari, Casey, Abby, Alex, Chris, Angelica, Amy, and Anya, Huru, to all of our members. Uh, next slide. So we currently have 64 Huru Solidarity Movement members in the Midwestern region. Next slide. And our rallying cry this year is recruit, 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 and build organization. Our recruitment goals for 2022 include building the USM St. Louis branch and the Uhuru Solidarity Center as the base of organizing and volunteer work. Our target cities for branch building are St. Louis, Minneapolis, Chicago, Louisville, Kentucky, Kansas City, Missouri. Next slide. Another main recruitment strategy will incorporate the culture and practice of the NTU volunteer program into all aspects of Uhuru Solidarity Movement's work in this region. This will be held strictly accountable through regional committee and the National Membership Office of USM. We will also be holding monthly NTU volunteer days of action. Next slide. And, uh, Right off the momentum of this historic plenary, we will hit the ground running with the regional organizing tour to build branches and recruit in the Midwest. We will hold an event here in St. Louis, as well as in Minneapolis, where Leah is taking the lead to organize a recruitment event in mid-April. We also have a goal to hold events in other cities, including Chicago. Next slide. And because the Midwest is home of the Black Power Blueprint, a major part of USM's work is to build support through volunteers, donations, and promotions for the Black Power Blueprint in St. Louis. And we will mobilize for volunteer work days, win donors to attend tours of the Black Power Blueprint, and work with the promotions team to create videos and literature showing the unique anti-colonial project of the Black Power Blueprint. Next slide. And using the Uhuru Solidarity Center as our hub, we will continue to organize the NTU Volunteer Days on at least a monthly basis. Next slide. Our volunteer work will revolve around this strategy of being among the people, winning the white community to the line of African internationalism through tabling, selling the Burning Spear newspaper, and going door to door. Next slide, please. Um, and 
we will be organizing a teaching at Tower Grove Park in the summer here in St. Louis. Next slide, please. And so um, we're also building for a major bold action, a political action at the Gateway Arch, an infamous monument symbolizing colonialism and genocide. And we will organize over 100 people to hold banners spanning the width of the arch, declaring our unity with reparations to African people. Next slide. And the Midwest region of USM will host the Reparations Legacy Conference in June with the goal to win wealthy white people to pay reparations to the Black Power Blueprint. Next slide. And USM in the Midwest will launch a campaign to build Days of Reparations to African People Speaking Tour events in St. Louis, Minneapolis, Chicago, and other cities. Our goal is to host Chairman Amali Yeshitela and Chairwoman Penny Hess here as the keynote speakers. Next slide, please. And finally, USM will host our third annual March for Reparations in St. Louis, this time as a major all day event in Tower Grove Park, culminating in a rally at the Sons of Rest Pavilion, followed by an all day reparations conference the next day. And that concludes our Midwestern regional report. And now I'll turn it back over to Chairwoman Penny Hess. Uhuru. Uhuru, thank you, comrades Len and Hallie. All right, so now we are going to go to the West Coast, comrade Ali Aiello, representing both APSC and USM on the Western region. Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru Cheryl and Penny. Uhuru, I'm really excited and honored to be here to represent the Western region for the African People Solidarity Committee. Uh, next slide. And I want to start off this report by saluting the leadership, Chairman Omali Shetela, saluting Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shetela, the entire National Central Committee of the African People's Socialist Party. And of course, want to give a special revolutionary salute to Western Regional Representative of the African People's Socialist Party, Bakari Olatunji. Next slide. Uh, this for, uh, makes up the, the African People's Solidarity Committee Western Region uh, with myself as the chair, Stephanie as the secretary, Janine over economic development, Sandy over agitprop, and Maureen over security. Next slide. Um, and as the party and deputy chair says, always says the political and the economic are one, uh, these are the institutions that define the Western region. Um, and so we have the Uhuru House uh, in Oakland, along with Uhuru Foods and Pies and Uhuru Furniture and Collectibles, uh, which has played, uh, as we've seen over the course of the plenary, has been around for many years and is part of the 50 year relentless history of the African People's Socialist Party. Next slide. Uh, so I get, want to tell you a little bit about our main campaigns and events that uh, AVSC and USM participated in 2021. Next slide. So uh, under the leadership of um, Agiprop, of the party's Agiprop and Director Akile, Director Akile uh, Sandy, Sandy held um, or led studies to develop the political unity of our comrades in the West region. And studies included the 14 week series on the 14 point platform of the African People's Socialist Party, along with a three week study series on African internationalism. And we are going to be continuing these studies um, uh, at least twice a month throughout the rest of 2022. Next slide. And an important piece of our role as solidarity is supporting the Uhuru movement institutions. I want to salute Maureen, Stephanie, and Janine, who forward these institutions under the leadership of Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shetela. And USM forces participated in the Uhuru furniture warehouse sales, which brought together all of the institutions within the region. And also uh, comrades from around the region participated during the holidays to participate in the Uhuru Foods and Pies holiday pie campaign. Next slide. 
Uh, one of our largest events this year was holding the March for Reparations in Oakland, California, which featured Western Regional Representative Bakri Olatunji and brought the demand for reparations to African people through the streets of Oakland. Next slide. And at that same time, we also held a rally for reparations in Portland that was led by Ashley um, in Portland and featured African People's Socialist Party member Demetria. And there they did a, ban a banner drop that said gentrification is colonialism, reparations now. There you can see Comrade Janet uh, who had uh, who was uh, on the table at that rally. Next slide. We also held uh, early in 2021, we held NTU volunteer days of drops um, in Oakland to promote the Ahura Solidarity Movement National Convention, the White Lives Shattered podca podcast and membership in the Ahura Solidarity Movement. And here you can see photos of members and volunteers in USM who are out uh, doing drops to put out the word. And this is something that is going to be an important piece of continuing uh, the NTU Volunteer Brigade in 2022 is bringing these comrades out to do drops and tabling and more. Next slide. Uh, members throughout the region also participated in panels as M and MCs and during appeals and behind the scenes in the 24 hour Giving Tuesday telethon. Here you see. Um, Comrade Maureen, uh, Mads in Portland, Anya in Yukon, and Marissa in Portland, along with Evie, who's in Boston, who you heard from earlier. Um, but this was a, a significant event uh, that comrades participated in as well. Next slide. Uh, just recently, uh, we held a wine tasting for reparations where we partnered uh, with Juice for Justice to hold uh, this wine tasting, which raised resources for the Ahura Jiko Community Commercial Kitchen, where that's, which is part of the Black Power Blueprint. And uh, as part of this process, um, along with it, working with uh, a volunteer here in Oakland, we also got donations from different um, wineries uh, in, in the Bay Area as well. Next slide. So, uh, for the USM Western Region, our main goals moving forward uh, in terms of recruitment, this is going to be the main campaign of USM moving forward, recruitment and the regional strategy um, is number one is to use the USM Western Region as the hub for the membership office. Uh, so this is we want to use the comrades in the West Region to to build the membership office. Um, we want to build branches in, in our target cities are Oakland, Portland, Seattle, Spokane, and San Diego. Um, we want to build the NTU Volunteer Brigade and continue to hold um, monthly USM mass meetings, which we had done in, uh, in early months in 2021, bringing together all the volunteers and members uh, and forces that participate in work within the Western region. Next slide. So as far as building the, the USM, uh, using the USM West region to build the membership office, uh, along with myself as the chair, we currently have Erica in Oakland as the secretary. Uh, we have Janet who's in uh, Portland over thank yous. We have Paul in Spokane who's over the West region membership. Um, we have <clears throat> we have Anya in Yukon, uh, Canada who's over the newsletter, and we have uh, Nathan in Oakland, who is over uh, the membership packets. Next slide. Uh, so we currently have 116 members in the West region, which is the region with the most amount of members in USM. And those are largely concentrated in California, um, Oregon, mostly Portland, as well as Seattle or as well as Washington, which our main cities there are Seattle and Spokane. Uh, next slide. And to in 2022, um, one of the ways that we want to remobilize these areas and actually build branches 
um, in the West region is starting with an organizing tour in the Western region. And uh, again, the main cities where we wanna build branches and hold this tour is Oakland, Portland, Spokane, Seattle, and San Diego. And we've started meeting with comrades in Portland and Spokane to start planning this um, in April. Next slide. Uh, tabling and door-to-door. -door. This is going to be a main function for how we build the branches and build also the NTU Volunteer Brigade. Um, here you can see photos of Comrade Paul in Spokane, Comrade Erica and Pete in Oakland, and uh, Janet and Peter in Seattle out there tabling, putting out the demand for reparations and raising resources. And tabling and door-to-door -door is... Um, well, tabling in general is the number one way that we recruit uh, new contacts into USM, and we want to use that and turn those into volunteers, people who are putting their time forward into this movement as a stand of reparations to African people. So this is what we want to continue doing on a weekly basis in these cities um, in order to uh, build the branches and build organization under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. Next slide. And uh, I know we are committed to, I just want to reemphasize that we are committed to rebuilding our branch in Portland this year, which is the city uh, with the most amount of members in the West region. We've held events there in the past where we've seen a lot of unity with the chairman and the party and with reparations, um, as well as in Oakland, you know, we want to, we want to really uh, put this forward. Next slide. And again, and our um, our big a bit our biggest event this year is going to be um, building the Days of Reparations to African People um, in July, where hopefully this year we'll be able to hold in-person events, bringing Chairman Omani Shatoa, Chairwoman Penny Hess um, out here to Oakland, uh, California, and throughout the West Region. Um, so I uh, just really appreciate this opportunity to be able to speak about uh, the West region um, and want to salute this incredible historic uh, plenary and turn it back over to Chairwoman Penny. Uhuru. Uhuru. Thank you, Comrade Ali Ayello. And that concludes the APSC regional report. So unity through reparations. Uhuru. Uhuru. Um, wow. Just really want to uh, appreciate our. Okay, can you hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Appreciate our, our, our comrades from the APSC and for their great regional reports. You know, behind enemy lines isn't just the title of a movie, right? It's a practice and it's a strategy for the APSP and, um, and a mandate for APSC. And uh, it's a very winning strategy, as you can see. So, really want to salute um, those reports. And we do have a little time for discussion. Um, mm -hmm. so if there's, go ahead, Carmen. No, I was gonna say, I was looking for some questions, but I was just about to reply to uh, USM mm -hmm. Chair Jesse in the chat that okay. we, we Portland used to have one of the biggest branches and said that they're ready to build out here. Look, we ready for USM to come back out because we got a plethora of yeah. Black Lives Matter folks that truly need to be re-educated about this work. So look. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm Demetria, while we Now's out here. Time. <laughs> right. You know, we got to join forces. We are one, you know, make it, um, make that impact. Yeah, that's what's I up. See. I see more comments. Yeah, just a lot of comments. Sorry. Maybe we can take a look at some of them. And that truly uh, is because Chairman answered that question of what do we do about the white people? You know, right. And that's a lot yeah. of what I hear out here. Well, what about the white? We still worry about the white people. Look. Like, Stop. Right. And, you know, yes. everybody has a chance to come onto the right side, as Chairman says. Um, and that's how that's the beauty of African internationalism that, you know, nobody, you know, everybody can be a part of it. Um, and as we say, you're going to be free whether you want to or not. So what side you want to be on, you know? Um, okay. <laughs> all right. So I think we got most of the comments from that. Just again, a lot of appreciation. Um, I do want to say um do, do we have an announce do we have an update on the yeah pledges? yeah let me go ahead and just give an update on the pledge while we're waiting um because 
before we move on to our next section, if we don't have any more questions um, of this dynamic day four of the 2022 APSP plenary, um, I want to first take a moment to make an announcement to acknowledge our new donors throughout the day, um, which has brought our new total. Since I just reported, we are now at $168,466. That means we only have now 1,534 more to get to our goal of 170. And we're almost there and we wanna appreciate our donors over the last four days, as well as our new donors. We have uh, Len for $50, Uhuru Len, uh, Kitty, $50, Penny, $50, Uhuru Comrades, Janet um, at the DC owner level, $120, Uhuru. We have Comrade Siali at $60, Comrade Paula also at the DC owners in AEL um, level, Comrade Johan with the $240 donation, Comrade Leah, $600, Uhuru, and um, I want to read a comment by um, Angelica, who wrote, Comrades, your work is so mind-blowing. I cannot but raise my pledge by another 1,000, the now 3,000 Uhuru. So that puts us at 1,000, again, 600 and um, 1,068,466. 1, you know, one day I'm going to see these numbers and read them off like it's nothing. But, okay. You know, I never see <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did we so hit, DC? Did we hit that number of you know how many DC level pledges we was going for oh, this? Yeah, weekend? that's right. That like, we have to get a count of that by the end of the day. Yes. Um, real quickly, I did see that uh, Uzi Chair Jordan Fly said, "My mom said it's been a really an eye opener, mm -hmm. and she excited to is excited to participate in events." Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, bring everybody bring into the world. Everybody. Yes, and so we want to let you know. Um, that if you want to make a pledge, you can go to apspuhuru.org slash pledge to make your donation. And we'll give another announcement um, on our total before we close out for today. So um, I'll kick it back to you, comrade. Um, and we might be able to move um, the program. I see some more chats. Let me see. We ahead of time. Yeah, we are very, we were behind and then now we caught up and now we're ahead of time. <laughs> Look. Okay, so this is a really great report and so glad you participated um, in today's historic plenary. This was um, Comrade Penny Hess uh, giving that comment right there. Uhuru. Uhuru. Awesome stand for reparations to Angelica. Yes, Uhuru. Since we do have a little bit of time, I, th I would like to read off the African Liberation Day announcement yeah, that we've go got. Um, mm -hmm. So the African Liberation Day events, once again, will be May 28th, 2022. Uhuru means freedom. The African People's Socialist Party is proud to announce that we will be organizing African Liberation Day events under the theme, Relentless, 50 Years of Leadership Towards African Redemption in several cities in the world. These events will be done recognizing the date of the founding of the African People's Socialist Party on May 25th, 1972. Our party, founded by Chairman Omalia Shetela, who is the clear leader of the African nation, believes that African Liberation Day events will be held internationally. To be held internationally will be yet another injection of strength into our overall struggle for the total liberation of our Africa and her people. These African Liberation Day events will make the step the great step that the African leader Kwame Nkrumah was able to make happen way back in 1963 when he attempted to build a united Africa. I didn't mean to say way like it was that far. Uhuru. The ALD events will have culture performances, a people's parade, vendors of all kinds. In addition, the African Liberation Day events will have political conferences that will discuss the important issues facing the Black community. These are some of the locations for the African Liberation Day events, and we'll place these in the chat as well. South Africa, London, England, London, England, Paris, France, Oakland, California, St. Louis, Missouri, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, St. Petersburg, Florida. We will be building African Liberation Day organizing committees to make great events in all of these regions. We encourage everyone to get involved in building these events in your region by contacting the African People's Socialist Party at 727 914-3617, emailing chimarangawaller at gmail.com or write us and we will put the address um, in the chat as well to the African People's Socialist Party, uh, 1245 18th Avenue, South St. Petersburg, Florida, 33705. 
Forward to African Liberation Day. Uhuru. Uhuru, comrade, I just, um, that's in the chat and we just reposted it again. Uhuru. Um, yeah, this is this is exciting. That's, that's the next time that you'll be able to see us um, at another sponsored event from the APSP as we, again, continue to prepare and rally and and collectivize our skills and our forces for the plant or for the Congress, right? In uh, 2023, which is going to be a big event. So, Uhuru. Uhuru. All right. So, we are a little bit ahead of time, but maybe um, what we could do is um, see if our Black Power sales is ready. You know, that's another way that you can support by buying Black Power. So if you weren't able to make a pledge or you made a pledge, but you also want to, you know, look good as you in the streets with all the stuff that we got coming out of Agiprop, um, that's another opportunity to support the work. And we see comrade director Akile is ready. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, comrades Moisey and Angelica, thank you um, for, uh -huh. first of all, being some great dynamic MCs, and I'm really excited to do this virtual vending. I am vending right now from the Burning Spear. Uh, we call this our warehouse, so it's a shipping warehouse. So um, all of our books that you order, posters you order, the Burning Spear newspaper, all of it is distributed right side um, outside of our own offices in St. Petersburg, Florida, in the inside the Uhuru House. So that's where I'm located right now, and I'm going to tell you about some of our products. Many of you are probably already familiar with it, but for those who are just being introduced to our movement and have not had the ability to know where can I get the Burning Spear newspaper from, where can I get some of those dynamic books that feature the African internationalist analysis that we've been talking about all weekend. Well, this is the place. This is where you're going to get all of those things from. So I just want to say it's an honor to uh, do this virtual vending. Let me start my timer to make sure I don't um, put us behind time after we work so hard to get in front of it. So, all right. So I'm going to be showing you some of our products today, but let me just give you an explanation about how this works. Each item we show will have a number. And when you want to claim an item, you can enter sold one, two, three. So whether you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, or on Zoom, make sure you type in sold the number. For those of you on Zoom, we have your email address and can follow up with you um, for your invoice. For those of you on YouTube or Facebook, our chat moderators will paste in a contact form link, burningspearmarketplace.com slash live sales contact. We ask you to fill that out so that we can match up your claim and send you an invoice. So make sure you follow those instructions if you're on Facebook or YouTube. We will ship as soon as that invoice is paid. Several items are also available for direct purchase on our online stores at burningspearmarketplace.com and at theburningspear.com slash subscribe. The costs listed today do not include shipping, so just note that. And some of the items we'll be showing, I'll, I'll make you guys aware that they are not available on the site. So this is your only chance to get them um, unless you come to future live sales events. So this will be your only time really to claim these items because they're not available on the site. Um, so you want to claim those items today. And I, again, I'll let you know which one of those, which things those are. So we're going to start first. Um, I want to let everybody know about this deal going on because we're only going to be running this tonight. So we are offering $5 off of Burning Spear subscriptions, either print or digital. So you can get the party's oldest institution, the Burning Spear newspaper. You can get this sent directly to your door or to your email inbox every month and our subscriptions are usually $25 but we're giving $5 type in promo code relentless when you go to the burningspear.com slash subscribe or you can type in let's see sold 601 and we can get in contact with you about how to set that up but type in uh, with promo code relentless you get $5 off of your subscription and you can combo so you can get a print and digital um, uh, issue delivered straight to you every month for just $35, usually a $40 offer, $35, $5 off. If you already have a Spear subscription, then those brothers and sisters, those comrades, those family members, those friends that we have to bring into this process, we have to bring in, um, into the revolution with us, you need to go ahead and give them their own, their very own subscription. And you can also sponsor a prisoner, making sure that the spirit gets into the hands of our brothers and sisters. We can continue to organize behind the walls. You can sponsor a prisoner. Um, 
by going to uh, Burningsburg Marketplace and sponsoring a prisoner. So those are just a couple of ways, but again, type in sold 601. If you want to claim this offer of $5 off for your Spear subscription, again, for yourself or for your loved ones. So I wanted to start off with that because we only got a couple hours left. And then we have our Thinking About Uhuru hat. So this is our newly added product. Um, thinking about her, I think we added this to our collection um, around December, the, around the holiday period last year. And so we added these, we've, the reviews are, you know, that they are soft, excellent material. These are reviews straight from comrades who've ordered. So you can get your thinking about Uhuru bucket hat, this beautiful, bright, vibrant red, thinking about Uhuru bucket hat right here. So type in sold 101, it's $20, sold 101. $20. It's also available at burningspearmarketplace.com. But type in sold 101 for your thinking about Uhuru. And this will go so great with those Uzi custom apparel items you guys purchase. It will go great with those Uhuru Planet t shirts y'all just got. So add to your revolutionary Uhuru swag your thinking about Uhuru bucket hat. And that rhyme, and I didn't even mean to. But again, that's sold 101. $20 for your thinking about Uhuru bucket hat, because you're thinking about Uhuru. I know you are. So um, again, to add to your swag collection, you want to get your swag bag, your struggle bag, your Burning Spear struggle bag. So all of my party members, my Uhuru movement members out there who are selling the spear, because that's what you need to be doing, and you don't know where to carry it in, and them uh, Walmart recyclable, recyclable bags are just not on brand for who you are, then you can get the Burning Spear newspaper struggle bag. You can put your spears in here, your flyers, your clipboards and sign-in sheets, compartments for pins. It's the perfect organizing tool. So type in sold 102, sold 102 for your Burning Spear struggle bag. And it is a really good recyclable bag also if you don't like to carry those plastic bags around. So. Um, sold 102, and this is $10. So this is your gear, your Burning Spear gear. Type in sold 102 for $10. You can get your Burning Spear struggle bag. <clears throat> Moving on down the list, adding to the uh, RBG color scheme, you got to have your two um, two by three foot RBG flag. And it was noted, I think somebody uh, um, said it earlier, just in terms of the cultural revolution, the African cultural revolution. And you know, also during the summertime, you know, you'll see in your neighborhood, depending on where you live, people be putting up their red, white, and blue flags. And we have to contend with the red, white, and blue by putting up our RBG and letting people know who the hell we are. So you can type in sold 301, type in sold 301 for your RBG flag, this two by three foot flag that I've seen people hang like in their windows, um, you know, so people can see and then I'll, again, hanging outside of your home, you know, and you see people have it for their backgrounds, uh, you know, for these virtual events. So you want to get your two by three foot uh, multi-purpose uh, RBG flag, the flag of the African nation. So type in Seoul 301, it is $10. So type in Seoul 301 uh, for $10 to claim your RBG flag. And we've been talking about the party's incredible 50 year history. Well, the first reparations tribunal happened, will, have, will have happened 40 years ago this year. And so what better to commemorate that than by getting you a reparations tribunal poster, which is a copy of the cover of the Burning Spear from that period. And it features a picture from the First World Tribunal that happened in Brooklyn, New York in 1982, where the party really set out to make reparations a household word. And so you can claim this by typing sold 401, type in sold 401, it's $10 for your reparations tribunal poster, sold 401, commemorate the party's a glorious 50 year history by you know, reminding yourself who made reparations a household word. That was the African People's Socialist Party. That was Chairman Amali Ishatella. So again, sold for zero one ten dollars for your reparations tribunal poster. Again, that's from that's from the Burning Spear newspaper. So you see, it's it's it looks very different from today's paper, the 20, uh, 2022 Spear. But you know, it's the same. It's the continuum. This is the continuum right here. So we've never given up, we've been relentless. So again, sold 401 for your 1982 reparations tribunal poster. <clears throat> All right, moving on down. 
So I've already talked to you guys about your Spear subscription. So I want to tell you guys about some, again, some special deals that you can only get right now because it's not offered on burningsformarketplace.com. So we have our uh, first, our classics collection, um, vintage, classics collection, vintage pamphlets. So these are original pamphlets from the era that they were printed in. So we have Smash, Slander, Build, Principled, Unity, Smash, Slander, and Build, Principled, Unity. And this was written by the chairman. And, and this is in 1979. This is 1979, the struggle was um, you know, uh, published and uh, documented. And then we have Report from the Mountain. And these are really important pamphlets because it highlights how the party throughout history has been struggling to advance the movement, dealing with these really pressing questions, these political questions. When people would try to get us off target and not wanna deal with the political question, they, this is what the party was struggling for advancing. So, and then, you know, this helped to consolidate, provide cohesion and say that we're gonna engage in principle struggle on all of these questions. We're gonna try to get to the root because the main goal for us is freedom is revolution and nothing can stop that. So we would need to figure out how to solve every problem that gets in the way of revolution. And these were part of those types of struggles that we had. So to get, um, to claim this classes collection pamphlet bundle, um, type in sold 720 type in sold 720. This is a $50 value going for $37, a $50 value. These are vintage from the year it was printed. So um, it's going for $37. So type in sold 720 for your classics collection vintage pamphlets. All right, keeping along with the deals, we have our quick reads pamphlet bundle. <clears throat> and this is right here. All right, so our quick reads pamphlet bundle features all six of those pamphlets. Um, I believe, yes, Comrade Chief of Staff Ikinge presented um, earlier this plenary, and you can get this deal. Um, the deal is $14, this is a $19 value. You can get all six pamphlets for $14, and you can, by typing in sold 721. Sold 721, get you your quick reads. Quick reads on pressing questions you wanna know the answers to regarding black community control of the police the electoral arena, neocolonialism, all of these pamphlets dealing with these pressing questions, the new period, a time for party building, you know, all of these things that help to show the party's history, how the party solved these pressing questions outstanding, um, left from the defeat of the Black Revolution of the 60s. It again, represents this historic continuum that the party has always been on. So this Quick Reads Pamphlets bundle helps you to understand your party, your revolutionary movement. It also helps you to get a crash course in being able to articulate our analysis, the African internationalist analysis on some of these questions. So type in sold 721 for this $14 deal on these Quick Reads pamphlets. And <clears throat> I got one more deal for you, your essential reads, your essential reads. This is the $80 value going for 60 bucks, $80 value going for 60 bucks. That's three of Chairman Amalia Chichella's works. We have his latest, latest book, Vanguard, The Advanced Attachment of the African Revolution, which was uh, written in 2018 and published in book form in early 2019. So Vanguard, the advanced attachment of the African revolution, the chairman's political report to the party's seventh Congress. Then we have an uneasy equilibrium. So this book right here, an uneasy equilibrium, when you talk about this was the book that predicted what we saw happening in the white world, the crisis of imperialism, this book predicted the January 6th. This is like, <laughs> you know, not to, no kind of philosophical idealism here. This was based on, you know, like really studying dialectical materialism, being able to, to study the events throughout the world and apply African internationalism. That's what the uneasy equilibrium did. That's what the chairman did with this book. So to get um, this deal, oh, I got to tell you all what uh, other book is included. One Africa, One Nation. So we're talking about the, the 50 years of leadership toward, Af uh, toward African redemption. So we have One Africa, one Nation, edited by Chairman Amalia Shatella. So you get all three of these books for only 60 bucks. Type in sold 810. That's sold 810 to get all three of these books for just $60. It's an $80 value, but you get it for 60 at the plenary today. So 
the two items that are not available. Oh, well, those are additional items. So two more items that are not available on the burningspermarketplace.com, but you can claim it right here is as we're celebrating the 50 year history, the chairman and Huey P. Newton button, the Huey P. Newton at the Oakland Uhuru House. And we say it's it's called passing the torch. These are vintage pamphlets. I'm trying to block the light. Um, so you can claim this Huey and chairman button. It's $6, type in sold 201, sold 201 to get this chairman and Huey button, passing the torch, sold 201. And that's $6. And then to add to your pin collections, because we saw those beautiful 50 year history pins that was produced by the Office of Deputy Chair. And Laura, let me get this bag open. Hold up. <laughs> so I can show you what you can add to your pin collection this enamel pin. So this is an RBG flag, but it's not just any RBG flag. This is the African People's Socialist Party official flag. That red star right in the middle. That's us. That's the African People's Socialist Party. So you can get this African People's Socialist Party flag pin, this enamel pin. It's $8. Type in sold 203. That's sold 203 to get your RBG African People's Socialist Party enamel pin. Again, add it to the collection because I know y'all been stocking up. That's more Huru swag for you. So <clears throat> let me see how much time I have. All right. So I got about a minute left. So I'm just going to do a brief recap, right? So the burningspear.com slash subscribe, use promo code relentless, get $5 off your subscription today and also $5 off your combo print and digital subscription. Again, if you already have one, make sure to share a subscription with your friends and family, the people that you want to bring into the, the movement's embrace. So that's $5 off promo code relentless, the burningspear.com slash subscribe or type in sold 601 and we'll make sure we follow up with you to get through that process. We have our bucket hats, $20, sold 101. Type in sold 101, $20 for our Thinking About a Who bucket hat. Going back to our struggle bag, I'm gonna move real quick. $10, type in sold 102 for your Burning Spear struggle bag. That's sold 102 for $10. We have our two by three foot African flag right here, right here. Type in sold 301, again, $10. Sold 301, $10 for your two by three foot African flag. Oh, that's my time. All right, y'all. Well, again, most of these items you can find on burningspermarketplace.com. For some of those items, again, I'll just make a tiny note so you guys can get them. The Huey P. Newton is sold 101. It's $6. And the African People's Socialist Party enamel pin is $8. Type in sold 203. Our pamphlets, our vintage pamphlets, those two vintage pamphlets, type in sold 720, that's $37, type in sold 720. For the six pamphlets, type in sold 721, that's $14 today. And then for Vanguard and Unease Equilibrium and One Africa, One Nation, type in sold 810 to get that 25% off deal, that's $60 for all three books. So that's what I have for you today from Bernie's for Media. Thank you all for letting me take up your time. Thank you for digging in your wallets and supporting Burning Spear Media, this dynamic institution of the Department of Agitation and Propaganda, where we're waging the war of ideas. And I'm gonna pass it back on over to these dynamic MCs. Uhuru. 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 Like, following the lead of a dynamic director yes. throughout this plenary. So yes, big salute. I, everything you see before you today is um a reflection of your leadership, Director Akile. So we want to appreciate you for always bringing just the energy, the political education, and and just the love for the struggle for African people. So uhuru, uhuru. Uh, uhuru. At this time, just want to make another call for pledges. Uh, right <clears throat> now, our total is one hundred sixty-eight thousand five hundred eighty-six dollars. That means we only need one thousand four hundred and fourteen dollars more to raise and get to our goal of 170,000. So we're almost there and we wanna appreciate all of our donors over the course of this four day plenary and as well as our new donors. So if you look ready to pledge more, if you have not pledged yet, go ahead and do it. I don't know why you're waiting. Go ahead and head over to APSPUhuru.org slash pledge. Again, that is APSPUhuru.org slash pledge. And so that was a hundred dollar increase since our last one, by the way. So we we're yes. gonna get there. Look, we got mm -hmm. chairman coming up, you said. Yep. Come we on. Still got a little bit more time left. So 
Uhuru comrade. Um, as you said, um, apspuhu.org slash pledge. And now, um, look y'all, we've come to the end, right? Of a very powerful and truly revolutionary four day process of the third plenary of the African People's Socialist Party seventh Congress. And although this relentless four days is coming to a close, um, <laughs> what that means is that for all of our comrades, all the reports that you just heard over these last four days is now we were gonna be relentless in putting these reports into action. So because African internationalism is a theory of practice. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. I'm, I'm looking forward to the work that's just gonna come out of this plenary. And just we just wanna salute our party members in Africa, Asia, Europe and the Caribbean. Um, and in some places it is very late, we know this, but we are the vanguard, the advanced attachment. Look, we are winning advanced attachment. Look, we, yeah. okay. <laughs> 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 so it is our honor, right? To bring up the chairman yes. um, for the summation of the 2022 plenary titled Relentless 50 Years of Leadership Towards African Redemption. So let's welcome with our applause, our relentless leader of the African nation, Chairman Omali Eshetela. Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru. Thank you so very much, Comrade Wazi and, and uh, Sister Erica, thank you. And I really want to express appreciation to Comrade Director uh, Akile uh, that uh, for making this uh, extraordinary uh, uh, plenary happen in a very seamless, professional and seamless way. I'm getting a message that says I'm talking to you. Let me see what this is. Uh, I'm not being disrespectful, but if I don't do this, uh, we'll all be in trouble. Uhuru comrades, I was just alerted to the fact that we just got a $1,500 anonymous uh, contribution, and that puts us at $170,086. Wow. Uh, we exceeded the goal that we set for ourselves. And I, Uhuru. Uhuru. I just really want to express um, such appreciation for uh, the generosity of everybody uh, who contributed to, uh, to the party uh, from this plenary. There's, as you've seen, we have so much work to do. And uh, I'm, I'm uh, trying to figure out especially how uh, to make the ASI do uh, more effectively what it's supposed to do in terms of contributing to our ability collectively to um, uh, forward uh, the revolutionary work that's happening in Africa. I really want to express a, a profound appreciation for your generosity uh, in, and you know, we pay for our own revolutionary movement. And um, that's the only way, and by the way, that you hold us accountable. You hold the revolutionary project accountable because uh, when you want to, you can withdraw your resources. And if we uh, rely on your resources for what it is that we do, then we are accountable uh, only to you. So thank you so much, comrades. I want to uh, also, uh, in, in closing, uh, we talk about this, this history, this extraordinary 50-year uh, history of relentless struggle for redemption of Africa. I want to uh, express uh, uh, appreciation to, uh, to some of the forces who were with us, who uh, uh, who saluted uh, this 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 party uh, through this plenary? Uh, who, in other ways, uh, some uh, for a long period of time, have demonstrated solidarity uh, with uh, the work that we do, and in many ways uh, 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 function uh, as a, as a part of the movement. And I want to start off with uh, expressing appreciation to Union de Barrio uh, and the Mexican National Liberation Movement. It has played an extraordinary role. Um, in facilitating a relationship that we have uh, with the Mexican people. Uh, the Mexican and African people have established this relationship through our advanced attachment. 
And that's not, a, so it doesn't mean that all the Africans and all the Mexicans have yet come to the same conclusions, uh, but these are the conclusions they will come through because uh, the advanced attachment helps to bring people to the correct conclusion. So solidarity, Unio de Barrio. And I want to express in so doing that, uh, the memory, the, the real appreciation for uh, com comrade Ernesto Bustillo, uh, who was a, fa a founder of, uh, of Unio de Barrio, who is uh, the person most responsible uh, for bringing our relationship together and who in my, estim in my estimation is one of the most uh, under-recognized uh, revolutionary forces uh, uh, of the Americas, and, and I believe uh, more than that. Also, uh, uh, ex uh, expression of appreciation to comrade uh, Zaki Buruti, uh, who is right there uh, in St. Louis, uh, and uh, who is with Universal African People's Organization, and who played a really important role uh, in facilitating the ability of the African People's Socialist Party to establish ourselves right there in St. Louis. Uh, to Comrade Charles Barron, uh, who uh, is currently the a city councilman uh, there uh, in New York, uh, but you know has been that, has been uh, state assemblyman, uh, has been a Black Panther, uh, has been somebody who's been trying to make the struggle happen for a, a very long time, and and for us uh, contributes to uh, 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 the kind of template. Uh, the kind of example, he's destroyed uh, forever uh, the myth that uh, we cannot have uh, an African uh, politician, uh, somebody who's, uh, who's involved in the electoral arena, uh, uh, who, who, who cannot speak up and, and address the critical issues that we are faced with as Africans in this country. And then uh, there's, of course, the incredible uh, uh, Jesse Todd. Uh, who is right there in the mix in St. Louis and has been, you know, having to deal with the muck and the mire uh, there, the, all the cross currents of, of uh, neo-colonialism and, and direct uh, uh, colonialism as well. Uh, we, we, and all of these are comrades who offered solidarity in one way or another with this plenary. So I wanted to extend my appreciation to all of you comrades for that. And this has been uh, an extraordinary plenary. And I think everybody here uh, uh, will be able uh, to recognize that uh, it's, it's, it uh, helps us to establish uh, what revolutionary politics is all about, what a revolutionary movement is all about, what a revolutionary party is all about, what the genuine struggle for socialism is all about, for power uh, to the people. And uh, it is not, as we've said earlier, just some event that we are engaged in. We are a party that's been for 50 years more or more struggling to solve the, the, the extraordinary contradictions, the problems of the revolution. And you've seen the evidence of our success uh, up to now. And obviously there are some contradictions. We'll, we'll deal with those contradictions, but clearly uh, we've been on point. And uh, we are a relatively small organization, but we have such an impact. It is global impact. Uh, it is uh, uh, an impact because there is organization here, which is a critical uh, a factor in making any kind of revolution happen, uh, that uh, the size of our party uh, uh, is magnified uh, more than 1,000, more than 10,000, more than 50,000 times. If you look at the people, uh, our movement, uh, 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 the people our movement uh, is engaged with on a regular basis, uh, not necessarily in some way that we are uh, 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 preaching to them all the time, but we have a revolutionary presence. We have, we have given the revolution an institutional presence. We have institutionalized the, the, the presence of the revolution. And, in, and we have solved the, the critical uh, uh, questions that's, that's been, that our movement has been struggling with. We see coming out of this plenary that we'll be moving in an entirely different way. Uh, and we've made promises to ourselves and promises to the world, and we've been uh, more or less uh, successful in carrying out those promises, but we've made in this, this plenary, uh, I think it puts all of us on notice in a different way, and it places a different kind of requirement on all of us in terms of, uh, of, of uh, our, our, our demand uh, from each other, that we live up to the standards of, of the party, 
and beyond that, that uh, we uh, actually for make organization happen. We have established uh, in, this, uh, in this plenary uh, that one of the most important uh, general campaigns of the party uh, is recruitment, recruitment recruitment and this is something that can be measured this is not an abstract question that we're talking about it's, it's something that can be measured we've seen the actual uh uh, uh articulation of uh, incredible institutions that contribute to uh an actual uh ca a capture of political power in our own lives to negate the power of the colonizers we've seen an extraordinary political report and and uh, uh, for uh, uh, around our economic trajectory, our economic uh, uh, strategy, and we've seen practically how this thing is being carried out. And and for in fact, uh, part of what we've just uh, announced now with the one hundred and seventy thousand dollars and eighty uh, one hundred and seventy thousand eighty six dollars is a reflection of that in part. And you've seen and heard other things that's being done to forward uh, our capacity and in the process of developing our own independent, our own uh, independent uh, political economy that stretches across the, uh, the African world. That's, that's part of what has happened. We, that, that, that we've had forces here for a very long time. And, and as I said in the political report, uh, that is, has been the guide for everything that we've done up to, up, uh, to now and that leads us into uh, for the next year uh, in, in carrying out the five-year plan that we've established uh, in our last seventh Congress, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that this work uh, is, again, uh, uh, about uh, real development, as I said, that we, we, we have seen a maturation of our, of our process, of our institutional capacity, of our organizational capacity, and more of us have clearly uh, been won to recognition uh, uh, and to accept the responsibility for the revolution uh, as our own, no matter where it is that we are located. I wanted to, to say those things and uh, e express appreciation uh, for everybody's uh, participation uh, here. And uh, again, uh, really, it should be obvious to everybody that uh, there's so much that has for a long period of time that uh, too long uh, we've allowed uh, to occur without any suggestion of criticism, and we have to, uh, because the, the thing is that there's a deep and deep crisis. The crisis of this social system is deeper than most of us understand. And I tried to give some evidence of that in the political report, while even the, the rulers, the international ruling class is scrambling uh, to try to get in front of this profound and deep crisis that they are confronted with. Uh, so uh, it's really important that we carry out uh, our mission. And part of our mission has to be able to recognize that we have to go beyond just this, uh, this uh, single issue kind of organizing, the single issue questions. And we have to go beyond uh, 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 just uh, uh, this kind of a small circle mentality that is good enough just to have our own little clique over here doing this work. The African People's Socialist Party uh, has a strategy that you can see has uh, that we've been working on and you it's been laid out uh, before everybody uh, in this plenary and uh, the, 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 it, it should offer enough pressure uh, on, on virtually everybody that pretends to be for revolution that pretends to be for socialism, communism or what have it should offer a, a, a pressure on them to explain if they are for these things then why aren't they trying to be a part of the party? Why aren't they trying to be a part of the Uhuru movement? Uh, because the party has solved the critical problems and the party is an international formation. It's got revolutionary forces functioning throughout the world. Uh, and there is no other organization that's doing that. There are militants and perhaps all over the world, but none uh, that's uh, involved in a single mission uh, that will lead to the redemption of Africa and the uh, total destruction of a colonial mode of production and placing leadership in the hands of the African working class as the first step, uh, as the most important step, as the critical step uh, in the capture of political power by the working peoples of the world. So I wanna express appreciation to everybody and say, comrades, uh, there's a lot of work that we have to do. We'll be talking about it more and more moving forward. Vanguard up, vanguard up. Ease way late to Uhuru, no compromise, no surrender, Uhuru.
Guru. Is we lay to. E Africa. E Africa. Is we lay to. Who chairman. Wow. Um, we are about to close out and we have one last announcement before we um, wrap up for today. Um, I want to really salute you chairman, for that summation. And again, African Liberation Day. This is your last announcement. Take some notes. If you haven't written it down this whole time, get a piece of paper. Um, write this down. May 28, 2022, under the theme, Relentless 50 Years of Leadership Towards African Redemption. The significance of the ALD event will recognize the parties founding in May 25th, 1972. And if you're in these cities, please get involved and so you can attend this event. If you're in South Africa, if you're in London, England, if you're in Paris, France, Oakland, California, St. Louis, Missouri, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and St. Petersburg, Florida, we will be building organizing committees to make this event great in all the regions. Keep your eyes on the party. And if you want more information for how to get off the sidelines and get into the revolution, contact us at 727-914-7. You can email Chimarenga Waller at gmail.com, visit APSPUhur.com. All of this is in the chat. You can visit us in person in the St. Petersburg area at 1245 18th Avenue South, St. Petersburg, Florida. Join the African People's Socialist Party today. Uhuru. 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 Cut All out right, Vanguard up. Mm -hmm. Vanguard up. All right. One Africa. Africa one nation. One nation. <laughs> Uhuru. Uhuru.